Lakara says you're going to defend Lollicon, Lollicon Disgusting. Yeah, I don't think you need to defend it. Again, finding the nuance is much harder. I think it's much easier to have a disgust uh, repulsion. Like when I see bananas, I think they're gross. But it's like, is it rooted in reason? And you can logic your way out of it. But I, I agree. Like I don't consume lolly, but I know a lot of women who do. And I know a lot of communities that do. And I think when I look at the women that consume it, they're having a different relationship with it than than other people and I think the nuance means taking that into consideration and I I think that's really hard for people to recognize because people don't even want to talk about their own feelings let alone why they even find themselves attracted to lolly artists or lolly con or lolly or, or anime or anything like I don't think we're ready to have those conversations as a society, but let's try to have it here on this channel. Well, recognizing that first and foremost, we want to protect children, but notice that there are no children involved in this conversation. We are only talking about adults. There are no children in this conversation. There are no real kids we are talking about. Nobody is talking about actual children. And I think the fact that everyone keeps thinking we are shows the bias that everyone is having. No one is talking about actual children. We were talking about a grown man named Vosh, a grown man named Ethan, and drawn imagery of minor people that looks fake, that doesn't even look like real people. So again, like, that's what we're talking about. There are no children involved in this conversation. So I don't know why people keep bringing kids into the conversation, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. So this is a video I probably should have made a long time ago. There are two main reasons why I haven't. For one, everything we're about to talk about has been discussed over and over and over again on this channel uh, in, in live streams and in videos. Some of it has been discussed to death. Over engagement with the topic has caused it to have a disproportionate influence both on my community and on the way people outside of my community perceive me and my channel. The second main reason I've been hesitant to make this video is because experience has taught me that generally speaking, if folks want to hate you or distrust you or whatever else, it's pretty difficult to convince them Otherwise, sometimes if you're unpopular enough, even if you've got a good point to make, just the attempt to change people's minds can come across as kind of self-incriminating. You actually ground them further in the positions they already have. You know, it's one of those deals where the people who need to hear it won't listen and the people who will listen don't need to hear it again. Let's get right to it then. Let's not waste time. What am I actually talking about? Well, I hate to drop this on the people who just innocently watch me for my political content and don't engage. In Does anybody actually just watch Vosh for his like political takes? Are they like, what is his community like? You know what I mean? What is all of that stuff? Matthew says, my worry is that Lolly normalizes essay. I think Lolly is the least of our concerns if we're worried about normalizing essay. Keep in mind, the best seller, Fifty Shades of Grey, was basically the normalization of an abusive and toxic relationship. And women ate that shit up. So remember that like the normalization of essay is not happening through Lolly. It is happening through regular New York Times bestsellers, Hollywood films, your favorite actors, your churches, like hiding essay like cases in their churches. Like essay is being normalized by your podcast, by your menosphere, having literally like grape apologists on podcast. The last thing that is normalizing essay that we need to worry about is a subcategory that is so specific. Normies don't even watch hentai. Normies don't even watch hentai. Normies are watching Fifty Shades of Grey and making it a New York Times bestseller. If you're afraid of essay being normalized, go after Hollywood. That literally normalizes essay in film constantly. Um, Gossip Girl, one of my favorite shows from growing up. First episode, Chuck tries to grape Joe's... No, his name is not Joe in the show. His name is Joe in the stalker show. I can't remember his name in Gossip Girl. But he tries to grape his sister in the first episode. He's a grapist. Right away, he pressures her and forces her in a corner. So if we want to talk about normaling, like normalizing essay, hentai is not our concern. Regular ass TV is. Regular ass TV. In any broader community drama, some folks online have called me a pedophile. Now, this in Ooh, and I'm going to get demonetized. Please like the stream, guys. <laughs> itself isn't actually that noteworthy with the political climate being what it is. Folks are getting accused of being pedophiles on Twitter left and right. It's pretty common. But some people have called me this way more insistently and a lot louder. So 
Why? Remember how I said self-defense can come across as kind of incriminating, even if it's accurate or well- Now, to be fair, the PDF title does get thrown around a lot online because it's really easy to dismiss people for it. I mean, look at the way we're having a hard time having nuance when it comes to Lolly in general. That's what I mean to say. Like the, the world is so dangerous when it's a mob of people because they don't even know how to categorize people correctly. And just a reminder that the whole world has a very difficult relationship with age of consent. And the whole world is absolutely having a different relationship with child brides. And we're not here to justify it. We're here to recognize like humans are evolving at different paces, right? We're all evolving differently culturally. And so again, I think, um, I think we need to have those conversations, right? And consent, non-consent is very hot for a lot of people. Grape porn is very hot for a lot of people. Not that they want to do that in real life, not that they want to be graped, but like, just like you play violent video games, it doesn't mean you want to go around and run over hookers because you're playing, you know what I mean? Um, I'm blanking on every all the video game names, but you know what I mean? Like, just because you're violent in a video game doesn't mean you actually want to do that in real life. So remember, porn or corn, oh my God, is like video games. It's literally what you're getting high off of, what is stimulating you, what is like, what is interesting to your brain. So again, I think, I don't understand why people are so afraid of corn, but they're, 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 studies are showing the video games and stuff, we're not having the same relationship with what we're consuming. So just, okay, keep that in mind. Intentioned? Yeah. Even though I've gone over all this before uh, on stream or in videos, I wasn't exactly jumping at the bit to make a why I'm not a pedophile video. That's not, <laughs> that's, it's, it's a rough yeah, subject sucks. is what I'm saying. That really sucks. Nobody wants to make that video. Dang. You know, that's one of the reasons why it's so effective as a smear, of course. It's just an incredibly difficult subject to engage with. So let's not waste any more time. We've got a lot to go through. What then is this video about? What do I have to say and why do I want to say it? What are my goals in making the video? Well, the gist of it is this. When people accuse me of being a pedophile, they usually do so while presenting pieces of- And by the way, for the sake of this conversation, a PDF file is somebody who has a literal attraction to prepubescent children. This is very important because it's not a large part of the population to actually have a desire for prepubescent children. And so to actually say that about someone is very, 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 very slanderous and also very dangerous because it will cause more harm down the line, right? So I am, I know we throw around that word a lot. I know we think anyone who's attracted to a 17 year old is a pedophile, but for the sake of this conversation and where I'm coming from, I have got to categorize it correctly. Otherwise it makes no sense to have this conversation. This is why I say objective truth is so hard to find because it's all through our perception. If you can't find the nuance in this conversation, you want to find objective truth? Like you can't even handle this perception truth. And so again, the world thinks it knows what it's talking about, but the world can't even face itself in, in categorizing things accordingly. So again, PDF file is a very specific thing. It means prepubescent children, which is very, very, very specific. It means an attraction to versus, you know, again, an enjoyment of aesthetic or an enjoyment of a food or an enjoyment of a thing. So again, like I just, I, for the sake of this context, I need us to be very clear about our categorization. Otherwise, like there's no point to having this conversation. Evidence often clips from my live streams that make me look bad. While I do think that a lot of the claims and pieces of so-called evidence used against me range from being uncharitable to outright dishonest, the fact remains that I have said some incredibly stupid fucking shit on this channel, especially really early on, like right when I started streaming. And I don't fault anyone for seeing clips from that and, and being suspect of me. You know, I wasn't doing myself any favors, I'll, I'll say that much. For a lot of them, such as the ones where I'm making a point that is overall good and like uncontroversial, but I do a bad job of making it. There's nothing for me to really like debunk, you know? It's it's not a takedown. It's more a matter of charity. You know, I have to go and, and, and look at these clips and explain what do they mean, you know? What was I thinking? What was I saying? Are, is, is this clip like so dishonestly cut that, you know, no reasonable person would interpret it as looking bad of seeing the full context? Or uh, was I saying really stupid shit and I'm going to have to like work to explain what my thought process was at the time? And past that point, it's up to other people to either believe my charitable explanations or believe significantly less charitable ones. You know, that's up to them. In, in addition to some of the legitimately really stupid shit I've said, I'll also cover some of the more bullshit accusations because I, I, don't, I don't know, they're transparently bullshit. A lot of them, I feel like you would have to already dislike me to, to read anything from them. But you know, a lot of it is that, so I, I need to sort of point that out too. So as far as I can see, there are four groups of people that I'm addressing here, more or less. The first group is my core audience, the people who have seen me address this and provide context for this and deal with this bullshit a million times. For a lot of them, all of this is a repeat. The second group of people is people who just fucking hate me. I, I really don't know if there's much I can do to get across to those guys. I would like to. 
I really do think a lot of the hate is misguided, but ultimately that's up to them, right? I, you know, I'm not magic. The third group is the massive, disaffected, disengaged, entertainment-hungry drama vultures who are mm -hmm. just here because they think it's fun to watch people squirm. I, I see you. Well, welcome. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem, too, is, like, there are absolutely those people. I think the only thing I'm really upset about Vosh with is the idea that he denied there was any lolly in the folder, because that's interesting. It's like, why not just own it and say, like, yeah, I like this photo because, like, of this YZ. Like, why not just own it? And then two, the only thing I want to talk to him about or like get him to say out loud is why he thinks it's not morally wrong to consume CP and CP meaning not lolly. So for the sake of this conversation, we need to define PDF file as attraction to previous and child, which is accurate. We need to say CP is not is not lolly. And the reason I distinguish this is because anime characters don't look like people. So even when they're aged down and though it makes us uncomfortable and it's icky, it still doesn't resemble real people. And I think if you think it does look like real people, I don't understand how your brain sees it that way. But my brain cannot see anime characters as real people. Like I just cannot for the life of me see them as real people. So and because they're not, they don't exist. And so they don't even look like people. So for this conversation, CP is different than Lolly. It's really important that we distinguish that. And I think if you can't do that, you might want to exit the conversation because you might be getting triggered and it might be your trauma showing, which is totally valid. But Vosh made an argument that consuming CP, not Lolly, CP, is uh, not morally wrong. And I would like to know why he thinks that. Because again, is that his morals or is that ethics in relation to society? Because I would like to know why he thinks that, because obviously I think it's incredibly morally wrong to consume CP, but I also want to know if he means for society, like the ethics of society, or if he means for the individual. So I would like to see, um, I don't know, I would like to see him explain why he would say something like that, because that sounds really bad, right? A lot of this really has been like thoroughly addressed before, though, so I don't plan on doing uh, much squirming, but there will be lots of self-debasement. So uh, to, to you and to the people who just hate me, if you want to see self-debasement from me, there will be that. So you can look forward to that, I guess. Yeah, and, and I know that even making a video like this can come across as pretty damning, just innately, but I really do hope that you take it uh, seriously and try to be charitable, if for no reason other than because it is a pretty serious topic. And last, uh, the fourth and maybe the smallest group of people mm. watching this video are people who are genuinely neutral or, or maybe coming in with that fair mind to see what all the drama's about. Or maybe they're from the normie side of my audience. Uh, you know, they don't engage with the drama and the community stuff that much. I don't know. This will probably be a weird one for them, but nonetheless, welcome. It's a pretty wide range of people as audiences go, but I'll do my best to explain things and go through all the drama in a way that's clear and straightforward, but also doesn't drag on too long. Now, without further- Okay, again, you guys, are so biased and prejudiced and you don't even know why. Again, in order to have a nuanced conversation, you have to put aside your desire to see things one dimensional, right? Okay, like Charles, you said, I hope you don't have kids if you think Lolly is okay in any situation. Okay, you can't mean that. And I don't mean to be an autist, but like you literally can't mean that. If you mean in like, cause again, what is Lolly, right? It's so dependent on the definition people are giving. So if you watch hentai with Sailor Moon characters, is that Lolly? Some people would say yes. I would say no, even though they're minors. I would say like, they're not minors in that way. Like just age them up. You know what I mean? Like they don't even look like kids, but then what does a kid look like? And so obviously when you're saying Lolly, you have a thing in your mind that is coming to mind. When I say Lolly, I'm having a thing that's in my mind. That's the problem. When we say things, words and images pop into our mind that give us the ick. So I don't have an ick when people say lolly because I don't know what they mean until they describe it to me. So if they mean prepubescent children, then yes, I'm going to have an ick. If they mean, oh, anyone under 18, I'm just not sure what that means because that would mean like, like all Sailor Moon characters, all what, like all One Piece characters, that makes no sense. Most people, when they consume porn, make themselves the main character. So if you watch CNC, if you watch consent, non-consent in porn categories or stepsister, stepbrother, no one's imagining their actual siblings. And if they are, they can go to therapy for that. But most of us are imagining dynamics. Like nobody's imagining that except the weirdos. So like you are assuming everyone's the weirdo. And I'm saying that doesn't seem to be the case by all the studies we've done. We're not seeing that, right? We're seeing people actually putting themselves in that like position and they're seeing themselves in the thing. You know what I mean? So again, 
I think like what I'm hoping to do with my audience is to encourage you guys to recognize like not everyone's having the same experience you're having and assuming they are is the mistake. That is a huge mistake. You know what I mean? Uh, Charles says anime is not corn. Lolly is. I don't know because everyone defines lolly very different. So again, you're having a different conversation. Is all lolly corn? I don't know if that's true. Maybe hentai is corn, anime is not. That is true. But if you're watching Sailor Moon hentai, are you watching lolly? Because if you say yes, then we're not having the same conversation. You know what I mean? Lakara says, I thought lolly was more pubescent. Yes, but not to everybody. Not everybody thinks that. In the way we're having conversations now, not everybody agrees Lolly is prepubescent. I would agree with you. That's why Lolly's kind of gross. And I say kind of because some people say Lolly is just anyone under 18. So anyone in high school. But most hentai you're watching is like, oh, school teacher. Most porn you're watching is like adults pretending to be kids. Not because they want to be children, but because they want to mimic the energy. You know what I mean? So again, that's the problem with this conversation is everybody's imagining what they want to imagine when we say words, but nobody is ever talking about the same thing. And that's what I want to make sure we're trying to do at least is actually, are we even using the words the same way? Again, bubbles, right? Without ado, let's get to the content. We'll start with the absolute worst of it, the monster. Ah, Wick says, I'm going to be real. I haven't really thought about corn in depth. I think that's fair. And as somebody who's an SW, I try really hard to research data, impacts of corn on people. I tried to impact like lolly or not impact. Tried to look at the studies of impact about lolly and hentai and try to understand like what ages should people start consuming things? How does it change things for people? How does this impact social? So of course the average person doesn't give a fuck about corn. They're just like jerking off and moving on with their life. But for those of us that want the nuance, that want to help people, that especially want to help people who are prone to addiction or want to help people that are prone to falling down a really bad path, or we want to protect children, in order to do that, you've got to know why people are even watching things. Remember, for every argument that violent video games cause violence and should be barred from consumption, there is an argument in relation to corn. And the question is, is it true? It's because before we start barring video games from people's consumption or before we take away people's civil rights, we have to ask ourselves, is this data true or are we just getting an ick reaction because we have a bias and prejudice? Seriously stupid argument that I made way back when I first started streaming that has since haunted me and irreparably tarnished my reputation. Now, this clip is the one that I see cited most often when people are accusing me of being a pedophile. That's not even a little surprising to me, though. It sounds pretty bad. In fact, and this is going to be a real hot take, I get to hear a convincing moral or legal argument as why possession of child pornography should be legal. Actual child pornography. Like I said, uh, pretty bad. This clip. Yeah, that's a pretty fucking shitty thing to say. So he takes it back, which I think is important, and he is autistic, and he's in the debate space. Trust me, all the debate lords have horrible portions of their clips where they're saying really bad things about people. I know you guys are icked out the most over CP and Lolly, but remember that regardless of how you feel about things, we have people who say 9-11 was deserved. We have people who say like genocide Palestine. We have people in the debate space who get so riled up and want to say the most ridiculous things just to get attention. And congratulations, you've got our attention. And the question is, are we willing to take that into consideration when judging? I don't know why Vosh decided to die on the hall, the, the hill of Lolly, but that's the problem is like there is a serious like degeneracy and also neurodivergency to this space that I look at people I'm like, why would you say that out loud? Even if people are thinking it, why'd you say it out loud? But then I think about like, I've made content about 9-11 as well, and it's all privated now, but see Hassan's take on 9-11, that's going to haunt him forever. So again, like, I think we need to be very open to the fact that this will haunt Vosh forever. Fishy said, who the fuck said, who the fuck was out here saying genocide Palestine? Um, you all know who it was. You all know who it was. It was pretty bad. And people were using clips of her saying it. It's a guy. And, um, it's destiny. It's destiny. Cause you guys didn't realize it. Destiny was mad one day on panel and just screamed. Like basically he lost it. Cause like he's, they're all fucking, it just happens on the internet. It's normal. And people started putting videos of like dead Palestinians next to Destiny's like, oh, well, they like they're going to have to die. It is what it is. You know what I mean? I don't remember the exact context, but basically everybody has something in their reputation that will haunt them in some ways. Right. 
So it's kind of funny that Vosh decided to die on this hill. But honestly, like, it's pretty normal in this space for people to say really outrageous shit, especially when they're frustrated with people. They're like, you know what? Fuck it. You know what I mean? So again, I don't think Vosh is necessarily a PDF file. That's a huge assumption. Like he would have to get evaluated by a professional. But I would say that uh, how he handles this video will be interesting because I haven't seen it. I've only seen a few minutes of it. So I want to see if he he knows how to explain himself without it making him look worse. And I doubt it is from right after I started streaming. So a significant portion of my career as a live streamer has been spent providing context for the clip over and over to many people and many audiences. I've addressed it so many times that it's, it's, it's turned into like a, a kind of running joke in my community, like a, a, a rake that I'm cursed to keep walking into over and over and it hits me in the head. I often see people outside of my community, people who have seen this clip, but not seen me address it, mock the idea that any context that I or anyone else could provide could possibly explain away something that sounds that bad. When they see me or my fans uh, say that this or any other clip has been taken out of context, uh, it comes across to them as an effort to shoo away legitimate suspicion, you know, chastising people for having an opinion on something that looks bad. Like, you see a clip that looks bad of me, and then I or a fan of mine comes in and we're like, uh, no, you know, you need to familiarize yourself with, with like 50 hours of stream lore before you can have an opinion on that. I have seen people <clears throat> weaponize calls for context in that way, so... I don't fault others for being like kind of suspicious of that or, or, or not taking sure. it very seriously. Some okay. people are just going to tune out right there. Now, don't get me wrong. The clip is bad. It's uh, rhetorically bad. It's logically bad. It's, it's obviously optically bad. And the broader argument that it's pulled from are bad in all of those ways, too. Um, but as for what the clip and the argument that it's pulled from say about me, uh, I would like to make the case, if I may, that it does implicate me, but not as a pedophile, rather uh, as a, a fucking idiot debate bro brain poisoned jackass. Okay. Here's the really important thing. And no offense, if I see a non-nuanced comment, I'm ignoring you. Because obviously, like, you have to first contemplate the reality of the possibility. So is Vosh doubling down and hiding the fact that he's a PDF file? Or is it honestly true that he is in a chronic debate space with a bunch of neurodivergent freaks who have been so far removed from normal society, they have forgotten that normal people don't even know what hentai is, let alone lolly. I've been watching The Button a lot, and The Button literally will have someone who's like, do you watch hentai? People don't even know what that is. They don't even know what it is. Not let alone lolly, you know what I mean? So they don't even know what it is. And to be fair, Vaj isn't the first YouTube content creator who's a man who has been into lolly hentai-oriented corn that I've known. So I'm not like that surprised. It seems to be pretty popular in DGen slash kink community slash other communities to sort of have age play to sort of talk about vulnerability to even have CNC stuff or grape play. Um, all of it under like all of it consenting all of it 18 plus all of it everything. And so I think we have to remember, like, there's a whole part of the population that doesn't even know what the word hentai means doesn't even know what it is. Anime itself, like so many people, Cody Ko had to Google One Piece. He's like, what's One Piece? What is that? And I'm like, oh my God, Cody Ko, sweet baby angel, doesn't even know what One Piece is. And you want to act like the world is on the same page as you, as if they know the same shit you know. The world only knows what we know. The world only knows what we know. Like we only all know what we know. And it's very limited. We're all very stupid. Okay. So with Vosh, though, the dangerous thing is like, is he a secret PDF file who's actually using a very good argument, a very reasonable lived experience to get us to doubt him being one? Or is he is he not one and he's truly stuck in the brain rot of the debate, the debate space? It's very hard to know this. And you and I, by the way, will never know this for a fact. Gun to your head. You will never know this. Right. So we would need a professional, like an actual professional to evaluate Vosh for him to be honest and transparent with that professional. You know what I mean? And to actually evaluate him as an actual PDF file, which is attraction to prepubescent children, which is a very specific and small categorization of the human population. So if you want to be scientific about this, the chances of him being a PDF file are not very big, but very possible. And I think that's something to consider. Because I took a perfectly fine argument, and I think that, you know, when I explain it, it'll, the argument itself will make perfect sense, at least. Uh, and I ruined it with edgy, contrarian, devil's advocate nonsense. So let me explain. I had just started live streaming, and I was far, far more argumentative and belligerent and arrogant then than I am now, if you can believe that. Over the background of my mediocre Dead Cells gameplay, an argument with chat on the subject of 
foreign labor and unethical production was getting increasingly heated. Just in case anyone watching doesn't know, many of the products that we buy from American companies on American store shelves are produced through supply chains that take advantage of what we could consider. A okay. So this argument, I think, is like uh, one argument people make. I don't make this argument. I only make it on occasion to certain kinds of people. Um, but in general, I actually would make the argument that most of the world is absolutely less concerned about the safety of children that they let on just by the way that they handle their relationships. You know what I mean? So remember, like, children are going to be hurt by people they know. And y'all are very relaxed about letting your kids sleep over people's houses and interact with aunties and uncles you haven't vetted. So just a reminder that if you're really worried about your children, you should consider who you have around them, including your own family members, let alone some drawn lolly on the internet, right? So keep that in mind. And then on top of this, this argument he's having about Starbucks and, and like the world is built off slavery, period. And we have to accept that the world is an evolved animal species, you know? And that's the thing that's so important is like the world, I don't know why you think we're here. I don't know if you think like God puts you here or aliens put you here. I think we're evolved animals. So we're living organisms. We're living little beasts on a planet that has evolved. Some parts of the population will absolutely deviate from others like whole cultures do obviously so the world is built off the slavery of other people it's built off of the death of other people and so the conversation again has to be nuanced in a sense that yes so why don't we do some form of harm reduction now harm reduction i don't know what that means in your bubble that just means like what is the least harmful thing but everything you do is harmful having a child is harmful to somebody, someone, something. They didn't consent to be here. You're forcing them to exist. You want to protect children? Don't have any. Or you can have a child and harm reduce to the best of your ability. The moment you decide to birth a child is the moment you put them in the same world with people who are willing to take advantage of them. Maybe sometimes even their own parents. So again, this idea of like, I want to protect kids. So I'm going to let my disgust judge other people harshly is fine. But it's also a part of why children are getting hurt. Because you're you're going to go after the guys watching Lolly without forgetting that the guy who isn't watching Lolly, who's in your home, who you're related to, is probably also the guy who's going to touch your kid. That's the fucking irony. You're so worried about people watching Lolly touching your kids. What about people who don't watch Lolly and are still going to touch your kids? That's the thing I'm worried about is who's the ones that aren't, you know, who are so secretive and so like maniacal and so predatory that they're going to come off like I would never. I'm actually a little suspicious of people that are super, super, super disgusted at Lolly as if you're doing the reverso card of like, I would never hurt a kid. Huh. You're, you're being really weird about this, dude. It's just porn. But maybe not because what is lolly? We can't define it. No one's defining it. So for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to say lolly is bad because lolly is always prepubescent children. But that depends on the bubble. Right? Depends on the bubble. You know, Charles says I can worry about both. One is watching CP though, but one is not watching CP necessarily. One is only watching what you define as CP. Do you think it is objective? Like gun to your head, is it always objectively what it is? What if people are watching it because we find studies that trauma victims actually watch it to sort of like relive their trauma to also move past it? What if trauma victims, because I've heard this happen, they watch porn that, that resembles their grape in order to help them move past it? What if people were watching Lolly to help them recover from their traumas as children? Would you then call them PDF files or say that's like that's what they're doing? Or would you say this is a great opportunity for human beings to use unorthodox means to like figure out how to move past their pain? Again, I'm looking for the nuance. I want whatever tools is possible. And by the way, all of your constructs are made up. You know what I mean? So again, like drawn things have no child victims. Real CP has a child victim. That's why it's always wrong. That's why Vosh making the argument that it could be sometimes morally correct to consume CP of real children I want to hear the justification for that because that's bullshit. There is no victimless crime with real child CP. With Lolly, Lolly doesn't involve the victimization of a child. So again, we need to have this conversation in a much more nuanced way. Unethical business practices, you know, like bad workers' rights stuff. Often this takes the form of sweatshop labor, a practice near ubiquitous, for example, in the garment industry, where sewing work is difficult to fully automate. This isn't just a foreign problem, though. Uh, there are garment sweatshops. And by the way, Ethan and Ela couldn't even watch, like, chibi-related art because Keffels had an icon 
that was like, oh my God, they're like, this is a child. Guys, let's not forget, there's a whole industry of adults that like chibi, that like, they, they like to have stuffed animals, they like Disney. Like, am I a bad person for thinking Disney characters are hot because they were teenagers? Age them up. Ariel, Jasmine, Aurora, all those girls are 34 as far as I'm concerned. When I share gifts of the Disney princesses making out, do you think I'm watching children make out? Are you being that disingenuous? Or are you recognizing that people consume Disney porn? And they age the characters up. Like, are you being disingenuous or are you serious? So again, I don't think people are really thinking things through. Why do people consume these things? They are putting themselves in the character. Well, I don't know how everyone consumes porn, but they might be putting themselves in, in that thing, like in that vulnerability, in that cuteness, right? What about adult women who dress like children still? Arguably, arguably, I would say like, Ela and I would say um, Olivia do dress like children. I think they totally dress like kids. That's why people make fun of adults like them because they're saying you dress like a kid still. You put a lot of blush on your face. You're obviously wearing really exaggerated outfits. You look like a child, right? So again, we need to be very open to the fact that in some bubbles, lots of bubbles I grew up in, absolutely Olivia and Ela dress like children. That's why... It's really interesting to me when people like have these conversations, like what is dressing like a child? If you're wearing schoolgirl outfits as an adult, are you dressing like a child? Are you pedo baiting? Right? Like, again, I want to have the nuanced conversation because I know it's really hard for the internet to have it, but keep that in mind too. There are lots of groups that say any grown woman that wears anything relating to a high school, like cute, like outfit, like tennis outfit shouldn't be allowed because it looks like you're pedo baiting where workers make less than $2 an hour operating right now in Los Angeles, for as an example. It's, just, it's a broad issue. But American companies profit from even worse abuses. The mining of cobalt and the harvesting of chocolate and palm oil, those are three practices that are especially notorious for their use uh, uh, of, of child labor, frequently child slavery, frankly. You know, in practice, often just child slavery. American companies profit enormously from this because uh, these, you know, abusive work conditions, it, it keeps the cost of harvesting materials, of acquiring raw product relatively low. See, this is, this is the argument he needs to get off of. This is just a silly argument. In the same way, like, look, military soldiers aren't always murdering people, but sometimes they are. Right. It's like we don't put it in the same context of a serial killer, but sometimes military soldiers could be serial killers pretending to be military soldiers. So are you a military soldier who's just doing your job? Are you a person who's actually a serial killer pretending to be a military person so you can get away with killing? Same thing with Vosh. Is he a PDF file disguising himself as a degen or is he a degen who isn't actually, you know what I mean? That's the question. Is like, okay, but what, like, what is actually happening? I want to know exactly. So he needs to get off this argument right now. And he needs to accept the fact that, like, it's, it, you know, if he wants, he doesn't have to. It's okay to say the consumption of CP is unethical, real CP. That involves a child, which means a child was harmed, right? And as a consequence of this, the suffering of children is built into the fabric of our economy, of exploited workers broadly, to be sure. But like I said, it's a widespread problem. I believed that in a just world, the American government would set a global standard for labor rights by barring companies from selling their products in the United States if they or other companies they bought their product from fell below a certain minimum standard for labor rights. Uh, I, I still think that would be great, by the way, as complicated as it would be. Uh, thanks says to be fair, H3H3 e e H3 didn't like the chibi art because of the bouncing was pretty annoyingly visual, but Elip specifically said, I don't want to see a child bouncing up and down a chair, which is then insinuating that when you chibi yourself, you're making yourself a child instead of a cute adult. A lot of adults like cuteness. I love cuteness. I love cuteness. And the idea that like someone's going to be like, oh, Brittany's making herself a child is so fucking weird. Like I'm a 34 year old woman. I want to be cute. I'm not trying to be a child. I'm sure Ela is not trying to be a child by dressing like one. She's just trying to be cute. And I'm saying people are allowed to be cute. And that's the thing. To implement and as unlikely as it is to happen. It's, it's a doable thing, you know? That's not like a, there, there's precedent for that kind of action. It would make the world a better place. So anyway, there I was, uh, belligerent, angry from arguing with chat. However much of a debate bro I'm known for being today, I swear to God, I was so much worse back then. I wanted to construct an argument that would effectively and succinctly convey the severity of the problem. Uh, how intertwined human suffering is with the regular products that we buy and use every day. And that's true, by the way. Like, your regular buying products are absolutely contributing to the suffering of the world. You existing is absolutely contributing in some butterfly effect way to the suffering of the world. 
You can't let it destroy you. You got to be reasonable and still do good with what you can do within like your six foot radius. But yes, reality is uh, us existing is absolutely contributing to the suffering of the world. But that doesn't mean, okay, that is argument against CP made sense. Again, CP, not Lolly. Specifically, the consumption of CP not being immoral. I need to know why he thinks that. Because like, how? How? Uh, shock value was essential because I needed to prove how edgy and daring I was. And speaking of shock value, an example already exists of something so inextricably tied up in human suffering that both its production and possession are illegal, child sexual abuse material. If we already know something that harmful should just be excised from society, couldn't we do the same for products that we know are made with child slavery at the very least? The parallel felt clear to me, and I wanted to really drive home the hypocrisy of the people arguing against me who said- I've heard this argument before, by the way, Vasha is not the first person to make this argument. They usually make it with different things. They usually make it with like military stuff. Like I said, I've, I've made this argument too using the military. How are you anti like murdering people, but like you're pro-choice or pro the military, right? Like that's the irony of the world is like vegans will say like, I'm going to protect life. So I'm not going to eat animals. But like, what about the science that shows like plant life has a consciousness? Are you going to stop eating plants? The reality is, is that like by you existing, suffering occurs, whether you're vegan or not. But then it's about harm reduction. Maybe it's better to eat a plant with a consciousness than an animal with a consciousness. And then you can have that conversation. Maybe it's better to have child slavery instead of child CP slavery, which I would argue is correct. You know, but I think some people wouldn't maybe not agree. So for me, protecting a child is first and foremost the most important thing. But then how we protect that child matters. Conservatives would say in order to protect children, we have to keep them away from LGBT people. And I would say in order to protect children, we need to give them the options of how to exist on the planet in ways that don't cause harm. But then, of course, you could say, well, everything that exists is causing harm. And then I would agree with you as well. But I would say it's about harm reduction. So having a kid exposing them to life, popping bubbles, exposing them to different and diverse cultures, teaches them that harm is universally experienced, but then we're having a different relationship with it, right? You were downplaying, I guess, the issue with the whole uh, child slavery intertwined in our, you know, economy thing. So, in fact, and this is gonna be a real hot take, I have yet to hear convincing moral or legal argument as why possession of child pornography should be legal. Actual child pornography. How's that for a hot fucking take? Now, yeah, that is a hot fucking take, so explain it. Clarify on this take, as I feel it necessary to do so. We do not, in this country, um, typically uh, criminalize people who have procured me uh, media or resources which were the product of abuse. Um, it is not illegal to own necklaces that have um, slave diamonds or whatever, what are they called? Um, or, or, yeah, blood diamonds? Yeah, all of our clothes produced by sweatshops, our computers, the silicon and lithium mine from- Yeah, and after my family saw blood diamond, we never bought diamonds again, okay? Uh, Michael says, is hentai of a chibi adult character lolly? Great question. Great question. If you watch hentai of the Attack on, Titan char Attack on Titan characters and they're aged up, is Mikasa a lolly? Like, that's the question. I know Ethan said he was so uncomfortable with One Piece after, like, Nami was, like, very sexualized. And I think, like, maybe you're too into the sexual then. Because to me, I'm just like, oh, look, boobs. And then you move on with the episode, right? But if it really gets to you, Maybe it's getting to you because like it's impacting you versus I'm so neutral to nudity. I'm so neutral to things that I don't even notice it except when I do. And when I do, I'm like, oh, look, boobs. And then when I, you know, but Ethan was like, I can't, like one piece, like Nami's so sexualized. Robin is so sexualized. I was like, yeah, it's just like some fan service, bro. Move on. Who cares? But like the fact that you care makes me think like you have some stuntedness and sex negativity involved in your like schema. Like, but then again, Ethan and Eeler are pretty prudish. So that makes sense. But then they'll justify their prudishness as like, we want to protect kids, which does remind me of conservatives. We want to protect kids. That's why we don't want them to be gay. We want to protect kids. That's why we don't want trans teachers. That's why we, yes, maybe the argument is, does that actually protect children? Now, I would agree with you that maybe you don't want your kids watching anime that overly sexualizes anybody until they're much older, right? I agree with that as well. But to say that adults can't watch One Piece because Nami and Robin's tits are out after the age up arc, it sounds super fucking weird. Like, why, you, why is it a big deal? Just don't notice it. Just pay attention to the story. But if you can't pay attention to the story because of Nami's tits, maybe the problem is you. Literal fucking slaves. In our society, we have already deemed that people are not responsible for the mechanisms by which the media they consume and the content they engage with are produced. You like that argument? Ooh, you like that? You like that moral culpability? You're all worse than fucking CP owners, and I am too. Do you like that? No ethical consumption of capitalism. Shit sucks, right? But if we accept that argument for slave labor, then we definitely have to accept it for child pornography. Yeah, there you go. My dumb goal here was to spark indignant outrage to make people who downplay the immorality. Uh, 
Rodrigo, I agree with you. You said, I think it has to do with exposure to anime. I have watched a lot of it, so I'm used to it. But my wife finds it odd how the women are drawn. I agree with you. Ultimately, it's about exposure to cultural differences. And I think if you're not into it, it's just so weird. You know what I mean? Charles, you're having a different discussion than we're having. Aging up Lolly, so it's okay. Yeah, that's a bad excuse for watching CP. We're not having that conversation. I think you're misunderstanding me. But like, that's not even the conversation that we're having. I don't know why you keep having that conversation with yourself, but it is like, it confuses me. But then I realize like you must be stuck in that bubble where like you can't engage in the conversation. No one's having that conversation, but you, you're talking to yourself, you know, of unethical supply chains to reflect on the harm they were enabling through comparison or for them to, you know, uh, bluster and go, no, no, they're different. Child slavery is fine, actually. Uh, and, and look bad. You know, it was meant to be like an invective, like something like mm. uh, it gets, it, you know, it, it, it's it's punchy. It gets right through to people. Obviously, it didn't work. The only person I succeeded in making look bad was me. And that wasn't mm. one of the goals. So, yeah, no, pretty, pretty bad because I really really want to make sure that I'm being clear with my thoughts here because I don't like being misunderstood and being misunderstood kind of feels like my job sometimes. Uh, just in case the bad logic of my brilliant little devil's advocate doesn't, it's not coming across. Let me give you an example. Imagine that I was a, a vegan back when I started my channel and I was angrily arguing with my audience about the hypocrisy of America making animal abuse a felony, uh, but also allowing millions and millions and billions of animals to spend their whole lives in torturous captivity before being slaughtered for meat. Yeah, I'm flustered and I want to make a point. So I start saying that, you know, hey, if we're all being morally consistent here, we wouldn't even have animal abuse laws, huh? So why? And OK, confused. Correct me if I'm wrong, Um, because KJ, KJ says Ethan has convinced his audience that all Lolly is CP. Am I just aware of like I've been calling it Lolly this whole time, but there's a whole genre of cute girl stuff that is like Lolly that isn't sexualized. So I don't know if you guys are aware of that bubble as well, but like grown women consume a lot of cutesy girl stuff that is that is called lolly because of the way that it's like cutified that is not sexual. So when you say like all of lolly is bad, lots of people think lolly is also overlapping with chibi, but it's different art styles. So there is a whole subcategory of like cutesy girl stuff that is called lolly that has nothing to do with sexuality and it's not naked and it's not corn. So when you say like all of lolly is CP, it's very like it feels like you're being gaslit by the world who has no clue that like there is a whole group of girls that buy lolly shit that's cute as fuck. And it is it is cute as fuck that is nothing to do with lolly yes lolita like but lolita is also associated with the novel very good novel very hard novel to read very hard movie to watch oh my god talk about grossing yourself out but L lolita is also incredibly consumed by lots of women who and have nothing to do with children but about being cute so the lolita fashion style but a lot of people think lolita is very bad because it is associated with lolita you know what I mean? Like the pedof the PDF file novel that became very famous. So that's the problem is like there are like so many things that for this for a lot of people is the same. So when people hear Lolly, they're like, are you talking about the fashion? Are you talking about the novel? Are you talking about the corn? Are you talking about what are you talking about? So I think that needs to be said out loud as well. So you guys in my audience know there's a difference between the fashion bubble and the corn bubble. Um, Ingrid, you said Lolita is not associated with the novel. Maybe in your bubble, in my bubble, it really is. No, it absolutely is. That's what I'm saying. You guys, in my bubble, I used to be very into Lolita fashion. And there was a whole bubble of people that were like, you mean like the novel? Lolita fashion is about PDF files without knowing that Lolita fashion is about aesthetic. But that's what I'm saying. Like, there are bubbles out there that have absolutely come for women who are into Lolita fashion because they say you're PDF baiting. There's absolutely a bubble that connects. That's what I'm saying. When we're having these conversations, we are all interacting with these things so specifically. You know what I mean? So again, it's like very exhausting almost. Sola says, is the lolly consumption analogous to furry communities? Okay, furry communities are so nuanced as well. Like so many of the people I know who go to furry conventions, 90% of the people there are grown men who are gay. Other people like in Balboa Park have family furry days with parents and kids who show up to do furry stuff that's non-sexual. Then there are whole bubbles of furry people that only do the hentai porn or do trans-related porn because they're furries on the internet. 
it is so confusing which group we're talking about, but they're all so different. Protect animals at all, I would say. Since we're clearly so okay with them being tortured and killed in mass, why not be consistent and just do away? Okay, I agree, but I think the nuance is in the details. So the way we consume farmed meat in the US is absolutely torturous to to animals. But obviously an individual torturing a hu like an individual animal is worse than a whole company doing it for the means of like consumption. For some reason, when we do things as a group, it makes more sense because like what's a more efficient way to do it? When an individual is abusing an animal, it's not even to eat the animal. It's just to like torture the animal. At least we're torturing animals to eat it would be the argument, Vosh. Like the fact that he can't understand that is so weird. The argument is also the aftermath. Why are you consuming the lolly? Why do you dress in Lolita? Why do you like these things? The answer could be so different than your assumption. Why is an individual torturing one animal bad? Because it's usually for the torture of the animal, not for the aftermath of the meat. Why do we allow meat companies to torture animals en masse? Because we don't have a better way of producing meat in a fast enough way to deal with capitalism in America, right? The, the, uh, the why is so important. And I'm not saying it's much better, but damn, the, de the, the reason is different. You know what I mean? Hey, with all animal abuse laws too, huh? Huh? Of course, in that example, I wouldn't really be arguing for the removal of animal abuse laws. I'd be pointing out an apparent hypocrisy in animal welfare norms with an abrasive devil's advocate. You know, the point would be to get people to sort of like angrily confront my position or reflect on theirs. Likewise, in real- Okay. Charles says, definition of lolly. Lolly is a form of Japanese anime. It depicts underage cartoon characters in a sexually explicit situations. How is that not CP? Because again, if you are saying consuming- si Because what you think of as underage- is not what people are seeing in their heads. Underage doesn't mean anything. It's a construct. So when you say, oh, this person is underage, you are creating a construct and you're assuming we all know what that means. What does that mean? Guys in the comments, reflect upon what that means in your bubbles and how we were raised. What does underage mean? In my bubble, it means under 18. In America's bubble, to me, underage means under 18 years of age. What does it mean in your countries? What does it mean in your bubbles? Because underage doesn't mean anything. It's a construct. So when you say like CP is underage, what does underage mean? You have to first define underage as being a universal thing that means the same thing to everybody. And it doesn't. So again, like what does underage mean? Ah, Raheem says underage like 12 years or under. Okay, underage to me means anyone under 18. For some people, Raheem, 12 and under, great. Underage, 18 and over. Ant says 16. Beza says under 18. Okay. Jamie says underage to my Euro friends, thinks it's below 16. Okay. So what does that mean? And I think that's the problem we're having. Is like when you say it's underage, so it's CP, you're not saying anything. Like you're not actually saying anything. Okay. So I need it to mean something when we say something life five years ago i wasn't actually arguing for the legalization of child sexual abuse material Obvi i was pointing out an apparent hypocrisy in child welfare norms and are allowed i disagree i think the way vosh even made the argument was in so many ways um was in so many ways justifying the consumption of it once of materials produced through the harm of children in our stores you know with an abrasive devil's advocate abrasive and bad so bad i have spent the past five years explaining it and to be clear, it really is a bad argument. But you know, a lot of guys in your position who are these kind of like philosophical types, they want to talk about the whole child porn thing and how it's just as bad as um, slave labor, I think was your argument. Yeah, so that's one of the, the great philosophical debates of our time. Just can't keep, uh, can't keep it from I don't know, what is it about smart guys that they feel like, I must rationalize child porn? Like, do you feel like it just- Well, because the world does though. Like, I think you should never put your child in Hollywood. I think if you want to protect children, they should never be actors and they should never be in dance class. What do you guys think about that? Is that too extreme? Because again, remember, we're talking about lolly, which involves no children. And if we're actually going to protect kids, I don't think kids should ever be actors. What do you think about that? Because some people would say, Brittany, you're taking it too far. But the statistical probability of abuse when your child goes into Hollywood is so high. I think no child should be allowed to be in Hollywood. Right? So again, like you want to protect children, but you're worried about cartoon drawn, drawn children. You're not even worried about real kids. You're so fake. You're virtue signaling. If you're talking about real CP, then I agree. There's a victim there. But if you're talking about lolly, there's no children involved. You're not protecting kids. 
You're only pretending to. You don't even care about kids, bro. Okay, if you're talking about real CP, I agree with you. There's a victim. Absolutely not okay. But if you're talking about Lolly, there are no children involved. You don't give a fuck about protecting kids because no children were involved in the making of Lolly. That's not how it works. Okay. Um, I mean, first of all, just for starters, that was heavily taken out of context, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, it's gotten thrown through the, the, the dishwasher a bit, um, as internet arguments go. The, the basic, like, the basic idea of the argument, you know, the, the fundamental, which is, like, it's it's bad to, 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 to participate in the consumption of any product, which, as a necessary prerequisite for its production, mandates the abuse of children. Every, everyone would agree with that, unless people are literally pro-child abuse, I guess, but most everyone would agree with that. People just don't like the direct comparisons, because, A, in my case, it wasn't the most accurate one, um, due to some, like, nitty-gritty detailed bits. Uh, and two, it's like deliberately provocative, right? And that's the problem. You know, that comes up the same reason people make comparisons to Hitler during arguments. It's like the most provocative thing you can get to. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you jump right to it. Like well, that's the problem with the debate space. That's the problem with these conversations. It's like, what if what can can we just have a real conversation, please? Can we have like a real fucking conversation, please? How do I make a point about why X or Y about capitalism is bad? You know, cracks knuckles. Okay, I've got yeah. one for you. You know, and and if and even if Matthew says, what if a child sees Lolly though? Can't that hurt them? I don't know. Well, do you think so? I I consumed a lot of like corn growing up. I consumed a lot of hentai. I feel fine. Papa Gut actually talked about this, how somebody was making an argument that like consuming corn as a young person can destroy you. But like, that's a personal experience. I don't feel that way. Papa Gut doesn't feel that way. I think it's fine. I don't think it's like great to like give your kids corn. Obviously that's like super cringe, but like I was a kid on the internet. I found hentai. I found corn. That's what I, I, I wouldn't say that I watched a lot of lolly, but I think like I watched a lot of hentai and those were often like youngly depicted school people. And it just felt like they were people my age. So like, what did it matter? And then when I aged up, I aged them up. So I don't know. Like, I don't think it harms kids universally necessarily. I think it depends, right? It depends on the child. It depends on why they're consuming it. it. depends if they're already being abused. I was never abused as a child. I feel like I have a really healthy relationship with sex. I didn't have sex till I was 22. I, you know what I mean? Like, I have a really good relationship with sex. But like, you know, depending if you're from your, like certain bubbles think porn makes you gay, but like, we don't have data to show that. So again, like we don't have data to show those things. You know what I mean? So some people have negative impacts. Some people don't. It's just, it depends. Like, I just don't want to assume that that's the case for everybody. I, I think it's weird to assume that like as a child, I was reading New York Times bestsellers and they had sex scenes in them. And Nick, maybe I shouldn't have been reading that stuff, but like, I don't know. I turned out fine. I'm successful. The world's great. I'm doing, I'm chilling. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. And I wasn't smexually abused as a child is what I'm trying to say. So again, I think the problem is, is we're making blanket statements for a very individual experience. And I think that's probably pretty bad. If you're bulletproof on how you phrase that argument, people are going to get mad at you, but I wasn't. And if you're not, people will get more mad at you. And I have had to explain it so, so many times. The vegan gains debate, that's a solid F. Not only did I not make my arguments well, at one point I made my anti-child pornography argument so poorly that it got clipped out of context and people are using it as uh, an argument that I support child pornography. My basic argument is that like, oh, I why is child bad? Because to produce it, you have to hurt children. And I, I just don't have the data, guys, on this at all. We don't have the data yet. I know some people are working on some studies to see if consuming these things will help save more children in the long run or hurt them. So we don't know. We do not have the data. So what we're working off is our bias and prejudice. And so like that's the problem is like we need to make sure if you want to help children, if you want to really save children, you have to know who the real predators are. And it's it's literally going to be your family and friends. It's going to be people you already know. Sometimes a stranger. If you really care about your children, think about sleepovers. Think about dance recitals. Think about pediatricians. Think about teachers. If you really want to help children, look around you and not at some horse loving freak on the internet who's never going to meet your kid. You want to protect children? Watch your kids, bro. Pay attention to the adults you leave them with. You know what I mean? And again, I don't like Vosh's like questioning or arguments, but I don't think all of you are as like educated in this as you think you are. And you are obviously too emotionally invested to come out with a good enough argument based off of data. We don't even have the data for the arguments you're making. We are still figuring it out. You want to protect kids? Look at the people around them. Oh, because it hurts people to produce it, yeah? Producing child porn requires harming a child. The argument I'm making is that it frustrates me that liberals recognize child pornography is bad. 
great, nice, well done. But then the really, really defensive of like global uh, uh, commodity production chains that involve um, child slave labor. Like we'll talk that off like really, really, really uh, readily, you know? Like, oh, well, there's no other choice. Oh, well, we don't have to care about that. Oh yeah, dude, like cobalt that's mined up is done by child slave. But uh, you know, like whatever, that's just how the economy goes. Oh uh, dude, whatever, like we make computers, they look sick, bro. Like don't think about it. So that was the argument that I was making originally. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think a better argument would have been a different one, but I can I still think it's the wrong argument. I think so. I think if you guys get off your like ick about his CP defense, just it's a bad argument regardless of what he used as an example. And I'll say it's a bad argument because again, we can't do perfect. Even having a child is harm, existing is harmful. If humanity cared about each other, they we would all unalive ourselves. Because like us existing is creating like chaos and detriment to the world. The biggest threat to you in terms of corruption is another person, right? Because it's like, well, thought out, depending on how you think about it, though a lot of, a lot of people don't believe in free will. So again, like Vasha's argument is silly because he's insinuating a world in which we do not have suffering or do not have the sort of reality of slave labor. If you want a world without slave labor, you've got to get rid of humans. That's just what it is. Right. And that may be an extreme take, but it is one of those things where his argument is just a bad one, no matter if he was using CP or the military or some other argument. And that's just, you know, uh, me personally, I would try to find another example. <laughs> me too. Like, hey, no, like, hey, me too, buddy. The reasons for this argument being rhetorically and optically bad are pretty obvious, I'd say. But I wanted to explain why it's also logically bad. The parallel between child sexual abuse material and commodities made with child labor is tenuous, mostly due to a huge gulf in personal moral culpability. Right. I, I mean, Hopefully that's obvious. It certainly wasn't to me back then. I still believe the presence of child labor in our supply chains is a, a massive issue, but you know, I've stopped making that point in such stupid, pointlessly abrasive ways. You know, there's a sickness in the mind of the very specific kind of debate bro that I used to be, where you believe that if using the most inane, hyperbolic shock value arguments, uh, it, it makes you seem smarter. I'm sorry. That's true. I can explain what I was thinking. That's the edge lord. That's the part of the edge lord that people don't understand about people. Okay, that makes sense thinking at the time but i can't for the they life. also like it in people because it feels more like honest because the world is so it's so lies and it keeps themselves from like facing the truth so that's fair but i think people like edge lords because they feel like oh my god are they being honest to me like studies have shown that people trust people who cuss because it feels more honest and real so life of me understand what i was thinking if that makes any sense yeah all edge and no point Truly. Oh, and, and to be clear, I didn't make that argument just once. Remember, the whole rhetorical strategy was edgy, abrasive bullshit designed to bait arguments. And it, it worked. I mean, arguments were had. You're a live streamer. You know, you, you have a hot take or you make a, an abrasive argument. You know, chat brings it up in the future. You argue about it again. I'm sure there are a million clips of that argument from different streams, but it's all the same damn thing, you know? Maiden says this whole thing just feels like a huge deflection for him, even though I don't think he should be under as much scrutiny as he is. Yeah, I want him to really, like, he doesn't seem to really be owning the bad arguments, but I think he thinks his argument is reasonable. And the only thing that made it bad was that he mentioned CP, but I would argue that the argument itself is bad. And but because the audience is so bad faith, they also think this is about the CP take. It's not about the CP take. The argument as a whole is a bad argument. And that's really why this is bad. But Vosh doesn't want to con concede in that regard. And the audience doesn't want to concede in that part. The audience wants to crucify him for the C par CP part. He wants to say the CP part was just an example of a good argument. But the argument itself is a bad argument. And that's really what we should be upset about. Is he has made a bad argument, whether he used CP, chocolate, or something else. But because H3 and because the haters are just... And I don't even like Vosh, by the way. I literally cannot stand watching this man. I see my brain is like the argument is bad, which might be my neurodivergency, but it feels, you know what I mean? It feels like the way people are reacting, including Vosh, is like they're still distracted about the CP argument. That's, that is fine. But the real argument is that the, I think it's a bad argument. Falcon says, I think he said it's a bad argument. No. Is he saying that? I'm not hearing him say that yet. I'm hearing him say that he shouldn't have used CP to be crazy discord says before this i just assumed lolly referred to a character archetype in anime i had no association with it outside of that like most things it makes sense that it found its way into corn it just doesn't make sense to me to consider it more problematic than a lot of other things in corn it's just not for normies i agreed basically with that give or take though i will say it and i'll say it again i couldn't date somebody that was like a heavy consumer of lolly or really really liked it i would see that as a sexual lolly i would see that as like a huge red flag but at the same time, I also don't consume it myself. Like, again, sexual lolly.
because like why would I do that but also like I can see depending on how you define lolly so prepubescent but obviously like I've watched a lot of hentai with high school girls I just don't give a fuck that they're in high school because they're drawn like everybody else's in anime and I don't see them as real people and when they're fucking monsters with eight legs I'm certainly obviously not there for any part of reality like if you're watching like mythical porn no part of what you're consuming is based on anything real anyways it's obviously just for the vibes bro Everybody looks a little CNC with some octopus, you feel me? That's drawn in a robot and actually made in a lab and not actually real animal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like we're not being really honest about, again, our consumption of video games. We don't really want to murder people when we ran, ran, run over people in, in Grand Theft Auto, right? Do you actually want to murder hookers when you run over them in Grand Theft Auto, you freaks? Turn yourself into the cops right now. Or are you just fucking having fun in a world that, like, doesn't exist with rules? And again, like if you're actually thinking about running people over, then that's probably why you're assuming everyone is con who's consuming like hentai of any kind is maybe also, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like, aren't you just watching it and like forgetting about it? Mm. No, it's like, it's like taking 500 photos of me getting in a, in a car accident uh, and then saying it's, it's 500 different car crashes. It's all the same stupid fucking argument. Unfortunately, five years back, it took me a little while to catch on to how fucking stupid and self- Yo. Lakara, do you really think tentacle porn is gross? Because if you do, like, we are not living in the same reality, my bro. <laughs> Destructive. My edgy argument was safe within the bubble of my then <gasps> tiny. Did Vosh use the word bubble? Write that down. 2038. I'm doing a bubble compilation to show you guys how everyone lives in bubbles. And this is another part of that. Oh, I love that. Community. Where the only eyes I had on me were the eyes of my, I don't know, hundred or so committed fans or, or whatever back then. I wasn't really seeing any negative consequences from employing this rhetorical strategy i mean it would bait arguments from chat of course like i got that's really normal if you have a small community that understands you the nuances the jokes and all that stuff then like we're all gonna have like obviously a safe space the moment other bubbles see it they're gonna think like you're the worst person ever right it's like people that are like not in the drag bubble and they see drag and they're like this is the worst thing ever you know what i mean uh, those disagreements uh, but that was what i was looking for so I didn't interpret that as a sign of the argument itself being flawed. You know, it wasn't until I brought it up in a debate with Vegan Games, uh, a far, far larger YouTuber, that I realized how people outside of my community bubble perceive the argument. Pedophiles, right, who buy child pornography, mm -hmm. would you say they should not be held responsible for doing that? Yes. See, this argument. Now, this is a this is a weird argument. So this is why I think you're allowed to be concerned about Vosh in relation to his safety around children. So you and I are now on the same page. So now this is really weird. Why the fuck wouldn't you hold people accountable for buying, consuming, or, or, or consuming like real children, like real children? Like what are we talking about here? Right? So let's see. Really? Even though they're directly supporting child rape? Yeah. I think that's, it's uh, it's hypocritical. If, if Jamie says, I feel like a lot of people here insinuating you're defending Vosh or dying on the hill of Lolly are just taking this way too personal. Bias and prejudice. Everybody lives in bubbles. Everyone gets the ick. And that's why these arguments are really hard to have, but that's why my work is predicated on proving we live in bubbles. That's why my work is predicated on proving we all have biases and prejudice and we don't actually want to protect children in the same universal way. Right? Like we do not agree on how to protect children. Right? So, okay, let's see what Vasha's argument is, because again, this is where I'm like, what the fuck? Why would you say that? If I, because I, I bought my computer and the silicon in it was farmed in Africa by slaves. If I can do that and that's legal and that's... no one's going to call me out my shit, then yeah, I have to be consistent in that respect. Okay. See, this is so autistic. This is autism. This is like autism. This is autism. Even conservatives like Ben Shapiro will say, we agree we shouldn't kill people unless it's Palestinians. Because values change contextually. Vosh wanting to be very consistent, even at the detriment of his own logic, isn't actually logically sound. It's autism. It's like taking it so literally, you've missed the fucking point. Even Ben Shapiro, even pro-lifers believe in the death penalty or believe in going to war. Even pro-choicers that want to protect people believe in bodily autonomy and like believe in protect. Like everybody has a contradiction in their value system which is why I think life is tiny contradictions. The fact that Vosh wants to be so consistently sound is what I'm saying is his autism. It's not reasonable. It's not how real, it's not how neurotypical or basically people think normally. The community bubble perceived the argument. Pedophiles, right, who buy child pornography, mm -hmm. would you say they should not be held responsible for doing that? Yes. Really? Even mm -hmm. though they're directly supporting child rape? 
Yeah, I think that's it's uh, it's hypocritical. If if I because I, I bought my computer and the silicon in it was farmed in Africa by slaves. If I can do that and that's legal and that's... no one's gonna call me out on my shit, then yeah, I have to be consistent in that respect. Okay, look, um, I I think there's levels to this. So I wouldn't equate buying a computer to buying child pornography. Um, I mean, it's in order to pretty much have a job anymore, you need a computer. Uh, so do you really think it's reasonable to equate something like buying something that might cause some amount of uh, cruelty exploitation in the world um, that you need for your job just to be able to like not be homeless to something that you're buying purely for very shallow personal pleasure that causes horrible, irreparable damage to somebody uh, lifelong? I mean, we can we can actually like partition it out. I don't know how much child pornography goes on the market these days. I haven't exactly checked, but I'd be willing to bet that the uh, the total amount of suffering that goes into um, the the child slaves that might not like the silicon in Africa, you know, in terms of me supporting that industry, I mean, that's pretty bad. And I didn't have to buy a computer this big. I could have bought something smaller. I could have bought a little Chromebook. Um, you know, I don't wonder how many more hours slaves had to mine up that silicon to justify me being able to own this. But um, I'd go well, with the two clothing I wear put together by slave shop work or sweatshop workers. Sorry, glasses like like everything. And and if you wanted to step beyond the slavery element, like all of the um stuff that I buy, it goes towards corporations. I believe that wage slavery is unethical, the exploitation of workers, and everything you buy contributes to that, unless you're buying from a co-op. Okay, well, well, look, um, there are, like, I think we can both agree that reducing suffering in the world is a good thing, correct? Mm -hmm. Even if you can't get rid of all of it at once? It's always a good thing to reduce suffering, yes. It's insane to me that I needed that kind of external confirmation to understand how bad it looked, how bad the argument was, but I have a very low opinion of the me and a lot of these older clips it just makes me look fucking stupid to be honest as you know as it turns out when you're talking to other people and making arguments about ethical labor or labor laws or whatever uh engaging in this kind of argument doesn't make people want to you know they, they don't get like blustered and, and and confront you in a debate about labor laws it makes them want to call you a pedophile obviously so yeah that's the explanation for the argument okay but the argument is bad <laughs> okay i still think he's saying he's saying the wrong argument i think it is Brittany's opinion it is always bad unless you were, well, okay, see, okay, so I'll be really autistic. Everyone ready? Everyone fucking get ready because you're going to shit bricks, okay? I'm going to make you vomit. Are you ready? Technically, in order for police officers and people trying to save children from harm, they have to consume their grape tapes and they have to put, put they have to witness child harm. So technically, when we say consuming CP, so not drawn children, because this has nothing to do with drawn children, because there's no crime in a drawn a drawing. Okay, real children, technically, there is a circumstance in which consuming child corn is ethical because you need to consume it to know the crime existed, which means you can prosecute the offender. So technically, and I don't know if you guys have seen the mental health stats or at least the stories from people who work in these fields trying to save children, it is devastating because they have to see the crime. And so technically, you could argue that seeing or watching it has a space and time in which it is within reason to persecute predators. But I feel so bad for the people who have to do that for a living because I don't know how, I mean, I know their mental health is really like impacted. So I think that in only in that situation, could you say, okay, Obviously, not literally, it's never ethical or moral. But I would say from Brittany's perspective, it is always morally incorrect to consume child CP, real real children, uh, for pleasure. In the same way, I think it is wrong to kill an animal for pleasure. And though those things can be different and everyone has a different experience with it, I think that that's the argument that needs to be made. Is like, are you doing it for pleasure's sake, out of survival, or out of protection of children? So if you're doing it to protect children, cool. If you're doing it for, uh, you're killing an animal because you have to feed you and your family, cool. If you're doing either CP consumption, some real children, or uh, animal cruelty for pleasure, I would say that's bad. I would say they are different. And there's a spectrum between all those things. But always, for me personally, this is my values, always, if you're consuming CP for pleasure, no matter the spectrum, uh, that I can think of, at least, I would say always bad. Always bad. Like, always red flag, would not trust you around children. But then again, we have to have an argument about, like, what does that mean? What does that look like? Obviously, I'm thinking someone who's very old and and watching CP very young. I'm not thinking, like, an 18-year-old watching a 17-year-old, which in the state of California could be considered CP. So be very careful with this argument as well. Remember that your personal ics impact real people's lives. There was an infamous case of a lesbian 
who was 17 dating her girlfriend who had just turned 18 in high school. And the mother waited until the girl was 18 to prosecute her for child rape, basically. And for child like CP consumption, basically, because teenagers are always sexting each other. So just be aware that as much as we want to protect children, putting them on the sex offender list for consuming their own selfies is probably not going to help them. So again, the nuance is recognizing that even if you want to protect children, you have to know how to do it. And until you're ready to have those conversations, you're going to cause more harm because the road to hell is paved in good intentions. And your good intentions are going to get kids put on sex offender lists because they own their own selfies. And that's not good. So again, these are real cases that have absolutely happened in the United States and they blow my mind to this day because it's not thing you don't think about it because you think like, I'm just going to protect kids. Oh, cool idea. And then you do it and you realize like, oh, fuck, like, wait, this is causing way more harm. Again, the road to hell is paved off good intentions, paved on good intentions. You have such good intentions. I love your good intentions. Just make sure you're not fucking over a kid in the process because you didn't think about it longer than a second. Like I said before, it does reflect really poorly on me, but only in regard to my uh, intelligence and character, not any sort of paraphilia. Uh, the clip is from very early on in my career. I think the original stream bot was actually lost when my Twitch channel was first banned. But while looking for video context to add, I ended up finding this ancient effort from a fan of mine, presumably, to provide context to that clip. I don't know who made this. I hope they're doing well. None of it is, yeah, I agree. None of it is ethical. But we've already made this social decision that people are not responsible for the systems by which the stuff they own is produced. We've already made that decision. You're right. You're kind of revealing your power level. No, this is exactly why. This is exactly why fucking me. I'm right, but I'm revealing my fucking pedo power level because I'm right. No, this is a moral inconsistency in society. The answer should be that all of these things are bad. Hopefully, that makes what I was doing there a little more. Clear. I believe the argument, but again, I'm not sure if Vosh really believes this or not like is he really embarrassed can he even express that embarrassment i've made such bad cringe content that i've taken it all down because i'm just like embarrassed about it i was young they were dumb arguments but it's super embarrassing and cringe bro i'm not sure vosh is able to physically represent that embarrassment within himself which to be fair to us might come off as disingenuine i'm not sure that it is but he does i have a hard time thinking he's genuine but i don't know if that's my bias clear even if the way i chose to do it was really really stupid so there you go uh that right there that's the basis of like 90 percent of the pedophilia accusations that people make against me hopefully i explained it decently in spite of the fucking herculean effort uh i made five years ago to make it completely inexplicable uh i'm, I'm so so tired of explaining it i i sometimes see it doesn't matter it's gonna follow you forever welcome welcome to the internet bro you can go and get a normie job if you'd like probably not though Probably not. And then the bigger your audience, the more like, look, Ethan is absolutely in the same video against Abin Preach. And I love Ethan. The same video against Abin Preach Ethan made where he's like, they're making fun of a grape victim. Ethan literally makes fun of a grape victim. So again, nobody, everyone just is worried that when you do it, you're serious. They can say a slur, but when you say a slur, they're not sure if you mean it. They can make a grape joke, but they're not sure when you make a grape joke if you mean it. That's really what's happening here. And that's where I don't know either. Is Vosh doing what he's doing? Because I'm suspicious of Vosh too, right? Like I'm also suspicious of Vosh, but I don't have enough information to be consistently suspicious of him because I also know he's fitting a trope of so many different kind of neurodivergent people and debate people on the internet. But I'm not sure. My guess is behind closed doors, Vosh is a bit of a pest. And I would say that you probably shouldn't date him. And I would say, based off of the women I know who've interacted with him, he's not a very thoughtful person. But I would also say that of most of the men in this space, the chronic cheaters, the chronic liars, the chronic, chronic douchebags, Vosh is not an exemption of this. The same people in this space that Vosh is associated with also break the consent of their female partners, are also little pests, and are also not that bad of people, but they're not that great either. They're not that bad, but they're not that great. Like, they're not like grape status, and they're probably not PDF status, but they are little pests, and they will lie to you to get you into bed, and they will use you emotionally, and they will tell you what you want to hear so you give them what they want. So you can go after Vosh, but I don't know if we have enough evidence right now to assume the worst of him, but we do have enough evidence to assume you probably shouldn't date him, ladies. Okay, do we all agree, men and women and theys and thems? No dating Vosh. We're gonna add him to the list of people not to date. Okay, 
No dating Vosh. No dating openly like chronic cheaters. No dating douchebags. No dating any of these boys. I'm banning you. Auntie Brittany says it. No dating Vosh. There, I solved all of our problems. We cannot get into the mind of Vosh to know if he's a PDF file. But I'll tell you this right now. He's sussy baka of a lot of other things. People say I'm always talking about child pornography. But what they're referring to when they say that is me defending myself from that clip, from people <laughs> bringing it to me. Like, like it's it's like this nonstop. I mean, it's, it's Sisyphus. <laughs> Seattle is weeping. <laughs> Truly, like, I, I, I cannot tell you how much I hate the me in that cliff. The amount of trouble he's caused for me, you know, honestly, a car crash would have been less trouble. I tell you, uh, monumentalist, give me a broken leg. I swear to God, it's so, so, so stupid. It's, I don't want to explain it anymore. It, 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 please let this stand as my explanation. Please, God, it's embarrassing. I look so stupid. Even with the charitable explanation, I look stupid. Let's move on. So thanks to my indefensibly stupid, let's call it child labor argument. I had given people a very easy in with which to- What do we do without the men? Have a better life. Jordan Peterson asks us, what would we do without men? Have a better life? No, I'm just kidding. I love my husband. Shout out to her. <laughs> me. Now, again, to be clear, I really, really don't fault people for <laughs> thinking the worst of me on account of those clips. I really didn't do myself any favors Ooh. in that regard. And I've been dealing with the social consequences of them for the better part of five years now, you know, of my poor rhetoric. I just want to make it clear that I'm not lumping everyone together in like a your bad faith if you criticize me category. Of course, Obviously. there are still people who act in bad faith and not all the people who... And that's true. There are absolutely bad faith actors out here and also just sensitive prudes, bro. Man, it's like so difficult to have a nuanced conversation when somebody's got such heavy bias, bro. Wanted to attack me were interested in being honest about it. I'd made it really easy for people to make, uh, you know, pedophilia accusations against me. But the problem was once I stopped making the child labor argument, I stopped making the child labor argument, you know? I stopped. So folks went fishing for other stuff to throw at me. And a lot of it- Does he take his videos down? I know some content creators don't take their past content down. I take mine down because I don't want it to reflect in any way on my present self. I've changed so much. But I know some content creators don't like to do that. But I just feel like I don't want my old videos to be watched and consumed and to convince somebody of a what I think is a bad idea now. And I know maybe these ideas I have now will be bad to me in the future. But I wonder if Vosh takes his videos down. Was- really, really dishonest. One category of disingenuous pedophilia accusation that I find particularly maddening is when they're cut from a video in which I am clearly arguing that our society has a, a, a tendency to fetishize youth in girls and that it's bad. I think that is true. I think that is a true. Every feminist group I belong to agrees with this. Every, every minority group talks about this. Regular normie society absolutely fetishizes the fuck out of young people, youth, women, all of that. Essentially, I'll say our society broadly has a serious problem fetishizing young girls. And people will look at that statement and, and they'll say, Raheem says, don't you get paid less that way? Yes. Values over money. Values over loyalty. Yes, I make less money when I private videos that I don't believe in anymore because I don't make the AdSense off them. Values over money, people. Oh, he's projecting. You know, he's not talking about society. He's talking about himself, which is insane. You know, insane. Does that logic apply to all social critique? If I said that America has a problem with racism, for example, hypothetically, if you, if you could imagine such a world, uh, would that, would, does that mean I'm projecting my own racism just innately? Here's an example of this exact thing happening live quite recently. The average American man would be most attracted to. Which hypothetical strip club would be the most crowded if it all opened tomorrow? I think it would be somewhere from 14. The question. No, I think it'd be somewhere from 14 to 17. I don't Which think we See, that's crazy. We should delete all men. Are men really that, like, privately like are they really that into teenagers well some studies show they might be and that's the question is it because of where we are in evolution or is it because like men are gross you know what i'm saying like why i hated this argument from max originally mr girl like this is not a good like this is not a good sign you know what i mean if men are generally like attracted to 14 year olds like that's not fucking good but then at the same time, all of history has shown that to be pretty true. And if that's true, maybe men should consider old yelling, like old yeller yourself, bros. So we can live in a peaceful world. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you hear like, or is that just evolution? And then the question is, what do we do while well, you're evolving past that? You know? Like, gross. We, we this motherfucker okay. wants to fuck 14-year-olds. Okay. That is a child. What a crazy clip. That guy I'm talking to in that clip 
Mr. Girl is, well, if he's not- By the way, we do not know he's an actual PDF file, right? We have no evidence that Mr. Girl is literally, and again, this is my neurodivergency, a literal PDF file. He's definitely questionable. You know I have a falling out with Max. You know he's blocked on my end. You know that I think he's dangerous and I don't recommend you date him. But at the same time, I don't know if he's into children. Because that would kind of be weird if he was since he's dating a woman. But also you can date a woman and be a PDF file. But like he, I don't know if he literally is. It wouldn't really make sense if he was. But I think that he also is so neurodivergent. He tries to do that edgy, this is what I think about people thing. And also I think he's a little fucked up in that regard. So that's the problem is like, I don't know, but we can't know that he has to be evaluated or he has to confess. A pedophile, he does an amazing impression of one. I'll say that much. And he, he spent that entire goddamn debate being a creepy piece of shit to me, asking me weird fucking questions. I think when he first got on call, he wanted to talk about how he thought he could have debated Hitler out of doing the Holocaust. You know, it started funny crazy like that, but over time it just got creepier and creepier. And eventually I, I just kicked him uh, from the call in disgust. He's one of the reasons that I don't have a debating all comers policy anymore. You know, you gotta filter some of these people. So, all right, uh, where's the context, right? Well, here's a clip from that debate of Mr. Girl asking me that question the first time. Here's a thought experiment. I'm going to, I'm going to open a, uh, discourse says Max did say he was attracted to the girls and cuties. I don't think he said he was attracted to them. I think he said they were attractive, which again, not to be such a neurodivergent, but like it's, that's very different. And I know it doesn't sound like it is different, but it actually is like hugely different. But I also agree that's also bad because I saw cuties. I watched it because everyone was screaming about it. As a woman, it made me cry. I was crying by the end of Cuties. I thought it was really moving and a really honest story. And I don't think women or, or children actors should ever be actors, in my opinion. So as much as I watch movies with child actors, I would never put my child in Hollywood or in acting. But some people think that's too far. I just, like, I wouldn't do it, but the movie did make me cry. I thought it was really, like, you know, Vile says distinction without a difference, but it is huge difference, like huge difference. You know what I mean? So it is a huge difference. Attractive is not the same as attracted. That's why men are so fucking dumb because men will hear women say like, oh, he's attractive. And they're like, then why aren't you attracted to me? What? Finding you attractive does not mean you're attracted to somebody. Like that is such a huge fucking difference. And the fact that people don't know it is so funny to me because that is a huge argument that happens in dating circles. We're like, you can find, I find lots of people attractive that I am not attracted to. I am not attracted to so many people, but I, I know they're attractive. Like I can see that I'm not an idiot. Like I know they're attractive. I just, I'm not into them at all. Like it grosses me out, even though like I know Andrew Tate is attractive, but I'm not attracted to him at all. He icks me out. But lots of people would say, if you find him attractive, then you must be attracted to him. That's no. Absolutely not. That's crazy. It's a um, string of strip clubs in Las Vegas. It's going to be called Mr. Girls, uh, whatever you want, Emporium. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in one strip club, the strippers are 25, 24, 23, 22, all the way down to infants. It, but the, each strip club, and this is a this is a sovereign state, so there's no laws. And in each club, everyone is the same age. Okay, so if you want to watch babies crawl around or you want to watch 100-year-olds, we'll start at 100. So basically everybody, and, and everybody, on the, all the women on the planet have to work here. My question is, in America now, which club do you think would be the most popular if this were to open? So when I heard this prompt, I originally thought they were going to say 17 to 22. I think 17 to 22 sounds about right for what I know about dudes. Tomorrow. In a sovereign state adjacent to America. Yeah, and it's like, it's, you know, there's every, no one, identities are, uh, there's no issues of, of social ostracization. Nobody knows, everybody's, everybody's wearing whatever, disguises. The, the closest Not argument you could make there, I think, is from European literature from ye olden days. And it seems like predation against girls spiked up around like 14 to 16. So if you could, I'm asking, if all the degenerate sex you, tourists. Hmm? Yeah, looking around you at America now. Base, I want you to base this just on your um, sense. You know a lot of people. Do you, you talk to a lot of people about this? You're in, you're, you're, and then we, we all... You know, I haven't talked to a lot of people about this specifically. I'm going okay, to... Well, well, we, just, we run in different circles, but based on your observations of American humans, mm -hmm. which club is the most popular? I, I, men. Straight men are going, and, and they're women. Culturally, I don't think that we've done anything to appropriately discourage that kind of predatory behavior towards girls. So my guess is that it would be somewhere between 14 to 17. 
I think well, the culturally would have been extremely the girls don't know. The girls don't know that you're. Is it even predatory to go look at them? They don't know that you're looking at them. I would say that the it's predatory. Way, it's a. It's a. Okay. It's a website where you can log in and look at locker rooms. So forget the slavery aspect. I would. You I would lo- continue to believe that's predatory. For yeah, 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 for sure. But reasons. much, much harder type of predatory behavior to discourage if it, no one will ever know that right. that camera. You was will there. know. You will know. You. You will know. You did it. Why don't people ever consider themselves the possible victim of their own addiction or their own consumption? You will know. That's the point. Even if your victim never knows, you will know. And the fact that you can live with yourself without getting help or doing like some sort of um, penance, you know, not to be so religious. That's the problem. You will know. Why are you comfortable with knowing you did something like that? That's the thing. It's not about your victim knowing. It's about the fact that you know. There. If you put a, a camera in an underage girl's locker room and the police found it, I assure you that they would be able to very quickly, <sighs> succinctly, and with great confidence explain to you what you did wrong. All right, then I have to go take care of something. No, I'm just kidding. My question is, which club is the most popular? My question is, where do you think we're at? And I'm asking it in kind of a exciting way because we're in public. But where do you think exciting? we're at? What is... I, I, I genuinely don't think that much has been done to culturally disbar the average modern guy <laughs> from the attitudes that we had back in antiquity okay, towards so women what, and attractiveness towards women. And what number? I think it would be somewhere from 14. No, I think it'd be somewhere from 14 to 17. I don't which think we've, one? We've changed. Those are big, that's a big difference. I have no idea. And I couldn't which, even begin to think by which categories I would separate them. But you're saying 14 to 17. And I just, do men know what kids look like? Like, do you know what a 14-year-old looks like? Do you even know what a 17-year-old looks like? They look like kids. Sometimes on occasion, one rare teenager will look a little older. But generally, generally, like 99% of them look like literal beans. They look like little babies. So when men have these conversations, are they even imagining real 14-year-olds? Are they imagining like Hollywood 14-year-olds that are played by 35-year-old women? Because that's, I'm convinced that they don't even know what 14-year-olds look like. Like, do you even know what a 14-year-old looks like? There's like, okay, I don't even know. You know what I mean? If people know what a 14 year old looks like, I just, a part of me can't believe it. Like a part of me is like, are you imagining an adult in Hollywood who's playing a teenager? Are you imagining like Bella Swan, who by the way is like in her twenties or Edward, they're like in their twenties playing teenagers. A real teenager looks so small. They're like the itty bitty, they're like children. You look at them and they're literally like your brain goes, oh, child, like child. So I don't know if they even are thinking of an actual 14-year-old. I swear I'm convinced they're thinking of adults. You know what I mean? Marge says, Brittany, I think you're giving people the benefit of the doubt. It's what I do. It's what I fucking do, okay? I give people the benefit of the doubt because if I didn't, I would literally want you all to unalive yourselves because everybody is fucking sick in the head, bro, or everyone is lacking tools. Right? Like, everybody is so fucked up. Guys, look at the statistics of your fucking assaults, pediatricians, doctors, teachers. Like, you have to assume that the world is good because most of us are just fucking lacking tools. Okay? So I give everyone the benefit of the doubt because there is, like, a misconception when we're having these conversations, okay? So, like, if I don't do this, I'm going to want everyone to unalive themselves, okay? So I'm trying, okay? I'm trying. But anyways, okay? I just, I want people to be honest with me. Are you literally imagining a 14-year-old? Are you imagining a movie star who's pretending to be 14 who's actually 22? Because, like, that's different. You will not, you won't pick a number? I will absolutely not pick a number within the range. Because you don't have a guess or because you don't want to be clipped saying it? Because I don't, because I don't even know by what category you would distinguish into that group, and because I'm referring only to my feelings on other people's predilections, not to my own. So you're not asking me for my preference. You're asking me what I expect of the average American. No, a group of which I have a very low impression. Okay, but you don't want to say the number. I don't. I don't have a number. Do you have a number? Is there a number you're looking for? I think. And it's... just a reminder, guys. All of these women in history we learn about, they were babies. That's why it's even more devastating when you learn about these kings and queens. A lot of these queens we learn about, they're babies. They are only 15 or 16. How old was Queen Elizabeth when she became queen? Wasn't she like 15? I could be wrong. Maybe I'm definitely wrong on that. Hold on. I think it's 15. Well, I suppose we'll leave it to the historians to judge. Uh, maybe 16. It might be. I think it would be 14 at first, and then it would 
it would move up once the novelty wore off. I think it would be 15 or 16. Is this consideration in line with your desire to empathize with pedophiles, or is it something more personal than that? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you sound like a pedophile, not a person who wants to promote empathy for socially misaligned people. Why do I sound like a pedophile? Because you're dedicating a considerable amount of thought to the subject of what type of underage girl people would be most interested in. <laughs> what color, if you had to guess what color their underwear would be, Flash, what, what right. would you say? Yeah, okay. You see that? You people ask for a... Okay, she was 25, so she was an adult. She was an adult, but still pretty young, bro. Maddox says, are you all taking into consideration the marriage or the consum co consummation? Because there was a time between ex each many times, for sure. And like, that's it. Like, there's so much that goes into this, like culturally, there's, there's so much nuance. But again, I'm always looking at the bigger picture as well. So these are like individual examples. But what about whole systems that are made and created on the backs of child labor and child marriages? Guys, just like a two generations ago in the US, a lot of y'all's grandmas got married under 18. So just keep that in mind. Go ahead and go ask your grandma and grandpa when they started dating and how much the age gap, like what was the age gap? Even in my high school, the age gap is outrageous. So I agree with Vosh in a sense that the world is absolutely not considering the young, like the like women's ages um, and how they have been taken as girls and quote made into women to date these men, but they're not women yet, they're girls. And how we as a society are now saying, hey, maybe kids shouldn't get married. Like maybe kids shouldn't get married, but we're still not even fully there yet. We're still working on it. We're still figuring that out. So again, I, I, I think if we're really being honest, I don't think the world as a whole, as a globe, is anywhere close to eradicating child marriages or marrying minors. Like I don't even think we're close. And the fact that the West is so privileged, Ethan and Hila are in this safe, rich people bubble with better education and thinking, well, this doesn't happen in my bubble when it's probably happening in their extended family, please. Okay. Like, I think there is a lot of this, you know what I mean? That is being completely ignored. And I think that we can have conversations about it, by the way, that are nuanced and separate from even like anime or the consumption of adults wanting to be cute. Like all of these, things. there's so much that goes into this conversation. You know what I mean? Uh, you people ask for debates and what do we get? I am explicitly talking about a widespread social failure to address, prevent, or discourage predation against young girls. Nothing about my language even remotely implies that I'm describing my own preference. Uh, I think you'd have to be really goddamn dishonest or, or stupid to take that as a mark against me. Or, or alternatively, maybe you, you don't think we have a broader social issue when it comes to the fetishization of young girls. And, and keep in mind, I get a lot of pushback when I talk about age gap relationships where the women are in their 20s. Lots of people get very like upset with me. Like, why do you give a fuck? And I'm not saying you're completely wrong or bad or unethical. I'm just saying it's kind of weird that you would in your 30s want to date somebody who's in their 21s, 22s, 23s, 19s. Like, I think that's a huge red flag. I would never want to be with a man who would be willing to date a girl under 25 who's at least 10 years older. Like, no. You know what I mean? But again, that might be too strict. Maybe I'm being the prude. Maybe I'm being too strict. But that feels like, why are you doing that? Like, what do you even have in common? What does a 35-year-old and a 25-year-old have in fucking common? But also, like, I've seen some marriages that have worked out and they're happily married with five kids and they have a beautiful marriage now that everyone's older. So maybe I'm fucking stupid. You know what I mean? And my belief that such a problem exists is just me projecting my own desires. You know, if you really think that, if you really don't think that broader social problem exists, then I think that's a mark against you, not me, personally, you know, with, with regards to being a suspect. Look, at this point, at least, ought to be taken seriously. Uh, we all have female friends who's true alex is even the concept of childhood being specified by specific 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 age group is relatively a new concept and not universal you know it's really difficult because if you really look into the like the details of how people are raised we often will allow kids to work but not have sex or we'll allow kids to have sex but not work depending on the bubble and some bubbles Kids having sex with each other is very normalized, but kids working is like not. And then in some bubbles, it's the reverse. Did you guys hear about the mom on TikTok that's being like prosecuted by, by the government now because she let her minor child under the age of nine wax, Brazilian wax, like a wax job, multiple older women. And now they're trying, like she was bragging about how she's working, she's making money, but she was like, she was like a young person age, right? The ages on the internet were like anywhere from five to nine. I wasn't sure of the exact age because every story had a different age. 
But I think that's an interesting because obviously like you probably wouldn't want your child waxing adult genitalia or around. But then at the same time, like we do let children work. And I think that's really good that children work, but also maybe not in every industry. You feel me? So again, when we're having this conversation, it's like, what does it even mean to work? What does it even mean to let your children do certain things that are inappropriate? Like we all have a different line. That mom thought it was reasonable. The women, the clients thought it was reasonable, which is even more interesting. A whole group of women, women, not even men, women thought it was normal and natural and reasonable. And I'm like, what? So like, again, talk about bubbles. I can't even process that. And here's a whole fucking bubble that's doing it and running a business and then bragging about it on social media, thinking people would agree that it was cool. Oops. Started getting catcalled when they were young. I mean, young. Teen is one of the most popular porn categories. Uh, barely legal is a, a strip club advertising cliche. So common, a lot of people don't even think about how fucking weird it is, you know? Clearly, a problem exists. I don't think it's a problem that exists inherently. I think it's a product of our constructed social environment capable of being made better or worse through the influence of, you know, different ideal. Wait, wait, wait. Listen to what he just said. I actually think it is inherent and cultural. I actually do think some humans inherently the way that they have experienced attraction or understanding of like procreation is actually sort of inherent in where they are in terms of their like social evolution. And though you can teach things, people to think differently we obviously can't because like billions of people believe in religion, right? So if it was easy for people to just like, duh, not want to predatorize children, like we, it would have been easy, but it's not easy. So why do you think we normalize the predator, like predatorizing children, whether it's in your holy books, by the way, lots of religions have lots of child brides. Keep that in mind as well. It is much, I agree with Vosh, that it is much more normalized to predatorize a child in these religious communities that are, talk very big games about protecting children are the same communities that give money to the Vatican, the same communities whose own leaders had child brides, the same communities that justify child brides in their own family history. So again, I agree that we want to protect children, but look at the same communities that will hide your kids away from LGBT people are the same communities that absolutely have child brides in their recent history. So again, I think there is a romanticization in young people figuring out their path early and getting married and having kids that is absolutely a part of the narrative while they're still spouting they want to protect kids. And that is the nuance that is so hard to have because I don't think all these people are PDF files. I don't think every Catholic is a PDF file. I don't think every Muslim is a PDF file. But their Bibles, their Qurans, their stories, their beliefs, their histories, their gods, children, bruh. Right? Like children. Logical forces. One of the most shamelessly uh, predatory pedophilic ideas I've ever seen taken half seriously is the wall. You've heard of it. You know, the, not the Pink Floyd, the, the, the red pill idea that women become unattractive and lose all sexual value after the age of Red pill, very, very gross. Red pill is very questionable. Red pill be very PDF adjacent. What's up with that, bro? Again, I'm not worried about drawn childless crimes. I'm worried about kids. I'm worried about teenagers, bro. I'm worried about real men having grapists on and then making jokes about it. Fresh and Fit had a little grapist on telling his grape story and laughed about it. And it's just like, oh, that's just like his experience. 30. You know, I know the harm of this specific idea is mostly hypothetical because the median believer in the wall is like a 14 year old boy who doesn't talk to women anyway. But it's still an example of how political ideologies can influence the extent to which predatory attitudes against women are socially normalized. To make a change for the better, you know, you'd probably have to look into some kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, feminism thing. You know, not, not to get political, but uh, feminist writing on the. Raheem says humans don't live in, didn't live until 85 years old, sweetheart. They died at 35. That's not as true as you think it is. Jesus was 33, for God's sake. That's not as true as you think it is. It's actually a mythos that we tell ourselves. In some regions, some versions of the population were decimated by disease. And look, I'm not a historian, okay, bitch? But generally speaking, this idea that like humans died at 35 is a layman's misrepresentation of the data. From my understanding of watching enough, like, again, I'm an idiot too, but when I listen to the professionals talk about this in documentaries, they often say that it's a complete misconception 
of human beings in justifying like why they did what they did. Humans lived like a pretty normative amount of time. We just think they died at 35 because like that's the narrative we keep telling ourselves. But I just, I'm not sure that's actually true. This specific issue, the social normalization of being creepy about girls, that goes back a really long time. So again, pointing that out, I don't think, um, I don't, I don't think that's suspect. I think that's, I think that's a good argument. Fuck me, dude. That is bad. That is. Do you know that the cover for Cuties was sexualized specifically for Americans? Do you know the cover for Cuties was different on different countries' Netflix uh, accounts? Did you know specifically for America, because we sexualize kids so much in our media, they specifically gave us a sexualized imagery of the girls? Did you know that is an American-focused marketing decision? That America as a whole is so fucking gross, even though they pretend they're not. And the same conservative Republicans that claim to have a problem with this cover are often the same ones who are pro-child marriage or have people in their lives that absolutely marry children. So for just FYI, that Netflix poster you are seeing was specifically marketed towards Americans. The one towards other European countries was completely neutral, clothed, normal. So food for thought, food for thought. It's really, really, really fucking bad. Holy shit. If the original movie actually comments on child sexualization, that would be like a movie about child sex trafficking and the poster is like a pinup a picture of a 14-year-old girl with a black eye or something. Holy fuck. I can't, I can't even begin to describe how tactless that is. What's the takeaway from this one? Like, I don't know. Don't do that Netflix. I don't even know. This is like, um, this is unfathomable to me. Does anyone else get the feeling that like men, at least in the West, are kind of like taught to be kind of a little pedophile a little bit with how much we're fetishizing yes. young girls? Yes. Does anyone else kind of get that feeling a little bit? Just No, it's pro- not a feeling. It's literally a part of marketing. Uh, it's a part of rap. It's a part of culture. It's a part of daddy, daddy. Like, and don't get me wrong. I'm all into like age play. You do you. I don't give a fuck. You're an adult. As long as you're all adults, I don't give a fuck what you role play. But yes, it absolutely is. Possibly. Not like every guy's a pedophile, and I don't believe that, but like the way we hyper fetishize youth for girls is like really weird. In every aspect of our depiction of sexual relations between men and women, we almost always uh, 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 associate youth with desirability when it comes to women, but not just youth like earlier than like 40, you know? Because people before, I'd say like people like 20 to 40 are all like in a pretty conventionally attractive range, sometimes beyond that, depending on, you know, a, a variety of things. But, like, the girls are never, like, 35 or 40. They're always 18. Um, not to mention, like, a ton of porn is, like, just turned 18, barely legal, you know. Just, we, ho- hold up your driver's license. We'll censor the fucking name, but, there, yep, there it is. Turned birthday two days ago. Yep, like, they're <sighs> fresh out of high school. Barely mm-hmm. learned how to drive. Hey, mm-hmm. thanks for picking me up. Yeah, it's my first day at driver's school. Like, it, like it's crazy how we, um, h- how much we push this shit. Same exact deal. Uh, me saying there's a broader social problem and people saying I must actually be talking about myself. I can't believe people try to use... Um, what was that movie with Drew Barrymore? There's so many movies. Are Pineapple Express? Seth Rogen's 25 and his girlfriend's in high school. Yeah, it's very normalized. Just like getting girls drunk to have sex with, the, with sex with them was very normalized growing up for me. It was all in media. It was in Hollywood films. And now we call that grape. But back then, that was called a Friday night. That was called a comedy sitcom, right? So Drew Barrymore, there's that movie where she's an undercover reporter at a high school and the teacher falls in love with her, right? And I'm like, okay, weird. And then they get together in the end. And I'm like, weird. And then Seth Rogen, he's an adult dating a high schooler. You know what I mean? It's ve- it was very normalized when I was growing up. So just keep that all in fucking mind, right? Like, you don't even realize it. You know what I mean? Until, you know, you put it together and you're like, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Why? What the fuck is happening? You know what I mean? Uh, Y'all remember the age gap in Scott Pilgrim? I didn't see Scott Pilgrim. You know, Maiden says the 90s were horrible for barely legal stuff. Bro, the Olsen twins, the countdowns to when people were turning 18, so much more normalized in society. Oh, never been kissed. Thank you, Lakara. Never been kissed. So again, I'm all about us having these conversations, but I think we're ignoring. That's why when Ethan Ela was like, this is not normal. This is not normal. This is your bubble. They're ignoring Hollywood, movies, TV shows. Um, Seinfeld dated a girl who was what? Wasn't she 17? I could be wrong. Didn't Jerry Seinfeld in public 
Jerry Seinfeld, age gap, age gap, relationship. Uh, yeah, so with Shino- Shoshana was allegedly 17 when she met the comedian, not, um, let's see, she was underage in 1993, and then she had a large age gap of 21 years. He was 38, she was 17, and he would tote her around, take her around Hollywood, people would photograph them together. Nobody threw Jerry Seinfeld in jail. Okay, so. Use this shit against me. Seriously, it's, it's really frustrating. Oh, and as bad faith clip jobs go, this one is especially funny because it is literally cut from the video that I made uh, attacking cuties. The, the you know, cute the movie. You've, I've been on any drama YouTube from years ago. You, you've, you've heard people attacking cuties. The, oh, the, don't get me started on Woody Allen, LaCara. Exactly. Don't get me started with, with that. Or Tyga and Ky, uh, Kylie. Or Drake and his friendships with minors. We discussed this in my Discord one time. Like, I think it's a sussy red flag when adults want to be literally friends with kids. And it was funny because somebody in chat on Papa Guts chat was like, Brittany's being so brain dead. Adults can be friends with kids without teachers and mentors. And I'm like, those aren't your friends. Those aren't friends. Friends are peers. You, I, you, you cannot be 25 and you're like, my friend's 11. No, it is not. No, you know, like maybe if you're family, friends, or even cousins, and even then it'd be your family and friends. So watch out, y'all. Okay. No, you cannot be friends with children and not have me look at you suspiciously. No. And like if you're saying an, a mentor, if you're saying a, a coach, uh, uh, somebody you look up to, whatever, but do not get me started on this idea of like, oh, I'm 21, but my friend's like 13. So <laughs> we're just friends. Like, no, you're <laughs> no. The, the video is entitled, Netflix tries to capture the pedophile demographic with mixed results. Not, uh, not, the video does not contain an endorsement for the movie. It's pretty critical. So again, like, it's- it The movie's pretty good, but I don't think any child actors, actors should be children actors. I don't think children should act. Yeah, I said it. Fuck Harry Potter. Make all the Harry Potter characters be played by adults. <laughs> Christ, it's like, it's like calling a guy anti-black because he ends a video <laughs> on- I don't know, the history of the Confederacy by saying racism in America persists to this day. Uh, and, and the people... Yeah, Elvis and Priscilla. That's why I think it's weird that Trisha's calling her kid Elvis. First of all, it's not about the kid, right? Obviously, Trisha and Moses are the kind of parents that are willing to have kids and like fetish... Not fetishize, but like objectify their kids. Because you can't have kids and name them like... Names like that and use them for social media without like... Obviously, those kids are going to have to go to therapy eventually. No offense. But yeah, the fact that she's naming her daughter Elvis, like after Elvis Presley, cool, bro. Cool. People are like, ah, well, of course, that means you're racist. I, it's it's just stupid. I mean, you can tell I find it frustrating from the way I'm talking. There's, there's a, I think there is a very clear difference between examples that, or, or I guess evidence that people use against me where I am legitimately saying really stupid shit and then ones where people are just like desperately cutting any kind of clip, like, you know, like Frankensteining clips together and, and, and hoping that, you know, something uh, incriminating comes out in post. It's, there's a lot of that, unfortunately. All right, next clip. We've all jerked it to Lolly at some point or another. We have at some point in our lives been going fucking crazy on some hentai site and we've been fucking stro <clears throat> stroking as hard and fast as we can and then after we nut, we go back look over our history chat and we go like, oh, geez. Oh, boy. Some of these girls looked pretty young. Yeah, this one definitely sounds rougher than the last two clips, uh, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's a bit. It's a joke. A bad joke. I can explain it. I don't think that'll make it any funnier. Uh, the intended comedy element of an indiscriminate whirlwind masturbator being used to draw attention to a problem that problem being the ubiquity of Lolicon in hentai sites. I, I I don't really know how anyone could get like a serious vibe from that. Like there's any kind of like, you know, grave point being made. Again, it's not a funny joke at all. I mean, I cringe looking at it. It's great evidence against me if the point that people are trying to make is that I was or indeed still am cringe. So a point to their favor on that one, I guess. Another thing leftists have pushed is the idea that pedophilia is just another sexual orientation. Like Citation needed. Like being gay or straight. Pedophilia seems to be a predisposition which similar to sexual orientation, you could argue is basically the same thing. And I don't think that makes being gay bad. I think it means that human beings have a diverse way of evolving. When you have a child, there's a chance you could be giving birth to a PDF file. And that's why it's so scary, right? Because when you have a child, if we're finding out that certain chi children, and we're all just like genetic little blobs, guys, you don't have any evidence that there's a God. So again, you thinking you were born of free will and you have this God and you have this soul, which is beautiful, bros. And you think like you're not born this way. You choose to be this way. That's so sweet. But like we don't know that. It seems to be that we are genetic blobs and we evolve over time, millions and millions of years. And our genetics over time have some predispositions. And that predisposition could be gay, straight, pedophile. And then because of that predisposition, you could be right now pregnant with a PDF file who has absolutely no choice in the matter. 
And then you have to contend with that reality that you need to make a space for that kid to come out to you close enough and far enough but between him or her possibly hurting a child in order to get them help. You know what I mean? So again, like you guys might have this belief that God is real and she puts you here on this planet. And so th everything you do is a choice. But for right now, the data shows some possible predisposition, which means if you really want to save children, be aware that you might be giving birth to somebody who might eventually harm a child because of the way they were born. And the irony, of course, is that everyone thinks gay and trans people are going to hurt your kids when it's probably not the case, not in the way you're thinking about it. You know what I mean? So again, like, I don't think human beings are willing to contend with the reality that like we are giving birth to children and those children might have journeys that are so fucking difficult that we're not ready to handle them. And I do think about that all the time. Like what a mortification to go through. What a horrible experience for the, for the parent and the child to be born in a way that like gives you a predisposition you can't get rid of, which makes you undateable makes you un like you can't be a part of society there's no way to justify your desire to harm those kids and it is a harm to children and so again it's like so many layers go into this and then on top of that we don't even believe in assisted suicide that's crazy that's kind of crazy you know what i mean that you don't even believe in assisted suicide for people that are born with predispositions now don't get me wrong i don't want to live in a society that says your predisposition makes you gay and therefore you should unalive yourself that's fucked up but I'm not totally opposed to for, for people that only want to have smex with children. Like if you only want to get it on with a kid, maybe you should old, old yeller yourself. That's my, that's my like take. Is that too far? See, I can't tell. Is that the thing that's going to offend people? I kind of feel like if you do not want to have smex with an adult, red pillars included, if red pillars literally refuse to date women older than 25, I kind of feel like they should old yeller themselves. You know? I kind of feel like that makes sense. Raheem says, when you say predisposition, you mean nothing about being able to do about being able to do about it. You think you can't power, can't get rid of the child urges? No. I, from my understanding, a PD, that's why PDF file is not a person who's harmed a child. PDF file means an attraction to children. It means you cannot get rid of it. Right? You cannot get rid of it. So that's why I say like being a PDF file is a very specific experience like a very experience it's not the same as being a child predator or somebody who ended up marrying a 17 year old that's not the same thing so a pdf file they can't just not be attracted to children that's why it's so difficult they cannot be they cannot change it and then you want them to exist in the world and that fucking sucks like that's really difficult to ask that of somebody and i think that's kind of unfair and so like a part of me is like they should be able to take themselves out but also in a way that's like within dignity, you know what I mean? But also like maybe they could just work in an adult only area and never ever meet a kid and maybe that could work. But yeah, if you are a person who literally can't, like has a only an attraction to children and it cannot be changed, then maybe we could have a conversation about putting them in an adult environment only, you know, and all of those other things. Biles says, I would encourage therapy first. Obviously, we'd always go to therapy first, guys. Obviously, therapy first. There are organizations who want to help PDF files who are non-offending. So again, a child, like an offender is somebody who's hurt a child. A PDF file is just somebody with the attraction, not necessarily somebody who's hurt a child. So if you're a PDF file and you want to get help, there are organizations who are willing to help you. You know, chemical castration does not work, Biza, and I do not recommend it. It often has shown to be very worse for everybody involved, including children. So chemical castration, I do not recommend. I think that's a very, like, um, PDF files don't just want to have smacks with children. They want to have relationships. They think it's about love. Like, if you read the book Lolita, the reason it's such a devastating story is, like, the, the, the data that we've seen is PDF files do not just want to have smacks with children. They want to literally love them in quotation marks. They think they're doing good for the child. So it's kind of like a neuroses. Like, castrating them doesn't take away their desire to, quote, love the child. And I say in quotations because, again, if you want to help children not hurt, then you got to realize why people focus on them. You got to realize like, how do I protect a child 
from somebody like this who might be my sibling, who might be my doctor, who might be my priest, who might be my husband, who might be my sister, who might be my aunt, who might be my coworker. Like if you want to really save children, then we got to know why people are doing things. And I don't think the world is interested in helping kids yet to that extent. I think they're way too traumatized and way too icked out to ever have the real conversation, right? So I, I think there's there's something about that. Q2 so says, so are you saying that people should be unalive for non-offending predispositions that doesn't seem consistent? No, I'm saying they should have the choice if they want to. Like, I'm just saying, well, I think people should live and die how they want, period. No matter if you're a pedophile or whatever. I think all people should live and die how they want, right? Aeneas says in England, they chemically castrated gay men for indecency. Fun, not so fun fact. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah. Mm. Great. Oh my gosh. Stop discrimination. Citation needed. It's time to be more tolerant of demons who feed on kids. Yeah. I do take issue with the moral outrage here. Child no, wrong. Jack says almost every PDF file is also attracted to adults, though. Not true. That's what I'm saying. No, not necessarily. Where are we getting that data from? A PDF file usually is not attracted to older people. That's what makes them specifically a PDF file versus a person who's into all ages. A person who's into all ages is not a PDF file. From my understanding, maybe that's just my bubble. But the reason these words matter is because a PDF file means they're attracted to and usually exclusively to children. Prepubescent, under, under, before puberty. Right. So again, I think that's the problem, too, is like the way I learned about it, the way I read about it from my understanding. I could be so wrong. Right. I could be so wrong. But that's why it's so difficult. That's what I understand from it. Sexual abuse is widely underreported. It's a huge problem. It's incredibly damaging to the psyche of young people. And as they grow older, it can lead to many negative mental health consequences. However, stigmatizing pedophilia to the extent that we are calling them demons probably discourages pedophiles. People. Uh, Beza says they're exclusive and non-exclusive PDF files. That would make sense who feel attraction towards children from getting the help they could need to keep themselves from abusing children. By demonizing them to this extent, you are increasing- No, 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 you could be right, Jack. I could be wrong. I could definitely be wrong. Of course, a PDF file could have sex with uh, another aged person, right? Of course, people, yeah, of course, people could be gay and still have sex with women, right? Of course, people could be lesbians and still have sex with men. Like, of course, you could be a PDF file and still have sex with an adult. That makes sense to me. So I'm wrong. I'm wrong the likelihood of child sexual abuse. Do not demonize pedophiles. Demonize child sexual abuse and encourage pedophiles to get help. Now, if you've got pedophiles who have never uh, sexually abused a child, but they're advocating for it, they're like, yeah, I've never done it, but is there anything really that wrong with lowering the age of consent to 13? Then of course, fuck them. Like, fucking shut them up. Just fucking smack them. But by and large, statistically speaking, there are 370 people watching right now. I'd be willing to bet that at least 20 or 30 of them experience habitual sexual attraction towards children. It's surprisingly common. To those of you who do to an extent that you feel as though uh, it may be like a problem, please, just get some fucking help, my dude. There's nothing wrong with you as a person. We can't help the shit that we're into. We can help our actions. There's nothing... Mm. Okay. It feels weird, man, about this. You can't help the things that you're into. If you realize as you're like 20 years old that you have a thing for kids, what the fuck do you do? Commit fucking Sudoku? Do you just stop existing right then and there? Do you toss yourself in front of a car? No. You have to live your life anyway. And you have to recognize if you're a responsible person. Like I do think the red pill does groom men to be attracted to children. Livy says, I think the patriarchy grooms men to be attracted to very young women, and sometimes it pushes them to be PDF files. However, I think we're talking about people who would be like that regardless. Yes. So usually when I think of a PDF file, I think of somebody who would be that way regardless of environment. But then there are people who are groomed in a way. I do think the red pill pushes men to be into children. I do think that's why it's such like dangerous rhetoric, because I do think that they encourage a lot of like young relationships with young people, no matter how old they get. So I, I do think that that's probably true, which is why it's like really, really a red flag when I see a lot of grown men who want to be with very young women. Because I'm like, what are you doing? Or very young men. Same in the gay, like some gay communities, the age gap relationships are no joke. And I look at them and again, we mean people who are young. We don't mean people who are in their 30s, 40s and 50s having an age gap relationship with somebody in their 80s. That's not who we're talking about, right? Okay. Even, like, even if I just keep this to myself, like this might affect people someday, you know? I should probably maybe see what I can do about that. Talk to somebody. Okay? Man, can I just say how much I uh, hate how my voice sounds in these old clips? So I think that I sound kind of stilted, and I think it's phrased a little weird because I just wasn't experienced at streaming back then. 
But yeah, uh, the message seems fine. As I understand it, uh, encouraging pedos to go to therapy is like mathematically. Sophia said, did he just say we cannot help our actions? I think he said we can't help our attractions. And I kind of disagree with that. But I, I think he means like if you're a, if you're really into something or you're born that way, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think I'm born gay. I don't think I can change my attraction to women or men or non-binary people. Like, I just think I was born that way. But I think you can also change, like, what your kinks. Like, my kinks have changed over time. I didn't make it a point to change them. They just kind of changed over time. So in that way, I've changed my kinks. But I've never changed, like, being attracted to men or women, if that makes sense. So I, I think there's something there. Also, we have to be aware of, like, how old people are when they're consuming certain things. Um, when they're interacting with certain things, I think that that really matters as well. The most effective way of reducing the likelihood of children being harmed, which is the point, I would hope. It doesn't have the punch or the charm of the classic uh, kill yourself debate tactic. Uh, you know, it, it, those elements are lacking admittedly. But my understanding is that that classic debate tactic also just tends to push them into like really insular like minded communities where they're more likely to enable each other's worst elements. So I don't I don't even know what in this clip implicates me, uh, to be honest. <laughs> But, all right, enough with the clips that are easy for me to defend. Let's address the clip that I see second most often. It's probably my least oh. favorite one because it is so stupid and so unnecessary and the bad optics of it aren't even from the argument that I was trying to make. Uh, here, enjoy the terrible clip. Please, uh, please, right now, uncuck your dumb shit Livcock fucking SJW brains and recognize this empirically correct fact that I'm about to spit. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. That is possible. Man, look at how look at how cool and logical I am calling people libcucks for having the audacity to take issue with anything that I'm saying there. Now, my IQ love that. I love that. Love a libcuck, you know. Q must be massive. The way I'm willing to and and this is the charitable take here. Saw my own legs off at the knee, you know, optically speaking. No points for guess. Yes, Jack. Uh, Jack says here's a good question. Don't people have sexual fantasies and kinks that are pretty bad, but never want them to have uh, happen in real life? I talked about this earlier, right, guys? Um, he goes on to say like great fantasies, maybe I'm way off base here. No, that's very true. That's why we say, you know, like people are going to experience a relationship with these things. But see, here's the thing. The red pillars will see that women like 50 shades of gray and think like women want to be abused. No women like the energy and dynamics of like letting go for an evening. They don't want to be abused. But the dilemma is like, people are so brain dead that they'll be like, women want to be graped. And I'm like, no. But like women want to also engage in like C and C without being seen as somebody who wants to be graped or seen as somebody who's bad for engaging in a fantasy because the vibe is what you're going for. You're going for energy. Humans are so intuitive. A lot of us are intuitively based. We're going off vibes. So like the vibes are what we're going for. That's why dirty talk is interesting and role playing is fun. It's like, yeah, if I role play Misty with my like partner, which I've never done because I'm not into Misty, but if I aged Misty up and role played her, is that really unethical? No. But if you're saying, are you role play? Like, it's just a game. And it's like, okay, what's the game? And so again, if I role play, I don't know, the Adams family, it's like, okay, Marticia and Gomez, like, that's hot, bro. But like, I'm not really like, uh, I'm not them. And so again, it's like, what is the fantasy? The dilemma is people think the fantasy is what makes you crazy. So you don't want to go pure conservative where you're like no fap, no masturbation, no none of that, no mass, nothing, like no porn, no anything. But you also don't want to go like everything is permissible without any kind of question. It's like, well, okay, maybe we can have a middle ground of like most things are probably fine, but maybe we should question why we're engaging in that behavior. Even with my positive or negative, like I tried to like ask myself, where does that come from? Hey, why am I into these kinks? Oh, why am I into this thing? Oh, why do I want to do this particular thing? You know what I mean? Again, it's like power dynamics. Um, that's why this idea, like all women want a man who's going to control her. It's like, no. But some women want that. But like, I don't want that. On Love is Blind, this new season, one of the guys is like, I'm used to women who let me have 100% of the control. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but like for some women, they're like, yes, daddy, I want you to have 100% of the control. It's like, okay, you do you, no judgment, but obviously like not my life, right? Not my thing, but maybe it's bad. Maybe it's good. I just want to take it case by case, bros. Okay, I want to talk about it. I think this clip's from 2019, you know, same as the fucking child labor argument. So same era, same brain. Before I can explain what was going on here, uh, we, we have to finish the point that I was making because this is a really nasty clip. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive... Well, obviously it worked for... 
Muhammad, who is the guy who made Islam. It worked for him. <laughs> it worked for Mary and Joseph. <laughs> Canceled. <laughs> Outcomes on the trial as well. That is possible. However, categorically, we oh. discourage those relationships because as a rule, it is substantially more likely that enabling them would cause harm in society. That's the difference between <laughs> act and rule utilitarianism. An act utilitarian would say, oh, this is an instance where- I'm gonna fucking get canceled, bro. I'm gonna get canceled. It was good for the adult and the minor to have sex. That would make it a good action. But the rule utilitarian, which is what I am, would say, oh. even though that individual oh. outcome was good, the act was still bad because in general, in a broader application for adults and children to have sex with one another leads to horribly Ooh. destructive outcomes. For that reason, it is an unethical act. You know, look at that. Whoever cut this clip ended I'm it. saying something positive. Just like passive aggressively, you know. <laughs> right before I said, but really nasty work. And I clearly don't need the help making myself look terrible. So, all right. Uh, what's going on here? What point am I clearly failing to make? And why did I say any of that uh, terrible shit? What I'm trying to explain, uh, poorly, mind you, is the difference between act and rule utilitarianism. They're two different ways of understanding what's right and what's wrong. Yes, Livy says, I see so many rad femmes who are completely anti-porn, even OF, because if you pay a woman for smex, then that's akin to sexual coercion, and I hate that side of the left. Yeah, literally, can we be, like, literally, every bubble's gonna have a different relationship with it, okay? Every, every bubble's gonna have their own relationship with it, and ultimately, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like, you have a relationship with what's reasonable. I think that's unreasonable to ban all women from engaging. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you do you. Like, if you want to think that, you know what I mean? Miss Fishy says, this is so boring. I want to get to the H3H3 H3 part. I think we're almost there, right? The Discord screenshots, the taxes, final thoughts. Okay. The taxes folder is, like, where it's at. Here, all times to it. All times to it. At least that's what I thought back then. To, to, to understand what I was thinking at the time, I'm going to have to explain this in the context of my, my past self's, you know, like sophomoric Dunning-Kruger-esque understanding of utilitarianism. I, I, we have to enter the, you know, the, the very tiny shoes of my brain back then. We have to step into the shoes of my brain back then. Um, and back then, as I understood it, act utilitarians decide if an action is moral by assessing the outcomes of that action, right? So you, you throw a brick at a person, it hits them, it hurts them, that's a bad outcome. Okay, so don't throw bricks at people. Um, and rule utilitarians do this while also considering the value of broader judgments or rules that might consider an action moral or immoral by default, uh, based on a general judgment of the expected outcomes. So we have rules. I would not let Vosh babysit my kids, but to be fair, I would let almost no one babysit my kids. I wouldn't let most of the people that I know in my life babysit my kids. So... Probably not a good example. But no, I would not let Vosh babysit my kids for the record. For the record, Lil. Against throwing bricks at people, not because the outcomes are always bad. I mean, you could miss, for example, and not really do much of anything, but we still have rules, laws against that uh, because the expected outcome of throwing a brick at a person is bad, averaged out, and you want to prevent people from doing that thing generally rather than just like letting people hope that the individual outcome of a specific thrown brick might be good. Does, does that make sense? Well, again, none of this is a good understanding of utilitarianism. So I'm trying to explain how I thought about it. I know you'll have to read up on the subject elsewhere. Don't get your normative ethics lessons from me, please, God. So let me continue with the distinction. In, in the, I guess, uh, to keep with the theme of bricks, you know, we would consider it morally wrong to toss cinder blocks off of a highway overpass. You know, I think most people would agree that's bad. It's possible, however, incredibly unlikely, that doing so might actually end in having a positive outcome. Maybe uh, the cinder block, uh, it, it goes through the windshield and it smashes the face of a kidnapper and the car crashes and the kidnappee is able to escape to safety, right? I mean, that's a morally good outcome from the action, you know? So the question is then, is an action morally wrong if its expected outcome is overwhelmingly likely to be bad, but it somehow just through sheer chance ends up not being bad, mm. you know? Is it morally wrong to drunkenly- People do this with drugs. Like, are drugs morally bad to consume? It's like, no, not on, like, not within the context of just doing a drug. It's like, there's no, there's nothing morally wrong with consuming a drug. Right? It's like, how are you consuming the drug? Drug? Are you putting anyone in danger? Are you putting yourself in danger? Other people? Well, then maybe it might be morally wrong to consume a drug. If you're babysitting, probably wrong to get high or do drugs when you're babysitting. Right? But probably not wrong to do drugs in general. Everyone has a different version of this. Lots of parents are alcoholics and drink with their children. I think that's pretty uh, immoral. But like, you know, I think it's immoral to smoke around your kids or to be high or not sober when taking care of children. But I also am pretty strict when it comes to being a parent, which I think most people like, again, like reaching my standard of parenting is maybe unfair. But I yeah, I think you should be sober for the sake of your children. But also like, what does that mean? Right? Does that mean all the time? So like, obviously, like if your kids are asleep, or you have a sober babysitter, like you can get high or drunk or something. So everyone has like a different like, relationship with what is moral, it's all, it is all context, right? So again, a subscribing to systems is why I always don't like them because they have holes in them. Nothing is so perfectly 
brought together of an idea that you can always like adhere to it. Like when I say harm reduction, I'm not associating associating that with any belief system. Like I don't even know what that means to other people in other bubbles. I'm just saying harm reduction, like just harm reduce within context of a singular situation. But if that means something to somebody in like some big way, if there's a book about harm reduction out there in the world, I don't know what it is. So Vosh, his past self identifying with this like utilitarian idea, this is what it means. So I have to now think this way. That's the mistake of all human beings. That your labels will tell you how to think in every circumstances, if that's ever true. Right? Like. You drive through the front doors of a school if the only person you hit is, by sheer coincidence, about to do a school shooting. You know, I know, I know. You have to understand these are the high IQ moral conundrums that only the smartest debate bro YouTubers can even hope to grapple with. At any rate, in the full clip, I'm clearly siding with the rule utilitarian argument here the, that all these actions uh, would be immoral regardless of outcome, you know, because categorically the harm is... We're, we're engaging with my understanding at the time. I feel so bad. I know more about the subject now than I did then, so I feel like I'm re-explaining bad logic. But uh, look, two things set me up to fail here. Well, one thing did, the thing being me, but I set myself up to fail in two ways. My aforementioned tendency to engage in pointlessly edgy contrarian, ooh, the normies won't like this one, bullshit hypotheticals, and an extremely, extremely broad definition of can have good outcomes. Yeah, I've already addressed this debate bro brain poison before, so hopefully it's recognizable here, those tendencies, in the same way that it was with the child labor argument. I'm shooting myself in the foot in the exact same way with the same personality gun. The reason I hate this clip, the myself in this clip, most of all, is because this argument I was having with chat wasn't even about child sexual abuse. It wasn't relevant. It was completely irrelevant to the point that I was making. It's just shock value nonsense. You know, all, all I'm really doing is conveying an extremely intro to normative ethics understanding of consequentialism. Mm. Uh, you know. Well, that's the problem, right? That's why these like belief systems I think are so lacking when people are like, Brittany, like what philosophy system do you identify with? What? My own, but also none of them. Like none of them are ever going to encompass the real human experience, you know? Ren, you said is Vosh a, 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 a level one? Does Vosh seem like a level one? Obviously not, guys. Pretty funny, though. Now, if you were an intro to normative ethics class, you probably get yelled at by the professor for attempting anything even like this argument. But, you know, you know, leaving that aside. And because it's completely irrelevant, I can't even explain my thought process very well. It just looks terrible, even though in the full clip. I and then, of course, yeah, like I, you have to be born into a society that reflects. Like, again, what if you're just born into a community where, like, this is your moral, like, this is the problem is, like, you have to be morally who said it in the comments somebody said um i don't know what this is about looking said moral luck doesn't take away from responsibility i don't know what you mean in that regard but if you're talking about like being lucky enough to be born into a society that's like morally quote-unquote acceptable versus one that's not like people around the world live in these cultures but okay the irony is like when we watch different like okay guys the fact that people have different cultures means we are not morally acting within universality like we don't have universal moral ideas so if you have a different religion a different god a different belief system a different political like belief system then there is no universal moral system which means we're all living in bubbles of our own construct right and then the question is why your construct why do you believe in your contract why are you going to continue the traditions why are you going to do it the same bubble of conservatives that say let kids be kids is the same bubble in which a lot of them have had child marriages in their background or have allowed children to do things like work and make money and pay tax, which you could argue is not being a child or you could argue it's getting ready to be an adult or their bubbles where kids are in child pageants or bubbles in which kids are dating young. And maybe that is what kids do. But we don't even know what it means when we're like, let kids be kids. We don't even know what that means. It doesn't mean anything. It only means something if you're signaling like or dog whistling to your group that it means something. But it doesn't universally mean anything. Like kids be kids. It's like, what does that mean? The same, the same bubble that literally brags about kids just being kids is the same bubble that brags about their kids working on the weekends to make money. Is that what kids do? I mean, I would argue, yeah. I loved having a job as a kid for fun. I got to keep that money. I got to mow lawns. I got to learn responsibility. But like what else entails being a kid? I did a lot of things as a kid that a lot of people would say like, oh my God, that's not okay for a kid to do. It's cultural. I'm explicitly stating that child-adult sexual relationships are categorically wrong. It's, it's a completely unforced error. You know, I, I did this to myself. Also, with regards to can have good outcomes, this is like a, this is like a fridge temp IQ element of arguing normative ethics. If you're willing to argue like a, a fucking idiot, as I clearly am, literally anything can have a good outcome in some specific scenario. Murdering an innocent person. Well, what if someone put a gun to your head and said they murdered two innocent people if you didn't murder one? Now murdering that person actually has a good outcome because in, with two possible paths, one in which one person dies, one in which two people die, you made the path where only one person dies, so you basically save the life of a person. Woo, there you go. Nothing's inherently wrong. You know, context, context, context. Uh, like, you know, oh, the asteroid hitting the planet would be bad. Well, what if it prevents it from hitting a bigger planet with more people? Child-adult sexual relations. Well, what if 
aliens threaten to blow up the whole planet, etc., etc. I know, I know, I know. It actually is that stupid. It wasn't even the point I was trying to make. It's just that, you know, the nothing is inherently wrong. It depends on the outcome. Style of faux intellectualism was a pretty big feature of how I constructed arguments and made points back then. And, you know, here's it combining with that tendency to reach for the edgiest possible subjects and comparisons. And it really fucks me over. I know there are probably like a, a hundreds of examples of me doing this, but with like murder or domestic abuse or any other just like edgy topic. Like, oh, you, you, you normies in my chat, you think, any, you think that anything is inherently wrong? Well, let me construct a hypothetical for you that you won't be able to grapple with. You see, because I'm smart, I know that actually, you know, what if this thing happened? I, like, I really don't blame people for thinking less of me for uh, that clip. Like, it's just really bad. You know, if nothing else, my hope, like, this is the goal that I'm trying to convey. Don't, don't judge me for any kind of, like, paraphilic interpolation of this. Judge me for being a fucking idiot. That's what I want you to do. I'll expand it. Judge my audience back then for watching me. I shouldn't have gotten any viewers back then. I, I was so stupid. I, I, yeah. Unfortunately for me, my presence online dates uh, back way farther than the creation of my channel, which means people interested in finding examples of me saying stupid shit have a pretty wide range of material to choose from. Before I had a channel, or was he- Everybody has stupid shit on the internet if you've been on it long enough. I don't know why any of us are predicting otherwise. Philip DeFranco does, Destiny does, Hassan does, I do, Vosh does. We all have said dumb shit. Just like, who cares? Yeah, I said dumb shit. Don't longer believe it. Let's move the fuck on. If you can't move the fuck on, I think it's the content creator who can't move the fuck on too. Like if new people find your content, they're like, I can't believe you said that. I'd be like, yeah, dude, I know. Let's talk about it. Crazy, right? But also something about Vosh's energy, I'm struggling with the fact that I feel like he hasn't moved on. I know Philip DeFranco's moved on. I know I've moved on. I think Destiny's moved on. Hassan's moved on. I think they give off the energy that they've moved on, um, even though they still battle those fights. But somehow Vosh feels like this is his chance to really move on. I feel like Vosh needed this context to really move on, but I don't think he has. I think he is haunted by this and he needs to learn not to be haunted by it. Does that kind of make sense? Like, I think that's why he comes off disingenuine because I'm not sure that he's really, a, you know what I mean? Vile says, I don't think he's been allowed to move on. People don't give you the right to move on. He has to give himself it. So he has to learn to move on. It doesn't matter how many times this comes up again. He doesn't have to act haunted by it. But he even said in this clip, he still feels like haunted. You know what I mean? So he is the one who has to move the audience forward by moving on himself. Right? Vosh has not moved on. This is still haunting him. There's no way you could make me feel like the way he seems to feel about things about any of my past shit. Like you're not going to hold me accountable for what I did in my 20s. Good try though. Like you could try, but it's not going to happen. I refuse. Like that's insane. That was literally so long ago when I've already like, you know what I mean? We've all been edgy on the internet, but he's not, he's not acting like that. He's not being like, yeah, dude, I don't know what to tell you. Like move on. But he's, he, you know what I mean? Like he hasn't moved on. He still acts like it's haunting him. It's this big deal. I just want to move on. So move on when he's ready. He will, but he hasn't moved on. Even known as Bosch. I was a, Frequent and notorious shit poster in the community of a streamer called Destiny. I know that's why I'm the way I am. Uh, I know her. I had been in his community for a long time, really long, and I really enjoyed the uh, edgy, irreverent debate lord culture of his Discord server. So let's look at some of the stupid, edgy, irreverent shit I said six years ago there that people have since screenshotted out of context in pursuit of calling me a pedophile. So this is a perfect example of context being maliciously stripped from a screenshot in order to make me look bad, even though I'm right and uh, it, I'm, it's not even controversial. Vosh deleted user. Vosh says, I seem to have provoked a... Okay, hold on. He'll probably read it. So, you know, I'm uncontroversially right, I hope. The conversation was about media and LGBT representation. Here's the gist of it. So uh, coming of age stories are really common. You know, like a young person, uh, they go on an adventure, uh, they meet people they like, and they fall in love, they slay a dragon, whatever. Really, really Oh, by really the way, how do you move on, Fishy said? You move on become by becoming a different person. Like, people fundamentally change when they're ready. And I think when you have, you look back at your past self like, bro, such a different person. Now, Vosh has obviously changed a lot, but some part of me thinks he hasn't fully changed. And we know he hasn't because he currently has Lolly in his current computer folder and he hasn't currently owned up to it. So we know he hasn't changed. So in order to change, you have to be a person who's changed. Like, I remember when I like changed as a person, I not only got rid of stuff, but I like never participated in stuff again. So you know you've changed. Because your life reflects that change. Vosh's life hasn't reflected that change. That's why he's still haunted by this. That's why it's questionable. Because he hasn't changed. So there's still a part of him that might still think these are good arguments or these are good ideas or something about him hasn't changed, right? So I think that's really important as well to recognize. Like his, his again, like you can say you've changed and you stop being toxic, but if you keep getting you know if you keep cheating on your girlfriends like have you really changed you, you know what I mean something like that it's like Vosh hasn't really changed yet we just caught him with a lolly which is not inherently the issue the 
issue is that he's not owning up to the fact that it's Lolly. Because I saw the leaked photos and one, at least one photo, definitely Lolly. I would say by one, by, by good faith definition, one photo, Lolly, meaning like younger than 12. And I would say the rest, anime, hentai, at least high school and adult. So yeah, like he doesn't, you know what I mean? Vile says, I believe he dressed the files in the previous stream, but I don't think he watched it. Is that the one we watched on stream or is that different? Because we did watch one of his things on stream. So maybe that's a different stream, right? George, go, George, Giorgio, Sparta says, would anyone really believe him if he did change? Like it's hard to. Most people think once a PDF, always a PDF. He's not a PDF though. That's what I'm saying. You're never going to get, okay, a PDF is a very specific thing. So you can't change from being a PDF to not being a PDF. That's not how we understand the science. You don't change from being gay to being straight. You only realize what you are. Okay. So like he can't go from being a PDF to not being a PDF. I don't even think he's a PDF. But he might be somebody who's PDF lenient or lenient on some sort of PDF adjacent thing maybe. So we're not talking about him changing in terms of being a PDF. I don't know if he's a PDF. We don't know that. We're talking about him in terms of his understanding of why there's a problem in the first place. And it's not the consumption of the lolly. That's not actually the problem. The consumption of the lolly mixed in with so many other things, that's the problem. The consumption of lolly separate from anything else is not actually the problem, though it could be the problem. But I see the problem more of his thought process, process around it and his belief around things being the problem, which is more interesting to me personally. So we'll see. We'll see. Really common type of story, one of the main types of stories, even. And one of the biggest culture war talking points back in uh, 2017, and I guess still now today, is that that kind of story is weird and pedophilic, and I guess the modern term would be groomery, I don't know, if the protagonist isn't straight, right? So their argument was, you know, you can have a story where a young man goes on a journey and falls in love with a girl and everything. Okay, uh, Vile, wait, hold on, no, Livy says, I struggle with the lolly stuff not being PDF because they, they sure look like anime characters, but the bodies are very much child bodies. I, I need to say this, and I know this is very hard for people to understand, there are women I have met who are struggle so hard having sex because they have child bodies. So there are women in the world who have child bodies and they struggle with feeling valid for having sex because their partners feel bad for having sex with them. And I do think those women, from my understanding, do somewhat feel more seen. I could be really wrong, but the way they've explained it to me is they feel like a little bit more seen with art that depicts a little bit more of that childlike body because their boobs haven't grown in. They've gone through puberty. They don't have a woman body. They have no fat on their body. They feel like a child, but they don't, they don't feel, I'm sorry, they feel like a woman, but they look like a child. And then there are people that literally are made to be ashamed for being attracted to these grown women because they still look like children. But like, I think that's very nuanced and hard to like contend with. So I could see, and just because of the stories people have told me, like I obviously my boobs grew in really young. I've always had a woman body. So I'm not, I don't, this isn't my story, but the women who have talked to me about this say that they have a lot of trauma around the fact that their bodies look like child bodies. And I think the men who are attracted to them have also been shamed because they're into child bodies. So there's something about like adults who want to be infantilized. You know what I mean? They have like a cuteness element to them that I think plays into this. And so like there's something like psychological happening more than just like, oh, I'm seeing a child. I think they're say they think they they're seeing themselves. Like lots of women identify with the childlike parts of childlike things. And I think it's like very psychological. And I wish I, I was a therapist or something or I had the data about this. But just having the conversations, just seeing women and what they consume. There does seem to be something about that that overlaps with this, which is where I'm trying to keep good faith. Like, okay, maybe maybe having the lolly is about having the context of the vulnerability or maybe it's about the child, which is bad. You know what I mean? Raheem says, what does child bodies mean? So every human that marries an Asian chick is a pedophile. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying people feel like that. And... Lots of Asian women do absolutely have trauma around that. It is absolutely a real thing that they feel fetishized for looking young and men pick them because they're childlike. And then those women have absolute trauma around that. 
It is a real phenomenon in certain bubbles. Yes. It is absolutely a real phenomenon that grown women are experiencing, especially in Asian communities. Yes. Yeah. Sparta says, so do you think Lolly is bad at all? Or yes, I think it's like totally. I don't like it. I don't like looking at it. Um, it's not my thing. I, I'm not into it. Um, I can name some context in which the vibe, like if you guys look at really giant hentai, the grown women with the very small bodies – or very big bodies with very small people. Sometimes they're drawn like a little young and that's creepy. But the energy is really interesting. Um, like being smothered or something. I think some people might qualify that as lolly. And so that I can kind of see an openness to that. Or if people consider like high school hentai lolly, then I'm like, well, I'm not going to count that as bad. Because like, you know what I mean? That doesn't make sense to me. But if you mean lolly prepubescent, I'm not, a, I, I think it's probably always not great. Bad is a construct. So I'm trying to be very, again, I'm very particular with my language because I just, I know for so, so many women, this is like a very, they are the girls that are being represented. Does that make sense? Like you're also focused on the guys, but what about the girls who are being represented? Not that I'm saying it's good, but I'm saying there might be a reason women are even consuming this to some extent, whether it's tra trauma-based or not. I just want to give them a space to not be PDF files because there's something that could be there for them to like make peace with. I'm not saying it's good. Again, I'm not a fan of it. I couldn't date somebody who liked it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, all of these things, you know? Yeah. Maddox says, do, did no one, uh, whether the wave of people saying online, if men like petite women, they're pedophilic. Oh my God. Do you guys remember that? Do you remember that whole stage where men who were into short, tiny women, pe like petite women were quote unquote pedophiles? Do you guys remember that? That was like an insane time on the internet, right? Sparta with a super chat. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I'm Maddox. I remember that moment so clearly on the internet. Yeah. So clearly on the internet. It's fine. But if a young man goes on a journey and falls in love with a guy, then it's, 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 it's weird and it's gross and it's different and that's And by the way, so, okay. So people will say, well, that's just the internet. The internet's crazy. But off the internet, age gap relationships are happening. Kids are absolutely being married off. The online internet might be degenerate, but off the internet life is also degenerate. Girls in my high school who were 16 and 15 were absolutely in relationships with men in their 20s and parents absolutely knew. So this idea that the internet is just degenerate, you're degenerate, you all are just not talking about it. But people are degenerate in your lives. And that's why I'm looking at people like very suspiciously. What's your degeneracy, you know? Sexualizing them because, because young people can be straight, but they can't be gay, you know, because that's weird. That means they've been abused or whatever. That, that was the, that's the argument that I was pressing against, you know, and, and, and hopefully everyone watching understands that it's, it's a ridiculous and homophobic and, you know, irrational argument. It's a, it's a stupid double standard, but that's what I was pushing back against. You know, the, the exploring sexuality there in that context means it being incorporated as a plot element, like, like in every story, right? Uh, the Last Airbender, Aang likes Katara. Spoilers. People thought this was weird. They thought Katara was too old for Aang, which I thought was super strange. Like, she's like a year older than him. Everybody fucking relax. That's sexuality. That's heterosexuality, I believe, is the term for it. You know, in, in, in Teen Titans, Robin, uh, like Starfire, not Raven, right, Starfire. Yeah, what do you think about this? Like, if you watch, like, Avatar The Last Airbender, a Airbender aged up, or if you watch Starfire and Robin, like, hentai aged up or porn aged up, is that fucking weird? Because I feel like people do that all the time, bro. Or whatever, like, normal, uh, uncontroversial, uh, you know, homophobes will say, like, oh, well, actually, it's bad if it's, you know, if, if young people can be gay, even though everyone knows they can be. Like, it's... I have a feeling the person who clipped this to like use it against me wouldn't even disagree with the argument making because a lot of these like really bad faith clip jobs come from people who are ostensibly left leaning, which makes me wonder like if, if they don't understand they're doing the same thing that, that like the conservatives they would otherwise disagree with. Yeah, fishes. Do people not know in some states my state my state included sixteen year olds can get married? That's what I'm saying. There is this like outrage from these people like H three H three who are acting as if the world isn't absolutely marrying off kids or like encouraging age gap relationships that are inappropriate or like doing any of these things like. I think people are genuinely like being just like so unaware because of their bubbles or disingenuous to some degree. But I think they probably just don't know because they're not thinking about it. They're not actually having the conversations with themselves. What about Elvis? What about Hollywood stars? All of them were with minor children. And that was just like normal, you know, even in my own family history. Absolutely. Minors were married off to adults. And those people would all say their marriages were great and all their kids are happy and everyone would say it was a great time for everybody. It's a very confusing reality to face the real world. It's very hard to face the real world. 
Because you're like, I'm so confused. How are we going to protect children if everyone in this bubble is saying it all worked out for them, including the ones who are married off? It's very fucking confusing. And then you have to say, well, even though it worked for me, we're going to stop it for other people. Well, why? If it worked for you, why can't it work for me? Oh, because we don't do that anymore. Well, why not? It's like, fuck. Like, oh, my God. It's so much more complicated than you're ever going to even start to even chip away on an H3 podcast. I don't know. It's really, really, really frustrating. And nobody disagrees with me on the argument that I'm making here. I hope if I'd only known then what my future would hold, then maybe I would have uh, optically workshopped it a little more. But on to the next one. Okay, so this one actually is bad, and I've apologized for it uh, a few times. Basically, here I'm doing that thing that guys do where, uh, you know, a hot female teacher will be arrested for raping a student. And the guys in the Facebook comment section will be like, uh, you know, where was she when I was that age? Could have used me some of that. And, and, and Yeah, there's a whole guy bubble that doesn't think male students can be raped by their teachers because they're gross. Basically, like, the thing they do where they downplay and trivialize the sexual abuse of the teacher because they personally think it would have been cool if they could have slept with their hot teachers back when they were 14. And yeah, when I was 14, I also wanted to fuck my hot teachers, obviously. Uh, but, you know, 14-year-olds are idiots. They're uh, interesting. Yeah, if you have a crush on your teacher, normal. If the teacher has a crush on you, fucked up. Desires and preferences shouldn't really be accounted as a, a solid moral argument to, uh, to anything. So this screenshot isn't really missing any context. Uh, it actually is shitty, but I've since come around on this and uh, I recognize how bad it is to downplay or idealize that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, I've been consistent about that for years now on my channel. Not much else I can do. Uh, all right, next one. Uh, all right, so this one looks bad. I think this is probably like one of the other things that gets used against me the most often. I, it is mostly just stupid in the same way that the previous like permanently online debate brain uh, tendencies we've seen uh, have been stupid. The way I see it, the age of consent exists outside of the respect for the numerous power imbalances older people have over younger people. As those imbalances, or at least some of them, are redressed through the advent of socialism, the age of consent should therefore be lowered. You know, my argument was that under socialism, an economic system that I don't believe exists or has ever existed, you could defensibly adopt an age of consent set to the same level as it is currently set to in England or France. Uh, another pointless intellectual exercise conducted, I assume, because I and a lot of other people in the Discord server believed arguing controversial topics uh, through any hypotheticals made us cool and smart. Wow, good thing that didn't carry forward into my streaming career. Um, I, I think my logic was, no, I know what my logic was, was that the idea that economic disparities are a primary element of the power imbalance between adults and minors, and that removing that imbalance through total economic equality would rectify uh, a part of the power imbalance. It's a stupid argument. Uh, I definitely don't agree with it anymore. I probably didn't agree with it, like, very shortly after I made it because I was arguing about it. Uh, you know, like, I, it's pretty easy to pull. Sparta says, do you think Vosh can come back from this drama? Or is he, like, perma cancels and smeared as a PDF? Nah. He, not only, guys, the world is okay with PDF files because the world is okay with child abuse. The world is okay. Seinfeld still has a job. Trisha's naming her baby Elvis. Nobody gives a fuck if you have sex with a child, apparently. What are we fucking, what are we, what are we, joke, what is this joke? Oh, Vosh can't come back from this. Why? Fresh and Fit had literally a rapist on their podcast and they laughed about a woman getting raped and YouTube didn't take their channel down. He didn't even do anything. He didn't even hurt a kid. Vosh literally didn't even hurt a child. He didn't even grape anybody. People who have literally graped people have podcasts on YouTube. It's fine. Mike Tyson is a convicted rapist. He he's he has a great podcast. Of course, people can come back from things. What are we talking about? Why are we pretending like people can't come back from things? Of course they can. To this day, Bill Cosby has a huge support base. The moment he if he ever got released, hello, he'd be chilling, right? Raheem says Fresh and Fit did not have a rapist on. Yes, they absolutely fucking did, Raheem. Don't fuck with me, bitch. Yes, they fucking did. Oh, holes in that one, I gotta say. Economic disparities are present in couples of literally every age, right? The power imbalance between adults and minors is more developmental and social. Uh, so the argument was stupid and meaningless, yes, but you have to understand that uh, to the mind of the terminally online debate bro, the hotter and less necessary the take, the cooler you are for making it. Uh, great stuff, you know, I've done, I've done myself nothing but good service in, in, in the pursuit of all these excellent arguments that needed to be had. I, I think that's it for the Discord screenshots that I can meaningfully add context to, uh, you know, like ones that I think are substantive enough to warrant any kind of explanation. The others are fake, like just like faked, like Photoshop or whatever, or so insubstantial that addressing them feels pointless. Yeah, you know, I want to give you an example of what that so often looks like, though. So here's one so stripped of context that uh, I don't even remember what the conversation was about. Yeah, I see so, so many attacks against me, substantiated by evidence, evidence like this, stuff so insubstantial you would have to already dislike me uh, to buy into it. Leaving aside the fact that, like, if, if you're screenshotting a message so selectively that you remove, like, not only the, literally all the surrounding information, but you've, 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 the image exclusively contains a single sentence. I mean, Jesus. Like, if that's the standard for making a person look bad, you can make anyone look bad. Like, it's incredibly easy to make people look bad if that's the standard. But... Wait, Cosby was released a few years ago? Are you sure? Really? Why do I have no memory of him being released? The one sentence that remains is literally a stock joke. It's it's wry sarcasm, you know, like, um, oh, wow, uh, what, what, did, what did Benito Mussolini ever do to you? Wow, what did arsonists ever do to you? Wow, someone got murdered in your town and you think that's bad? Hold on there, buddy. What did murderers ever do to you? Like, the, the, the joke only works if the person making it assumes everyone present already knows the group being referred to as bad. Nobody actually says that when they're defending a group, like, sincerely. Oh my God, I didn't know Cosby left prison. Why did I think he was still there, bro? Well, he's got a huge fan base, let me tell you.
You know, like, like nobody, it's, it, it's a stock joke. I don't want to be annoying by overstating this, but attacks against me are given a lot of perceived legitimacy by the sheer volume of evidence. But if you actually look into that volume, uh, a lot of it is just nothing. I, I can't tell you how frustrating it is to see some gigantic uh, ultimate compilation of evidence against Bosch with a hundred links. And then you look into them and fully like 90% of those links are just nothing, sheer filler, uh, completely meaningless. But to everyone else, it might as well be a hundred bulletproof accusations because they're never actually going to look at them. I'm not just saying that. I've been online for a while. I know how internet drama works. You hear about a person being bad. You hear about them being bad so many times. You know, people say, oh, look, here's the evidence of it. it's a big, like you, you think everyone reads those big quitlongers, all those big documents, those 18 page Google Docs that people drop with all the I will say like discords are very interesting spaces. Online spaces are generally like, you know, if you ever recorded in your home, you'd absolutely be canceled. So like, I don't give a fuck about any of that. This channel does not give a fuck about any of that. We know we're humans. I will never ask you to be perfect. I will never ask that of you because I think it's impossible and I think it's unethical to ask impossible things of people. So like, I don't need Vosh to be perfect. And I don't think he is. I think he's furthest from perfect. But I think Vosh is his own worst enemy. And also he's not ready to fundamentally change as a person, but he feels like he has. But like pushing things down is not changing. And so I hope this opportunity gives him an opportunity, like a real chance to change. But I also think he has to be aware, like this is what humans do, bro. We all live in a bubbles and then we all interact with each other based off this like misunderstanding of words and what things mean. I mean, we literally live on a planet where like people believe in God, which is beautiful, bro. But obviously like why? We live on a planet where people are arguing about whether or not the world is like round or flat. We live on a planet where people are arguing like just everything we do not agree on reality we do not agree on things you know what i mean so of course we're going to misunderstand each other of course we're going to think the other person is bad of course we're going to want to kill each other of course we're going to want to do a lot of horrible things to each other the question is if we're going to say we're reasonable and logical and doing our best then are we actually doing our best well we're doing what we can you know what i mean we're doing what we can and that's good enough, I guess. The question for Vosh is like, I don't know any, I haven't learned anything really about him except he's an edgelord on the internet. Okay. I don't think he's a PDF file. I'm seeing no evidence for this. But I'm also, I do think it's sussy if he claims there's no lolly in that folder. That's also very weird to me. But maybe we all define lolly different. So let's get to that part because there's that part where apparently he says that. Okay. Conrad with the super chat. What? Well, let's go. Says Cosby made a deal with the prosecutor prosecution during a civil suit that his testimony wouldn't be used against him. The next prosecutor used that testimony to send him to jail illegally, not guilty. Oh, I remember that. I do remember that. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. All well, the evidence of this and that. Most people don't read all of that. For, for the most part, you know, if there's a lot of evidence towards a person being bad or a lot of perceived evidence, I, I don't think that's nothing. But I don't want to. You know, I, I can't. Like, we can't pretend that it's not impossible to pack a bunch of sawdust in with, with, with the grain, you know? And I think that oftentimes I am either responding to people who have a couple of very pointed criticisms, almost always the child labor argument thing, uh, which I've talked about, of course, but, but the, more, the more frustrating one is like, sometimes, you know, you see people saying stuff about me and then you turn and look behind them to see what like evidence they mounted. And a lot of it is like nothing. And I feel like if you could tell them like, hey, look, turn around, like look at what you're using. Do you not think it would be um, good for you to stand by any of these criticisms or, yeah, I, you know, I, I, my frustration here is clear. I don't want to oversell it. I have said legitimately stupid stuff. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not trying to deny that or, or downplay that. I'm only saying that it makes it more difficult for me to address or give context to those things, give people the opportunity to decide for themselves with the real information, how they feel about me when it's all being kind of, you know, uh, buckshotted at me in a, in, a, in, a, in a big cloud of nonsense. I, I don't want to harp endlessly about that nonsense because I, I feel like it does take away from the substantial stuff. But like, look at this. I, like, like, look at this. This is like, here, here's like, a, here's a screenshot. Here's the kind of shit I see. Like, like, what does this mean? You know, why do I see this included as a, like, what do I mean here? I don't know. How is this supposed to implicate me? Why? why? Yeah, like, I, I agree with him in this regard. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to hold like random memes and stuff against people. Like, I, I just don't care about this stuff at all. Okay, let's go. He's almost, he's almost at the real good stuff. This is being presented as evidence that I'm a pedophile. Like, Jesus, look, look at this one. I, I wrap up my, my afternoon classes. I get back home to my computer. I open Discord to find the brain geniuses of, of Destiny's community having a spirited and extremely necessary debate on the subject of sex bots that look like children. So I sigh deeply, bring my fingertips to the keyboard and type, this is why I come here. My professors never want to talk about pedophile sex bots. I mean, the only thing I'm doing here is mocking the topic being discussed, which was, I feel, appropriate. This was all the way back in 2017, so if nothing else, you can see the vat my brain was suing. Yeah, I just don't care about any of this. Right. Went on to make my channel and immediately kneecap it with a meaningless, counterproductive, pointless, edgy devil's advocate. There's constructive social environments for you. Again, again, I'm not saying that there's no legitimacy whatsoever to people being critical of me. It's just, you know, a lot of stuff gets thrown my way. So after all that, now we, we finally arrive uh, at this most recent drama, the, okay. the incident that lit a fire under drama YouTube and is... My Here we go, guys. We finally made it. Never mind. The only thing I've done in the past four years that actually actually looks bad, it's pretty fucking embarrassing to say the least. So there I was, uh, streaming a few weeks ago, browsing a men's fashion site. I wanted to look at an image more closely, so I right-clicked to open the image in a new window, uh, but then accidentally instead clicked the Save As tab in the right-click drop-down menu. Uh, now, because I am, as has been extensively demonstrated in this video, a fucking idiot. 
My preferred strategy for keeping my desktop clean is to keep a single big folder called To Be Sorted, where every image, document, music file, whatever I happen to download gets sent. This is an insane thing to have as a live streamer, but you know, there you go. It, it's me. So I hit save as, and a half second later, uh, a preview window of the folder and its contents popped up on stream. And now, of course, that folder had porn in it. So I immediately ended the stream and deleted the VOD. Even if it weren't just embarrassing to make a mistake like that, it's one of the largest political live streamers on the platform. It's TOS. Uh, you got to delete the VOD. So yeah. uh, I, I stream with no delay, and folks are always screen capturing the feed. So I, I knew the contents of my to be sorted folder uh, and the preview window were irrevocably public knowledge. But uh, to be honest, that didn't really bother me too much. Uh, it was embarrassing, sure, but mostly because it made me look like a careless idiot, not because I was ashamed of the like furry demon monster GF big dick porn stuff I knew I had in there. You know, I rambled about liking sure. all that stuff on stream before, not a secret. And I thought, you know, maybe, uh, in a way, this fuck up would come across kind of charming. You know, like, uh, that's my streamer. Autism is so clear and fosh. Thought he would come across charming? That's so autistic. Oh, I just think this would be so, like, I just thought, oh, worst, i come across charming. <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> Remember that fucking idiot right there. My community was already making a big joke of it by the time. Yeah, like, look, he goofed up. But, like, okay, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Like, everyone loves a goof. You guys make fun of me for being a boomer. Literally, boomer Britney is, like, a theme here. So, okay, I get it. Okay. And I went live again. Of course, I knew as soon as the folder opened on stream that it would be pretty easy for people to lie about what it contained to stir up drama or cause me trouble or for any other reason. So when later on in that stream, one or two people came to chat and they said, uh, hey, there was Lolly in there, you know, I figured they were just causing trouble and I banned them. Of course, we know where this is going. Uh, by the next day, I had learned from what felt like the entire goddamn internet that two of the images in my folder preview window uh, were actually from a well-known Lolicon artist and therefore definitely intended to be lolly shit, which has to be the worst possible way to find out about that sort of thing. Now, mm. obviously, the accusation... Interestingly enough, uh, so again, this is very different for all of us, but lolly artist is also another bubble of like high criticism. It's true. If you're a lolly artist, there's something suspicious about that, but I could also see... I think that's really weird. But also, if you guys watch the anime man, a lot of people stopped following him because of his, he's half Japanese. He's very into like everything Japan and he lives there and he speaks the language, obviously, you know, and all that stuff. But a lot of people have problems with his relationship with hentai and lolly and everything else because he's like, whatever, fuck, it's all a part of the culture. There's something about that that's kind of true. And I'm kind of on his side in that regard. I'm like, fuck it. It's all a part of the culture. But then I'm also a Westerner. So I'm also kind of like, oh, that's weird. But also I think the West lies about their, like, have you heard of the Roman Empire? They have no problem fucking kids. Have you heard of the Vatican? They definitely don't mind fucking kids. So I'm not sure that the West is any better than like whatever version of the Japan they have in their head or like whatever the West means. And so again, like I, I kind of feel like everyone, it's, Fucking kids is a part of everyone's culture, it seems. So the question is, how do we get it out of our culture? Well, I think people aren't going to really have an honest discussion about the fact that they don't want it out of the culture yet. So we have to have that conversation too, right? We have to have um, that conversation, you know? So... In here isn't just that I had those images <clears throat> saved, that part's true, not really an accusation, but also that I must have known uh, that they were Lollicon and saved them because they were Lollicon. Now... True. Did he save them because they're Lollicon or did he save them for a different reason? Because that is a distinguishable difference. To, you know? The obvious and predictable but nonetheless true response from me is that no, I didn't know that. And that must not have been the uh, impression I got from those two drawings because if I had gotten that impression, then I wouldn't have saved them. You know? Okay, I mean now, this is actually a phenomenon of neurodivergency and autism that I know you guys will not believe. And I'm not saying it's an answer or an explanation. But sometimes neurodivergent people and autistic people see faces, bodies, and ages different. Not to say that they wouldn't notice a child, but there is a chance that Vosh doesn't actually see the difference between um, the lolly he saved and other hentai versus like sometimes like other people's brains see the distinction very clearly and then some people don't. So there's a chance of that happening, but I do you find it hard to believe that he wouldn't know? Because I looked at one of the photos and one of them was what I would define as specifically lolly. One. But some people were saying they're all lolly. And I'm like, I, w I could argue that pretty, I think, pretty much. But also depends on how we define it. But one of those pictures, I think, was obviously lolly. Like, pretty clear. But like, okay. Like, we all think that when we look at it. Everyone has that opinion. Like everyone keeps looking at these photos and saying they're all obviously lolly. And I'm saying, well, one is obviously lolly. And then Vosh is saying, well, I didn't even know they were lolly. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, are we all having a different lived experience? Yes, is the answer because it's only through our perception. So. Drawings are abstractions and art styles and body proportions very massively, even for characters that are unambiguously adult. Okay, why?
why does this keep coming up as an argument? Art, uh, lolly artists are very sussy just saying this as an artist. Like, where the fuck do you get your reference, huh? Especially those who are exclusively drawing that. I don't understand this argument at all. Can you not see things in your head? Just like, like, why would you need to look at a real child to draw lolly? Like, I've never, I don't, I don't think my brain works. Like, why would I ever need to look at a child to draw lolly? You know what I mean? Like, why do people keep using this as an argument? I think it's valid for certain brains, but I could never, I don't need that. Why would I need that? You know what I mean? Right? Like, why would that ever matter? But I could see how some brains can't imagine or see things or like, just take Sailor Moon and draw her with even bigger eyes. You know what I mean? So like, if you can't see things, yeah, aphantasia is real. Don't get me wrong. I, I believe in aphantasia, but then that would be suspicious if you were drawing Lolly, because then that would mean you would have to see it. But not all lolly artists have Aphantasia. You know what I mean? As an artist, all artists use reference, but not all reference, not all artists needs to use the specific reference. People can play games. I've taken art classes. You don't have to use exactly the photos you're using. You can use, like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to use it. You're like, are you guys making an argument that every artist has the same brain? That feels weird. You know what I mean? Like, that feels weird. Like, that can't be true. Unless it is true, but like that would be very strange. You know what I mean? Also, you can reference another lolly. Yeah, that's true. You can just reference other lolly or just watch a normal anime. They're all kids anyways. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure. Like, I'm, I don't know. That feels weird. You know what I mean? Well, that doesn't mean lolly shit isn't a thing or a problem. I bitch about it being a problem like a lot on stream. It just means that carelessly or inattentively failing to notice it isn't exactly impossible. I, I know what some people are going to say, you know, no, uh, you must have known. There's no way you didn't know. And like, like what am I going to do? Make a, a fucking evidentiary argument here? You know, like I'm not putting up the images so we can argue about the, the pixels or the... Okay, so this is the case, right? So do... Is this possible? Yes, it is possible that Vosh did not think of it as lolly. Because it's possible... It's just possible. Like, I, I, I don't know how to say that. Now, I think this is a red flag because a part of me is like how do you not know this is lolly right mikey with the super chest says honestly at this point the lizard people are gonna wipe us out anyway so what's the point i'll hail the scale okay let's go queen let's go so again um <clears throat> i'm not completely convinced you know what i mean that he didn't know it was lolly but i could be absolutely convinced that his brain didn't process it as lolly yeah, I think so. Discord says people have likely seen their body in a mirror as a child. Is that immoral reference? Is that an immoral reference to use your own child body from when you were younger? I don't really remember my body as a child. But I mean, I have I have like photos of me as a kid growing up. I guess I could use those, which is really creepy to say out loud. I would say that is probably bad. I would say if you need to use your own child photos as a reference to draw Lolly, I would say you've pretty much lost the plot. I would say that's pretty fucked up. I would say canceled. <laughs> okay. I would say negatory. I would say no, ma'am. You know, everything's pretty fucked up. You know, yeah, I would say that's not good. You know, I would say that. Yeah portions or whatever I, I know fully well that like 99.9% .9 of people who have heard about this drama haven't seen the images nor do I think those people should go looking for them obviously <gasps> wait oh where's Vosh why did his video disappear um little says I'm success of people interested in um little people too because at least they they uh look like adults I think that's fucked up like I think it's fucked up that little people aren't allowed to find love because people perceive them as children like I think that's fucked up but that is an episode of law and order have you guys seen that episode of law and order um why is the video disappearing did the video get kicked off youtube or something it's not showing up on my obs what's happening is this video still on the internet am i on the internet it's not letting me pull up the video anymore on my obs what the fuck is happening right now what what's happening what? Did Vasha's video disappear? What's happening? Why isn't it letting me? Oh, <gasps> is oh there it is. Okay, I was like, I found it again. I'm sorry. I thought my OBS was literally like taking the video away from me. I found it again. I found it again. Okay, I think that's really fucked up. That like little people are supposed to be denied love 
because people perceive them as like looking like children. You know what I mean? I think that's really unfair, but that's the problem adult people are having. Adult people are struggling. And that's what I mean to say. Sometimes people are looking at what you perceive as children as just like something that like kind of reminds them of themselves, either emotionally or or literally like women who are grown and who like childlike behaviors, like people with like autistic people have this struggle where they're like, don't infantilize me because I like child things. But I kind of feel like it's okay to be an adult that's like that likes childlike things and that doesn't make you a bad person. But people are like moralizing it. Like you shouldn't like to play with toys anymore. You're an adult. But if you play with toys, now you're a PDF file. And it's like, oh my God, I'm confused. Just these things should mean things. Words in the bubble should mean things. Outside of the bubbles, it can get confusing. Everything is cultural. So it's pretty much entirely a take me at my word or don't kind of situation where people are free to lie about the drawings or as I've already seen on Twitter, just post other really bad looking shit and say that's what I had in my folder. There's not much I can do about it, right? It's all totally unfalsifiable and people are going to make whatever assumptions and inferences they want to make. All I can really say is that I didn't notice the problem while saving the drawings uh, the same way a person could fail to notice any element of any drawing if they were careless or inattentive or distracted. Uh, hell, uh, chat also pretty much immediately- See, that part feels disingenuous to me. You know what I mean? Like, um, why is he saying it, you know? Hannah says Grizz, never heard of this. Grizz with an S, yes. G-R-I-S, I think is how it's spelled. That's how they spell it in Croatia. Oh, it's just cream of wheat. It's really good. But Vosh, this part of Vosh doesn't make sense to me. Like, why is he saying, why is he saying, like, he's he's just like shoo-shooing it. He's just like shoo-shooing it. You know what I mean? Where he's just like, yeah, like anyone could have made this mistake. I agree with you that anyone could have made a myriad of actions which caused some sort of result. Like, you know how they have those, like, uh, I don't know, I'm a boomer, but you know how you can go to, like, a girl's OnlyFans and download all her content and then watch it later? Sure, somebody could do that. And somewhere in that group of photos was, like, something questionable. For sure. But I'm not sure that that's what happened with him. So, again, I feel, oh, it's my phone. I feel like why isn't he just taking ownership of the fact that he did something and has it in his folder and says like, yeah, if you have a problem with it, like, I just don't think, because if it's not an issue, like if he's like, yeah, I don't see it as lolly, but if you guys do like, fuck it, then I guess I like lolly. Something like that. But he's not doing that. He's like doubling down. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't, I don't know if it's his autism or the way his brain works or he's doubling down, but it just doesn't feel like very thought out. Immediately clocked two other drawings in the folder preview window as being AI art, something else I didn't notice, and uh, they gave me plenty of shit for that too, because I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of AI art. Uh, you know, I think I've done a good job of demonstrating a tendency towards carelessness, if nothing else. So leaving that uh, stupid, least charitable argument aside, uh, someone might then ask, okay, I get it, it's possible to make a mistake like that, why then would you save the images? And what about them did you like? And look, there's really no way of saying this without sounding crass or flippant or whatever, but you know, it's, it's already a pretty revealing video. There's actually a very clear and simple explanation for why, uh, you know, for not just those two drawings, but in fact all the drawings in that folder, and all my porn tastes generally, and it's an explanation that is extremely well known and well substantiated. I, I'm a size queen, I like big dicks. Yeah, I was looking through drawn porn, like furry or hentai or whatever else, I saw a big well-drawn dicks, I thought, cool, and save the drawings, then never looked at them again, as evidenced by the Why does he like big dicks? That's the question. Why does he like big dicks? You know, I think that's the question. <clears throat> I'm not opposed to it being a bad or wrong answer. Like, or, or I'm not, sorry. I don't, like, I'm not, behold, like, I don't, I'm not holding on to, like, a result here. Is what I meant to say. So I wonder why he likes them. You know? But I, I don't think that's a totally bad answer, but it doesn't feel like a honest answer either. Maybe. Like, some people just, like, like content, and they like the way it makes them feel. Like, some people like, like, the way things make them feel. So maybe the big dick makes him feel a certain way. And maybe that's why he likes it. Which is, like, fair. And to be fair, all the pictures I saw, the dicks were massive, right? But they're also extreme exaggerations of a dick as well. So regardless of what the girls look like, the dicks were also incredibly unrealistic. So that's why hentai is so interesting. It's an unrealistic standard of what a human is. That's why it has monsters and creatures. That's why I like watching anime over real acting. Anime can be drawn in a way that expresses emotion a thousand times better than real humans will ever be able to depict in, in acting. You know what I mean? Like the reason I love anime is like when anime characters cry, 
they gutturally cry and I like oh my god versus like real actors like sometimes they're good at crying but then I just know they're an actor and I can imagine them and all the movies they've been in and the fact that they're you know like a character I can't do that with anime like you're just in that character so maybe it's something like that where for him whatever feeling he gets when he sees a big dick just fo that's what he's focused on maybe it's something like that like something like like vor or like you're interested in the swallowing part not necessarily who's being swallowed you know maybe it's something like that I don't know. the fact they are in a big dump folder literally called to be sorted that's you know that, that's the extent of the consideration that i gave those two drawings before my community and then the entire fucking internet hopefully corrected my mistake uh, it's hard to even say anything about it. you know five seconds of a uh, ooh nice dick cool line art saved and it's a whole discourse um uh, you know, i wish i had an answer it was more satisfying but really for something like this i feel like people are going to believe they believe that you know I it could be true but i know vosh is introspective enough to know why he likes big dicks is it because he has a small one is it because he wants a big dick because he's pan i would ask him what it is about it you know i want to know what it is he might not ever come across honest on the internet to any of us because he doesn't even know himself. Right? Like, people don't know things about themselves, guys. Watch the interviews I've done with people and see how often people don't know things about themselves. Look how often I don't know things about myself. I'm like, I don't know why I do that. Let me ask myself. It's very hard to wonder, why do I notice I've only dated some sort of person? Or why do I like this kind of food? I want to know why he likes a big dick. I do think there is a real argument to be made about carelessness, especially with regard to Lolicon and its seeming omnipresence in the anime community. You don't have to know much about anime to know that's an issue uh, with it. I, I find it repellent, and I've been bitching about it for years. Plenty of that bitching has been on stream, too. But it's possible to find something repellent while also not being perfectly vigilant about it, uh, you know, especially in art where stylization and abstraction can kind of, uh, I guess, cloud awareness and judgment of the extent to which any artists you follow or people in the community might be doing sussy shit, right? Pardon me for taking my most indefensible position yet uh, on this, you know, in this video. Uh, in the history of my channel, I actually do like some anime, you know, and there's a lot of really good shit out there in the anime community broadly, and then a lot of the sick anime babes getting railed uh, on Twitter, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, like, often that is also cool. And I hate the fact that, you know, the, you know, pervasiveness of, of Lolicon means that the entire community is tainted, basically, right? I don't like the fact that, like, you could be looking through what looks like a bunch of totally, like, normal, fine, cool uh, babes getting railed by big dicks, whatever you're into, you know? Well, okay, hold on. Discord says, who wants to admit they like Lolly after saying it's gross to like it and after saying you can you care about being consistent? Yeah, that's true. He did, he dug himself into a bit way of corner. He did a way bit of corner now, didn't he? This laddie of him, he did. He he dug himself into a, a bit, wee, a wee bit of a corner. He did. That's true. Yeah, I feel like he's just not very thoughtful, and he's probably just not very introspective. Which, cool. Most people aren't going to be. Most people don't even know why they're disgusted by things. They just say they are because they're like it's the right way to be. But like you don't even know why. You know how many people I've met in my own family? They're just disgusted by gay people. They're like, oh, gay people are just. They make me want to vomit. They're so gross. I'm like. Why? Oh, they just, you just know it's wrong. You just know it's gross. Yeah, but why? Like, why? You know, and maybe they have a really good story about, like, some sort of gay person that, like, molested them. And I'm like, oh, that's a good reason to hate gay people. But also, that's what trauma is. You know what I mean? That's what trauma is. Trauma is, like, prejudice and bias. It comes from our traumas. It comes from us having bad experiences and then lumping everybody into that group. So, again, in terms of him and his folder, there's lots of reasons why you may save imagery. The question is why. Again, grown women like cute kid-like things sometimes, and sometimes they save a lot of anime folders that, yes, aren't sexual. But who knows? Maybe somebody would say it is. Have you guys ever seen, what is it called? Is it called Vampire Night? What's that anime where she's in love with her brother? Let me tell you, as a girl who loved that anime growing up, we all just changed the story in our head that it's not her brother. There is an anime story that I love. Well, I've watched this anime so many times and I just tell myself it's not her brother. Because like I can't. Incest shit grosses me out. But also I like the anime in general. So I just pretend it's not her brother. But it's her brother. Do you think I'm into the fact that it's her brother? No, that's the worst part. So I just tell myself not her brother. Otherwise I like the anime. When I watch anime, I'm like, I'm going to change the story in my head. When I read fiction, I change the parts in the fiction. I know it's your creation. I know you guys like love that shit, but I just change it. I just change it. I make it work for me. I'm the consumer. So if I don't like something an artist did, I switch it around in my head and I retell the story to myself. That's what I do. 
You know what I mean? Like, that's what I do. I don't know if that's neurodivergency, but I ain't gonna, no offense, the author, I should have written it myself, you know? So many animes have incest is wincest. I mean, I've seen, I've seen them. I know, I get it. You know, they aren't really siblings, whatever. They're vampires. They call each other siblings. I'm over it. It doesn't matter. They're really not brothers. They are brothers. They are brothers. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Okay? I don't give a fuck. The point is, is the way that it comes off in the anime is that they're brothers or sisters, siblings. And I'm just saying, I just tell my story something different. Okay? Sometimes when you read erotica, the language and dialogue is going to be different with different settings. I ignore the setting and I focus on the dialogue. Right? Like, again, I haven't consumed porn in a really long time. But if I was to consume it, it would be based off of, like, the vibe. You know what I mean? Um, I'm trying to think of what else. <laughs> this is me with Mikasa and Aaron. Why? Do they come off like siblings? That's funny. You know? So anyways, moving forward, I can understand why you would have a desire to see something and switch around the details so it's more like consumable, right? But, oh my God, Maddox, good point. Has no one seen the Winchester Winces bubbles from Supernatural? Bro, women love to fucking make characters gay and fuck. All these women write fan fiction about siblings fucking, about boys fucking, about Harry Potter and Malfoy, about fucking twin bros, Supernatural characters. Women be nasty, bro. They love that shit. I don't think these women really want to see brothers fuck. I think they just like the idea of two hot guys fucking. That's my theory. I don't even think they want the siblings fucking. I think they just like the actors and they think it's fucking hot. You know, that's my theory. I just don't believe people. Because it doesn't map onto real life. Fantasies only map onto real life, sort of. But it's not even the visual. Yes, the fantasy tells you a lot, but it also tells you not enough without the right context. You know what I mean? And I think that's interesting. I think, yeah, I think like if I'm being really nuanced about it, I don't think people want the literal. They want the feeling it gives you. Like, have you never read like religious in like religious like porn stories? Like Mother Mary fucking the 12 disciples. I know it's super offensive to the religious people, but like people just like the taboo of it. They like, they like the, and I know that's really offensive. I get it. But they just like the, you know, they like the energy, you know? Also feeling like you have to be vigilant that in this incredibly normalized process, some of these drawings might be of characters that are canonically underage or that like an artist who generally draws in a kind of like cartoony style might be fine, but then another artist does that, but then they're like actually drawing like they're meant to be teenagers or whatever. I don't like it. And it's a normalization issue. And I think one of the best ways you can deal with it is by being aware. Uh, I'm not perfectly aware, so I fucked up. This wasn't the first time that I fucked up in this specific regard. Uh, you know, after the whole child labor argument saga, people went through a bunch of like likes in an old public Twitter, or, you know, porn account that I had and over like thousands of liked, uh, you know, furry big dick monster girl images or whatever. I, I think they found one that was like the character was meant to be a teenager. You know, like, and it's not surprising to me that that might happen because, you know, I'm running between classes, scrolling on my phone. I look at an image, maybe two or three seconds. Nope, this is it. This is the part I hate about Vosh, okay? This is the double down. Stop doubling down. This is why he's fucking, this is why people don't like Vosh. Stop doing that. Stop being like, oh, I was, I was really busy scrolling through and I was running to class and I just didn't know. Just say, bro, I don't give a fuck if it's a teenager. I'm aging her up in my head. I just fucking like the monster part of it. I don't give a fuck if it's a teenager. I'm not seeing her as a teenager. Do you get what I'm saying? Why can't he say that? Because it's not true. Or he's he's not autistic. Or he's autistic. Like he's his brain isn't functioning. Why does he keep saying, I, I was running to class and I just accidentally liked it? Why are you doing that? Because that sounds like you're fucking lying. You know? That feels like you're lying now why can't you just say like oh yeah bro it's kind of a vibe and uh you know you know yeah raheem says aging her up in my head is not possible for a male to say yes it is break the stereotype bro you know selena says god didn't like what you said about mary bro he coming for me tonight <laughs> miss fishy says who the fuck looks at porn in public like that honestly bro me are you seriously at the airport and I'll go at Twitter porn sometimes, bro? I have an OF. I check my OF at the airport. I just don't do it with people around my shoulder. One time in security, I opened up my phone and Pornhub started playing. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm such a fucking, oh, my God. 
I was like, nobody saw it, thank God. But I was like, Jesus, I'm one of those people. But yeah, you don't look at your own OF when you're like fucking doing work or you don't look at porn. You know what I mean? I don't get that. Like, I just, I don't even think about it. You know what I mean? Just funny that she sneezed after that. I made the joke and then I, God's coming for me, bro. But she says, I just usually visualize in my head, fantasize in my head. I mean, that's fair too. Not that I'm saying you're watching, like, I watch porn without masturbating. Like, I don't think about masturbating. I'm just working. You know, but if you're just like watching porn, like you're not masturbating, you're just looking at something. Or if you're watching hentai, you could just be looking at the art style. Maybe I'm too queer for this or too like nude friendly. Like I am a nudist, I guess. Like I just, I just look at porn. Like I used to watch porn while eating cereal. I wasn't even masturbating. I was just watching it because I was like, oh, the camera angles are cool. And oh, look at the way they like put the bed against the wall. And when I watch YouTube videos, half the time I'm watching it to see their setup. When I was watching Love is Blind, all I was noticing were the edits. I was literally just focused on all the editing. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. They chose to do this edit. Oh, look how they did this. When I watch porn, if I'm watching porn for sex, first of all, I'm doing that in the privacy of my home. I don't want to like break anyone's consent. Two, if I'm watching porn in public, I'm working. I'm just looking at it as like content to watch. And no one's around me. I have a Bluetooth in, but I'm working. I'm not trying to get off. I'm literally just, I'm a sex worker. So I'm just like thinking about work. You know what I mean? <clears throat> So I don't know. I feel like there's like a conversation people aren't having because they're assuming they're assuming we're assuming so much because of our perceptions of what something means. Like maybe someone thinks like, oh, if I like this video, it must mean something like really significant about myself. Or maybe if I or maybe it means nothing. Maybe you're just saving it. Like, if it, like, OK. Sounds like you're an addict. No. Are you an addict if you read a book every day or two books a day? That's what I'm saying. Porn is like reading a book. It's just a book. I don't even look at porn half the time. But if I'm watching hentai or if I'm looking up art styles or I'm looking up like inspirations for my OnlyFans, like that's just work, bro. If you're reading a book a day, are you addicted? Like who cares? I just think people are so like coomer brained or so sex repressed that they think like sexual stuff is always about sex. You know what I mean? We're at the library. You know there's porn at the library, right? You guys know there's porn in libraries. You guys know there's porn at the library, right? Like, do people know this? Where do you think I got all my porn as a kid? In the library. That's where I started off reading sex, like porn in books was the library. Like, there's sex books, but they're still, like, that's where I started off reading porn in books was the library. Like, if you want to read erotica, libraries. Like, if you want, like, sex scenes in books, New York Times bestsellers. Like, that's what porn is to a lot of people. Like, I don't know what everyone is talking about right now. If you mean explicit visual stuff, you know what I mean? Like, that may be different. But like, yeah, Ingrid says me too. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's Maddox says y'all do not know about erotic fiction. No, these people, this is what I'm saying. These people got no idea. <clears throat> they got no clue. Anyone being caught watching porn at the library gets made fun of? Well, because you're watching videos. You should be reading. You got to read. Women, we read. So in public, nobody suspects anything. Men are dumb. But then if you're in public and you're watching something, watch something without people around you, dummy. Dummy. Men are the ones who have a bad relationship. I'm telling you, dummy. Hello. Seconds before I like the degree of scrutiny required there indicates that this goes beyond some kind of like matter of personal temperance and extends broadly into like how weird is it that that's something that's been that normalized, you know? Anyway, I don't mean to like make a big point or, or make it like a broader issue, you know, as a way of uh, pulling attention away from me fucking up. I I just think it's a broader issue, you know? Um, you know, people people are gonna say what they're gonna say. They can judge me for what they're gonna judge me for. I think a lot of people have been real and charitable. Uh, you know, I think it's insane to say this like ah, yeah, it's a pedophile. You got him. I think and also there are nude books at the library. You know what I mean? There are like art books, like pinup art books, old art, like from different eras across the universe. Nudity is in art. It's in churches. Anything could be porn. Anything could be erotic. You know what I mean? I don't know why we're pretending like the human naked body isn't everywhere, bro. I think that's insane, but again, it's not really an evidentiary argument that I can make. So, you know, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, I don't know. God willing, anime culture will get better one day. Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath, though. So, yeah, uh, that's the long and short of it. I'm sure there are other clips or screenshots or arguments out there uh, that people have thrown into their big anti-me documents. But like I said, I wanted to focus on... See, the difference is I'm owning my shit and, and he's doubling down. It was an accident. I didn't mean to find it. Nope, I've stumbled... The funniest lesbian port I've ever read in my life was a book I got on Amazon. And it's old, like, Victorian lesbians... 
Um, not only are they raping the fuck out of each other, but they're sticking wax candles in their butts and making them walk across the floor as they like spank them with paddles. Have you ever read Anne Rice's version of Sleeping Beauty, her Sleeping Beauty series? Have you guys ever read that? That's fucking smut, bro. That's some smut, bro. Like, again, the idea, like, just own it. Just be like, oh, yeah, I found that book. I was really into, like, figuring out my sexuality. I really wanted to know what I was into. I found all this shit when I was younger and growing up. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That shit's like, yeah. Like, you know, but he's not doing that. He's not owning it. It's a cartoon. Own it. He's not owning it. You know? EJ says, I think you're being unfair. To who? To who? You know? I don't know. I just feel like people are in their bubbles and they think the whole world revolves around their lived experience and nobody else's. And the reason Vosh comes off so disingenuine, even to me, is because he's not owning his shit. He keeps, like, being embarrassed about it. Stop being embarrassed or, like, truly change as a person. But he's not obviously embarrassed about having it in his folder. We just caught him with the folder. Just say, I like it. You know? Just say, I like it, bro. You know, but... Mm -mm. The accusations that I feel are really somewhat grounded. If I took the time to tackle all the obviously fake or disingenuous shit, we'd be here forever. And I think it would take away from the stuff I actually did feel I needed to address. You know, again, walking that line, there is a lot of bullshit, but I, you know, I, I don't want to convey the impression that I feel every attack against me is illegitimate or at least not properly motivated. So, yeah, this isn't about debunking a narrative. You know, it's about waving away the most transparently bullshit stuff so that I can focus on explaining the actual mistakes that I've made, the actual stupid shit that I've said, providing context and laying out my thought process so folks on the fence have all the information before deciding to lean charitably or not. I can't make someone be charitable. It's just up to how they see things. And, you know, I can't ever view all this drama from an outside perspective. I'll always be biased because I am literally the only person person who really knows how I feel and why I've said the things I said and uh, but to cap it true we all are biased in prejudice all off to cap all this off I'd still like to try my hand at it I'll I'd like to try and present the charitable narrative how I feel this all looks with all the information and how I hope people take it you know again not holding my breath on that one but that's this is what I hope for you know I have said some really really Vile says it feels like you're dismissing the severity of the allegations uh against him um well the allegations against him aren't within uh what are the allegations against him that's the problem. Like, what is the allegation against him? You know what I mean? That's the problem. It's like, what were the allegations? If he's already, like, years ago said, I take back everything I said in my debate floor days, and I haven't said that stuff repeatedly in years, okay? And he wasn't caught with child corn on his computer. He engaged in a childless crime. So there's no victims. So what are the allegations against him? Like, what is the evidence? You know what I mean? So he did double down and he didn't own the fact that he had Lolly, but he might not see it that way. You know what I mean? So I can't trust him in that regard. But also, like, I, I've already watched, like, so many hours of this content. Again, what's the allegation? If the allegation is that he's a PDF file, like, none of us know that. We can't know that he'd have to get evaluated by a professional. If the allegation is that he had CP on his computer, well, that's debunked because in the beginning of this conversation, I defined those things and what they were. He would not be found to have CP on his computer in that regard because that's not what I, that's not, it doesn't involve a real child. No child was harmed in the process. There's no victim of a child in this process. There's no real child involved. So the biggest crime he had was saving a picture that an adult person drew. Is that the accusation? Really stupid, difficult to defend stuff. That much is clear. Uh, but almost all of it comes from the very, very beginning of my time as a live streamer. Looking at it all laid out like this, five or so years of drama and accusations, I think it should be clear to people who have watched this far that the explanatory variable in all those old clips. That says I kind of feel like it's a little too hard to get his tone at 700,000 speed. Um, Only for you guys, neurodivergent people, we all watch things at 2.5 speed. I watch, I listen to all my audiobooks. Like, I understand what you're saying, but I've already watched so much of Vosh at his normal speed. It's too slow. So uh, it's very common. For a lot of people, I, yeah, a lot of my friend groups, we all watch everything on 1.5, 2 point speed. Was my stupid fucking debate, bro, brain. Uh, the obsession with inane hypotheticals and devil's advocates and, and shock value bullshit, which I employed because I thought using examples and comparisons that normies couldn't handle proved I was smart. It, it really is impossible to overstate how much I, I dislike the me in those clips, uh, how I used to act uh, in general. That being okay. said, the terrible arguments and hypotheticals really were contained to those shock value debate bro moments. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I stopped being that kind of debate bro, the terrible arguments and hypotheticals stopped. Yeah. Okay, is that true? I don't watch Vosh. Is that true? If they stop, then I don't care. You know what I mean? 
Um, Nut says, would you call him a hypocrite over his statements about Lolly? Only if he maintained the statements. So maybe, but he didn't really address that in this video, actually. Would you say, I would say he's a hypocrite. Well, is he a hypocrite over his statements of Lolly? Um, as, what do you mean? Do you mean his statements about saying if you like Lolly, then you're probably adjacent to PDF files? I would want to know why he said that. I would want to know if he, um, oh God, my allergies today. I would want to know, um, if he still believes that. It feels like he's rejected a lot of his past statements. So now I'm trying to watch him as the current person he is because I think people change. So now I don't know what the accusation is. The only thing I have an issue with Vosh right now is that he's not owning the fact that he had something on his computer that he liked for a specific reason. And he should just be like, yeah, I like it. And if you have a problem with that, you can fuck off. There's not a child involved. There's absolutely no victim here. And if you have a problem with it, cool. You know what I mean? But he's not doing that. And that's what makes him suspicious. I think that's what makes him suspicious. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. He argued that people are ridiculous for not thinking there's a link. Yeah, but that was his old stuff. You keep referencing stuff that is old. So if it's old, I don't care. I only want to know what this human consciousness thinks now and what his statement is now. All of his past content doesn't matter because he's already, he's already moved himself away from that version of himself. So that was like five, six years ago, right? Said 2017, 2018, 2019. None of that shit matters now. Who is the person he is today? And how does that person feel about Lolly or about hentai or about anything he said in the past? I do not care what five years, like five years ago, well, he, him thought about anything, right? We don't do that to people. We don't go back five years and hold people accountable unless they've, especially if they've changed. Right? So, so, you know. That's why just about every clip used against me is at least four years old. They're more or less contained to a period of time during which I employ a rhetorical style uh, that I would describe as. Now, I do think he's a pest and I don't think he should date women. And I don't think you guys should date him. So the poppy harassment, I, you know, I kind of missed that part of the lore. I'm a little confused on that. But either way, he's a pest and you shouldn't date him. He seems pest-like. So don't date him. Don't date the chronic cheaters. Don't date the abusers. Don't date the men. Don't date these men. Okay? Don't date these men. You know? What's your definition of a pest? Um... Somebody who is truly not going to have your best interest in mind or your consideration in mind and is chronically has a pattern and chronically has a pattern. That's kind of a loose term. It's kind of loose. Mantis says, why can't others in this space have this kind of reasonable criti critical analysis? Because that's humans. Humans are going to human. It's a part of their bubble process. It's why it, it's why religions exist and everyone exists in tribes and it's beautiful. I love that for you guys. But I don't belong to your tribes, so I get to observe from outside the bubble. But also, I think the bubbles are interesting. Um, so this is kind of fun, you know? But again, like I, yeah, there's something here that's missing from Vosh. I, w I wonder if he'd talk to me. I don't know. Should I reach out to him? Vosh, talk to me. Somebody clip this and send it to him. Talk to me. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask him a question. I just feel like I could clear it up with him because I don't give a fuck. I'm not squeamish about... I'm a sex worker. I'm not squeamish, bro. You can't fucking phase me, bro. So yeah, like, uh, ask me. I'll have the conversation. I think these prudes, they don't know how to have the conversation. I'll have it. But I just, I wanted some clarification on some stuff. It's uh, uh, fucking stupid and insufferable. You know, even if the point I was making was fundamentally okay, I was also just way worse at communicating, which, which didn't help me. And that's another thing I'd like to stress. Uh, you know, if anything has been thoroughly, objectively, uh, uncontroversially demonstrated in all of this, it's that I'm a loudmouth. I can't shut the fuck up. I have no filter, etc. Worse then than it is now, but nonetheless, it's a character trait. But in all the hundreds of times that sex or sexuality or kink or whatever else has come up on stream, uh, sometimes while I'm near blackout drunk from celebrating some event or another, you know, no filter, I've always been really, really blunt and consistent about what I'm actually into in- Ooh, one of my rules is that I'm not allowed on stream intoxicated. Because I just, I think the first thing that comes to my brain, that's one of my rules. You should never be on stream intoxicated, bro. 
people, whether it be people my height or people with big round glasses or people with really dark tired looking eye circles or, or, or pronounced collarbones or aquiline noses or whatever else. You know, I, I know this is a low bar, but it's just it's really weird to me because people accuse me of, of being a secret pedophile who accidentally let his mask slip. And by the way, I don't watch Vosh. I'm not going to watch him after this. No offense. Like, I'm happy to talk to him. But like, I'm not a Vosh user. Like, he doesn't make content for people like me. Right. So like, I'm not, you know, I'll reach out to him as like a fellow coworker or whatever. Um, but like, I'm not, it's not like you guys need to watch Vosh after this. If you don't like him, don't watch him. If you want to give him a chance, watch him. Look, I watch all kinds of people. I watch conservatives. I watch liberals. I watch everybody because I'm trying to see what tool they can give me. It doesn't mean I like it. Like I watch Jordan Peterson. I disagree with 99% of the shit Jordan Peterson says. I watch him on occasion just to see what's going on. You know what I mean? So again, like you can watch him if you want. You don't, just because you watch someone doesn't mean you agree with them, bros. It just means you're trying to, as an individual, figure out like what you can learn from this person. You know, I loved watching high Britney streams. Yeah, yeah, I miss high Britney streams. But she, okay, she makes the jokes, okay? Mm -mm. Sophia says, I feel like you're dismissing people as prude and therefore they cannot have valid criticisms, but someone who's not a prude also has biases. Everybody has biases. I'm just saying you're a prude if you can't handle chibi art, bro. Ethan and Ela, who I like, couldn't handle chibi art. They don't have, they are not allowed to have an opinion. Like you can have an opinion, but not in the real, not, not to find the nuance. You can have an opinion, girl, but not if you're looking for actual nuance. If you're looking for actual nuance, someone who can't even handle like a cute picture of someone's icon, they can't have the conversation, girl. If you're saying Lolly is always CP, your bias is already in the conversation. You've already, you've already given into the bias, right? So like I'm saying, I'm saying you can have the opinion, but to have the nuanced conversation, well, yeah, now you can't join. It's like saying, why can't you have a nuanced conversation with a Catholic who's anti-gay marriage? About gay marriage? How are they going to have a nuance about gay people if they don't believe gay people is a thing? You can't have a nuanced conversation with people that I've already decided no matter what information I'm getting, I'm right. That's not what nuance, nuance is saying. I don't have the answer. Let's find the nuance in the conversation no matter how uncomfortable I am. Let's find the gray. You know what I mean? It could have been the context they made that. I watch all of H3H3 bros. I don't know why you're acting like I don't watch them off stream and on stream. You know what I mean? I love Ethan and Ela, but like I watch their fucking, I watch them. I've watched so many hours of them covering this. Off, I've watched them repeatedly because I watch other YouTubers cover it as well in case I miss something. I've watched the same VODs a billion times. And I'm telling you, you can't have nuance in a conversation if you've already decided going in what the answer is. Okay? So again, I don't like Vosh. I'm not defending what he said in the past. But I'm trying to be fair that he's already denounced that a bunch of times. So why are we holding him accountable for something that was forever ago? The only thing he needs to be accountable now is to explain why he has Lolly in his folder and he won't own it. Why won't he own that? Right? Master says, can't Lolly lead to being more accepting of CP? No, you have no data for that. Maybe do violent video games lead to violence against people? No, we don't have any data that shows that. We do not have proper data that says that is a universal experience. People who play violent video games are not prone to being more violent. Individuals might end up going down that path. But the general populace, that does not seem to be a correlation right now. That might be a correlation later. But if you're going to say Lolly is a pathway to real CP, then you have to say every video game someone plays is a, is, is a pathway to that. Kids playing Minecraft, that's a pathway to being the tunnel lady. Which, to be fair, she's a Minecraft player. That's a joke if you're on that side of TikTok. But do you get what I'm saying? You have to keep, like, the logic is fine, but we don't have the data for that. So to assume it feels very unfair to people when that doesn't seem to be the case. You know what I mean? It just doesn't seem to be the case. Flip. By virtue of several months of extremely loud, abrasive, attention-grabbing, optically dogshit arguments. And yet, also, back then and now. Um, Mantis says, Brittany, when Food Shops was honest, admitted she liked Lolly, she was persecuted. I... Food shops is a different situation. That is a very complicated situation, but that is actually different. And I think food shops knows that's different. And I think that is an incredibly different example. And I think equating the two is a mistake. And again, this is minor divergency maybe, but there are completely different categories of people. 
food shops and I didn't want to collab with food shops personally because it was way too close to being like basically too adjacent to a very controversial subject. Like I think food shops, her PDF OCD is actually something she should shut the fuck up about and go to fucking therapy over and stop talking about it on the internet because I genuinely, there's, that's a thing that needs a lot of nuance, but the internet is not even ready and I can't even tackle that because it is so fucking like, we need mental health professionals to have that conversation, not a bunch of randos on the internet. Vosh isn't exhibiting any of those behaviors. He hasn't talked about anything in that regard. OCD related PDF is like a completely different diagnosis. You need medical professionals to have that conversation. So like peace and love, but like food shop seems incredible. I, even for me, that's, I'm not touching that. That's my line. I can't touch that case. That's, you know what I mean? It's, I don't, bad example. Like I, very different people, very different categories. Now has been really consistent in wanting like a girlfriend who looks like a Reagan Ridley from Inside Job. You know, like that's a very novel way of letting the mask slip, right? Like, oh, like Master says violence and sexual gratification are different mentalities, though. I don't want to hurt anyone after playing GTA. I will be stimulated by porn. That's you. You're saying a you thing. Lots of people after video games want to get up, want to fight, want to feel violent. They also don't want to do any of those things. People who watch porn aren't always stimulated. I just gave a ton of examples of when I watch porn, how it's completely neutral to me and I don't think about it. A group of friends in mine, like four years back, spent New Year's just watching porn and live BDSM play videos. And we were just talking and having a party. I've been to dungeons where there's orgies happening. I'm totally neutral to it. You're explaining a you experience as I am. Not everybody has the same experience after porn. Some people jerk off and it's literally like eating cereal. It's not even like that stimulating. It's like something they do just to do it. Like asexuals, they do it just to like work the muscle. They're not even necessarily like interested in the same stimulation. So I'm just saying not everyone's having the same experience. Like you are having that experience and that's cool to know, but not everybody else. So maybe you are more likely if you watch Lolly to end up in CP, but like not everybody is like that at all. Not everyone is even close to that. Like, you know, no filter. <laughs> whatsoever it, 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 clearly a poor sense of how other people will uh, you know interpret his words at times not always the best communicator and yet it's every time this happens it's always contained to hyperbolic uh, debate bro bullshit it's always shock value rhetorical bullshit which which again like i know low bar right but that to me at least that's the pattern that's the clear pattern and i don't do that anymore i'm a lot better at making arguments than i used to be i'm a lot less mm. I, don't, I don't know i'm not trying to deflect i'm a lot less autistic than i used to be i don't know mm. at least marginally these 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 edgelord debate bro tendencies led me to think that the best way to construct my arguments and convince people that I was edgy and smart and blah, 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 is, was, was through the invocation of the kind of stuff that I have been. Those of you who are saying cope are just, you're expressing your relationship with it. So you're telling me about you right now, which I think is really valid. You are saying Brittany's coping because this isn't true for me. And I think that's really valid. But you have to understand the world doesn't revolve around you, your genetics, or your brain. So yes, for you, it is a cope if you said it. But when other people say it, they're explaining a different lived experience, which is where nuance comes in. Assuming everybody is like you is the problem with humanity. Everyone is not like you, right? So I understand you're saying cope. This isn't true. Cope. I love that. Thank you for sharing about you. But you're not saying anything about anyone but you. Dealing with the consequences of for five years, I, more than anyone, know the problems with those arguments. I just think that they indict me in different ways than people think they indict me. I think if nothing else, I mean, I think they just make me look like a fucking idiot. You know, I w well, one that I'm trying to be less of, I, you know, ideally, I, mean, I would like that. I, I certainly don't think I act. What is porn used for? I don't know. It's dependent. For some people, it's art. For some people, it's masturbation. For some people, it's socialization. For some people, it's it's just so con it's so contextual. What is porn used for? I don't know. I would have to ask the individual who's engaging with it. It just it's not a universal thing. Just because men and the patriarchy have convinced everyone that every lived experience is theirs doesn't mean the rest of us are having that lived experience with it. Okay? <clears throat> That's like, porn can literally be anything. Yes, Vile. Like, what does that even mean? What is porn for? I don't know. You tell me what it's for. What do you use it for? I use it for entertainment, uh, camera angles, educational purposes, getting off, uh, bonding with friends and family. <laughs> Uh, family meaning my husband. <laughs>
But like, I don't know. What are you using it for, bro? Now, the way I did then, I don't think five years from now, I will look at me now and think <clears throat> as poorly of me as I do looking at me five years ago. There has been some improvement. That's the charitable explanation. That's the best I can offer. I think I set the stage with that child labor argument, you know. Me being who I am, I mean, I was always going to get on, you know, people's nerves. And to an extent, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. A degree of abrasiveness, I think, is a necessary and endearing trait in some people. Cope, cope, I know. But I think that a lot of the stuff that's happened in my career over the past four years has been tainted by the way I made those initial arguments. And a lot of the stuff people throw at me, they wouldn't have thought to throw at me if it wasn't for that initial poisoning of the well. You know, I, like, I, I think, I think a lot of this is inertial. You know, it builds up. And I don't know how to stop that inertia, right? I, I mean, people say... Uh, you talk about this often on your all the time you CP on your stream. But like, well, here I am talking about it again. Will this be the last time, or will a month from now I'll be talking to someone and they'll be like, "Oh, aren't you that pedophile?" And I, what am I gonna do? Stop the conversation and link them the video? You know, inertia is a difficult thing to stop. I think that's actually well. This video would be a pretty good link, actually. He could just link this video. Like the meaning of inertia, like definitionally. So I, I, I could apply at length about how. Little says, if someone says I watch porn, what generally does that mean? It basically accepted. Yeah, but I don't believe in that. So my work, you must be new to my community. Welcome. My work is to prove to people we are not having universal experiences. So my work is predicated on proving to people that we are absolutely having different experiences and some universal ones. So yes, when some people say, I watch porn, that means something. But when other people say it, they're saying something different. So yes, some people, when they say, I watch porn, it means I'm masturbating to this imagery. For other people, when they say, when I watch porn, they mean I have literally visually watched a thing that we call porn. They might not be masturbating. They might not be doing anything. It might just be on in the background. It's like when people say, I listen to music. Well, what was music intended for? Listening? Dancing? Fucking? Like, what was music intended for? I feel like porn now has become so much more versatile, so much different. Like, it's so, it's so nuanced. And everyone, if you go to erotic arts festivals, if you guys go to erotic arts festivals, like in Seattle, their porn, their erotic art festival is art. It's not for masturbation purposes, right? So again, when you say like, what is the assumption of what porn is? You're assuming on your bubble. And I'm here to prove we are not all having that lived experience. And there's 8 billion people on the planet. And we are all very different. And that's the argument I'm trying to make. A lot of the hate I get is inconsistent. It's all a big popularity contest. And I'm an easy target. And, and, and people get upset with me for shit they write off if other people did it. And blah, blah. But Pointing out all of those extremely true and, and correct facts, it doesn't solve the problem. I don't want to be disliked. I don't even really want to be controversial. I, I think the stuff that I advocate for is... is, is um, okay, debate lord saying I don't want to be controversial. You better stop your YouTube careers now. I don't want to be controversial. Stop your YouTube careers now. Universally good. I want everyone to live a better life. You know, people disagree about how to do that. But as long as you're on the path, as long as you think people being happy is a, is a good thing to fight for, then I think there's at least some agreement to be had. I, I don't want to be controversial for that reason or, or for a lot of the reasons I seem to be. You know, I get into fights with people who agree with me on like 99% of shit. I think my channel is a, a, a cool and positive place. And, I, and, and it and my community are both a, a big source of pride for me. So I'd like it if everyone or half of everyone, some proportion of everyone could see it that way. There's not much I can do about the optics black hole, though, at least not right away. I don't expect this video will get much positive attention on release. I, I think it's going to be kind of broadly ridiculed, largely, I think, from folks trashing it who haven't actually watched it. This is something that I expect. This is something we all know will happen. Whether or not you agree with me on any of this, you know that'll happen. <sighs> it's unfortunate, but I, I can't make that not happen. I can't, like, rewrite reality. So if I can't do that, then I just have to accept it. And I'm sure there will be, like, drama YouTubers who, who, who come over and pause every two seconds to talk about the, like, pedophilic contour of my frontal lobe or whatever. You know, they'll just make a big laugh right out of it. So, in spite of all of that, as, as, as best as I can, it's, it's honest and straightforward, and I don't think there's much I can do besides present it that way and let people make their own judgments. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm done making all of the arguments about my past and how people perceive me and blah, blah, blah. I want to take a second here at the end to directly address just my audience um, and what I'm hoping for in the future. We're not his audience, but let's watch anyways. Sure, and what I'm asking for from them. Uh, you can still watch if you want, but uh, if you don't care, then you can leave without missing anything. So to my audience, thanks for sitting through the whole thing. Uh, I know you don't have much of an attention span, <laughs> especially because you're not used to this type of content on the channel. Don't laugh. Live streamers only turn into video essayists when they're extremely nervous. Uh, look, first of all, I, I want to apologize for making it so difficult to be a fan of mine. Uh, and a member of my community. Uh, seriously, I'm sorry. Uh, in this respect, at least, you know, I, I think I've let you guys down. I think this is a... Salsa says porn is erotic by definition, so being a lolly enjoyer means being aroused by childlike drawings. Let's use that logic. I don't think it's the childlike part that is arousing to all people who watch it or consume it. Just like when you watch tentacle porn, you're not actually interested in the octopus or an animal. Just like when you watch grape CNC porn, you're not actually turned on by the raping. Yes, do we all agree on that? Okay, point muted. A great community, you know, exceptional even. And as a consequence of my- I already defined Lolly the beginning of the, the live stream, guys. I literally said Lolly, in my opinion, is prepubescent children drawn in like an anime style.
That's what I think it is. And carelessness and uh, stupid fucking debate bro hypotheticals. Many of you have been ostracized from other online communities or, or harassed on my behalf. The content of this channel and my messaging is unambiguously progressive and inclusive and good spirited. You know, it's that, that might not be the popular conception of me and my content, but it remains true nevertheless. None of the people who enjoy my content for those reasons expected, I imagine, to be pushed out of other communities with similar values because they were a part of mine, because of me and my reputation. Yeah, I don't want that to continue being the case, but I don't really know <clears throat> what I can do to change it. You know, there's already such a mass. Yeah, he's so defeatist. That's why he's not strong. Vosh is weak. All these men are so weak. Vosh is so weak. That's why he's confused and he sounds like he's lying because he's weak. So whatever whatever this is, it's gross to me. I hate weakness in people. But I'm not literally like weakness and vulnerability. I don't like this. I don't know what to do. I can't do anything, guys. Just, oh my God, I can't do anything. It's like he's so self-defeatist, bro. So yeah, like, um, yeah, this is just weak. Like, it's so weak to me. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do. Well, maybe stop making dumb arguments you can't justify. And also, just send this video to people. And also, Jesus Christ, if you guys think he's a pedophile, you can fucking fund some, like, professional to evaluate him. Because, Jesus, I feel like he's just some fucking autist on the internet that knows no fucking understanding of normie bubbles anymore. He got picked up by a fucking normie, Ethan and Hila, and he just doesn't know how to defend it because he forgot how normies operate. That's literally what the problem is. Jesus Christ. It's a gulf between what I know I am and what people think I am. <sighs> the inertia of the uncharitability that I'm trying to push back against, it just feels overwhelming. Uh, Salsa, major disagree. If you watch te tentacle porn, then yes, you are turned on by the tentacles in the porn. Yeah, that's just not what data is showing. That's not how it works. You can believe that, but like, yeah, like that's just not, that's not true. You know what I mean? But I appreciate you. Good input, bro. But like, not true. So not objective. So. At times. While I'm working on that, you can help. You know, I want you guys to chill. Stop fighting on my behalf. Uh, stop arguing for me against others, especially on the subject of this video. That's one of the reasons I made this video. You know, I, I saw so many people in my community tirelessly arguing against the worst and most dishonest shit people say about me. And I wanted them to have something that they could point to. This video, five years of drama of bad faith bullshit and honest skepticism condensed and addressed as clearly and as honestly as I could. If you're in another community and someone is giving you shit because they think you support a pedophile, point them to this video. And if they don't want to watch it, then that's that. You know, you, there's nothing you can do about it. It's it's their choice, right? This is something that we've seen time and time again. People don't just change their minds because you've argued them out of a point. I mean, it's very rare. True. You have to make people want to believe. You have to sell them the argument. And if the argument is that this community is good, then hey, or, or that I'm good, look, there are ways to do that. Right? You, know, you, you can. I'm not saying it's pointless to be a positive advocate for this community, but I want you to be just that, a, a positive advocate. Don't let me and this space and all the people who are a part of it be defined exclusively through raging against the, the constant pointless bad faith drama. You know, don't let that be what this is. You know, to be frank, nobody's ever been sold on a YouTuber because they saw a fan of that YouTuber passionately arguing that they're not a pedophile, right? When you, it doesn't work. That's all people see looking in from outside this community, you know? We, a lot of this is me, you know, a lot of this is my fault, but as a natural consequence of the, my particular kinds of brain damage, the people in this community like arguing, it's very frustrating to a lot of people in this community to argue a point that seems absolutely, completely, inarguably straightforward, straight line argument, no way people are going to disagree with it, you know, something about me, about the community, and other people don't respond well to it, and it's frustrating, it feels like you're just battling nonstop against tides of irrational hate, and to an extent, yeah, but what is arguing against it this way done? What has it gotten you or us? Not much, I'd wager. There are better ways to make uh, to make these points. Talk about the good bits, you know? The funny bits, all the good arguments, uh, the fundraising for charity or uh, the, the canvassing or positivity or life advice or whatever. There are lots of good things to talk about. You know, I, I remember I, I remember a while ago, uh, someone, on, someone on Twitter, they got upset with me. I, I don't remember why. It was a trans advocacy account. And there were people in their community who were also in mine and they got upset with me. So people following them replied, no, don't go after Vosh, he's cool. And that, that trans advocacy account tweeted, why do you all like Vosh so much? Like, seriously, what's with all this defense? You know, what has he done for you? And what resulted from that was, and this is an archive, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I look at, uh, you know, I'm, I'm mad enough to admit, I get a little misty-eyed. Hundreds and hundreds of people talking about how me or the community, this community, has been, or have been instrumental in helping them in some way with regards to their identity, uh, their acceptance, their ability to defend themselves against bad arguments. Uh, that's good, right? I mean, that's a, that's a good sell. I don't certainly I don't think that I would remember this with the same fondness that I do now if the response from my community had been like, I don't know, trying to debate them on how like oh, it's illogical for you to not like Vosh. How could you not? You know, like I, I don't think I'd remember it if that was what people did. Of course, all the kind of stories didn't actually work. He deleted the tweet asking for him and nothing changed, but it's still something we can point to. It's something I can think of. Be positive. Be the sun. Uh, you know, I don't know if it'll really make a difference in the long run, but I know it can't help. It, it, it can't hurt to try, right? It's a better sell. It's a better argument. The odds are better. Feels better too. We're gonna be positive. We're all going to be. Not just you. Me too. We're all going to work on it. Speaking of making a difference for this community, I'd like to address the irony posters in particular. For years now, a, a large part of my community's culture has been defined by the way I and my audience respond to people who accuse me of being anything bad, uh, sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic, pedophilic, whatever, like any of that. And I've received. He is a white man, so. 
plenty of legitimate, well-intentioned, honest criticism, but a lot of it is insane and dishonest and, and just flatly wrong. And, and when people are acting dishonestly, it, it feels like there's no point in responding to it seriously. And that's when the ironic shit posting really rears up. And boy, is there a lot of it in my community about, about the pedophilia accusations, about everything. It's all, it's all a big joke to some people. And by the way, I don't mind jokes, but for this subject in particular, the one in this video, the jokes are done. Full stop, done. No more ironic, okay, buddy, bow. Ooh, interesting. I struggle with this as a content creator myself. I think it's probably best for very controversial memes to end in communities that would like break TOS on YouTube. But that is really difficult to do because the more you get defensive about the meme, the more the haters use it to cancel you. But also I think it's fair to want it to like stop the jokes, but also to like mention it on occasion. Um, yeah, this is a hard decision as a content creator to do because people see it as weakness and then they'll amplify it. But also it's probably better. Like you just want to look, we're working a job. We got to follow TOS. You got to treat people good based off TOS. All that stuff, you know? Ouch, pedo jacketing, no more memes. I don't find the subject funny. Uh, I have never found it funny, to be honest. Uh, but I have been weak and indecisive. And I was worried. Uh, telling the shit posters to cut it out would give the impression I was trying to hide all this, all the accusations, when I'd already addressed them so many times. Engaging with constant, edgy, ironic pedo jacketing from my own community always made me feel a little sick, but it was a kind of acknowledgement. And I thought it looked better than trying to quiet it all down. You know, oh, <laughs> those bad faith pedo accusations against me. They're so addressed that I can make jokes about them. Look at how over it I am. Yeah, using irony as a shield, blah, blah. Clearly, I was never over it. And I think that I've given the impression of having a community that doesn't care whether those accusations are true or not, rather than one that has been irreverent about not believing them. I don't think that's actually the case, but clearly impressions mean a lot. You know, like I said, it's done. You, you can keep making the uh, the horse jokes, by the way. Everyone loves the horse jokes. H have you seen all the people out there in the, the, the drama circles trying to get all serious about them? Fucking jokers, I, I tell you. Anything involving child abuse, that's uh, that's a serious subject. I understand outrage uh, scrutiny. I'll make a whole video essay addressing it. You know, I'll, I'll take it seriously. But the horse thing, you know, so, so I, you know, I say, I want to be a big horse, a big horse dick, a big whoop. Who doesn't? Everyone does. It's not serious. You know, it, it, people try to... Because because this is how the drama thing works, right? You know, it's all one big, like, ah, oh, look at all this bad, whatever. But it, Salsa, you're getting fucking banned, Salsa. He said, if you like watching rape porn, then of course you're aroused and would enjoy it in real life. You're fucking banned, bro. You're banned. 1,000% banned. No. 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 If you, if you equate, I mean, again, I, I really, really do think through all this, I've well demonstrated, you know, that the, the pedo jacketing people do to me is, is not justified. By See, okay, I'm going to ban you too, MX. If you don't like, guys, I'm going to ban everyone with a dumbass argument. Vaj arguing he's in a pedo is the same thing as Destiny arguing he was an abusive to Melina. Okay, first of all, you don't know if he's a pedo. That is a bad argument. Steven's abuse was on the internet. Vosh's is different. There's no child victim. There's no victim we've ever seen. And we don't know anything about Vosh's brain. You're making so many leaps of judgment. And also Steven's abuse of Melina was mutual. Melina also abused Steven. So like, okay. So like, again, I will ban you too. I'll ban everybody. Okay. You do not know if he is a literal PDF file, bro. You cannot just say that you don't know that. He would have to be evaluated by a literal professional. He would have to be caught with a child. He And even being caught with a child could just mean he's a child predator. Again, minor divergency. Being caught with a child doesn't make you a PDF file. It makes you a child predator, which are two different fucking things. So again, like, uh, not to be like a very big stickler, but like yellow and light yellow are not the same. Right? How did Melina abuse Steven? If you don't know that, you need to shut the fuck up. Because if you're dumb enough to think it was a one-way relationship when it was literally all on the internet for us to see, then you need to shut the fuck up about your parasocial relationship with YouTubers you don't even fucking know. Okay? If you do not see the mutual abuse on the internet, then shut the fuck up about your parasocial relationship. And stop calling people PDF files because you're uncomfortable. I'm so fucking sick of it, bro. I'm so fucking sick of it, bro. How dare you make me defend Vosh and Steven? <laughs> See how the internet forces me to defend the two goobers on the internet, bro? They meet the... Okay. By the evidence at all, I think there's a much more charitable and accurate explanation. But it's still a serious topic, right? So when people equate that serious topic with like, oh, he wants to be the horse. If you equate those two things or like hold them in equal regard, you're jumping back and forth between making horse jokes and like serious pedo accusations. I don't know. That that, that just comes across... Um, okay. Again, Nuts said if your standard for evidence calling someone a pedophile is that high, could you even call ED, EDP a pedophile? ED, EDP went to go meet children. He might be a child predator 100%, but maybe not a pedophile. He went to go meet children. EDP was caught trying to meet a child. 
What are you talking about? They are literally completely different fucking things. EDP was caught going to meet a child. He was on his way to meet a child. Not the same thing. He was literally on the way to meet a child. What? Not even the same thing. Don't know if he's a pedophile. Definitely a child predator. He was literally on his way to meet a child. He knew was a minor. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. Skim says if you're trying to meet a child, then you're a pedo. That's not what a pedophile. That's not what a pedophile is. You fucking dumb fucks. I love these bubbles. You're so fucking dumb. That's not what a pedophile is. So just because your bubble thinks that's what it is, that is not objective for the way we're using the language. I already need to find words before we started. A pedophile is not someone who's interested in children. Because a 17-year-old is a child. It's a construct. Pedophilia is an attraction to prepubescent children. Prepubescent. It's a specific thing. And so again, if you're calling everyone... A minor is is a minor. That's different than a child, which is different. These words mean different things. These words mean different things, okay? And again, you can disagree on that, but in this bubble, they mean what they mean. So if you get diagnosed with pedophilia, you're getting diagnosed with a specific thing. It's why it means something, okay? It means something, okay? That's why we don't go around calling everyone throughout history a pedophile. Because a lot of these like bride groom relationships were because of survivability or having a baby to keep the like village going. So it's not, it's about the internal, it's not semantics. You're explaining the why of the functionality of the brain. Is schizophrenia bipolar guys? Do you think schizophrenia and bipolar is the same thing? Because if you think that's the same thing, then yes, it's the same thing, but they're not the same thing. Are all mood disorders the same fucking thing? then they're not the same fucking thing. Having a predisposition, having a thing in your brain that no matter what happens, you will want this thing even as a child. Guys, people who get diagnosed with pedophilia want children throughout their adolescence and never grow out of it because it's what is internal. Child predators could be people who have never been attracted to children their whole life and then one day are in a circumstance in which they interact with a child. They're completely fucking different. Aim with the gifted memberships. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, let's go. They're very different. Okay, is Jerry Seinfeld a pedophile for dating a 17-year-old at 35? Is that what you're saying? Like, are all your politicians pedophiles for being with people who are 17, 16? Yes, they're fucking creepy. And yes, they're gross. But they're not literally pedophiles. It's a very specific word. Discord, (laughs) Discord, sorry. Super chat on YouTube says, calm down, Myrtle. Go have a ciggy on your balcony. No, bitch. It's called being a streamer, bitch. Though, you know, a drag would be nice. You know what I mean? They're not pedophiles. That's not what the definition means, guys. Is this a true question? Oh, my God. This is why the bubbles suck, bro. The bubbles are so weird. The bubbles are so weird, bro. Kay says, if they were the same thing, we won't have different words. We'd use one word. Literally, they're different words. They're different words, okay? It's about specification of categorization. Black people aren't just black people. They come from places. White people aren't just white people. They come from places. They're called subcategories. Rock music isn't just rock music. There's metal and grunge and all these other things. They mean different things. So you can say, oh, it's just all rock music. But you're not going to help children from getting predatorized if you don't know the difference. You're not going to understand how to protect children if you don't know the difference. They are different. The reason they occur are different. Science is still figuring it out, but these things are different. You know what I mean? No, if we're going to be specific, they're not hebophiles. We don't know that. Guys, being a hebophile or pedophile means that that's your attraction. It's like saying, oh, um, if we're being correct, like a gay, a guy who sleeps with another guy is gay. No, you can be a guy who's straight, who has gay sex with a man. Yes, it doesn't mean you're gay. It's not the action that makes you gay. It's the internal compass. A pedophile is an internal compass. It's not what you do. It's why you did it. 
It's not what you did. It's not your action that makes you a pedophile. You can be a non-offending pedophile. You can be a non-offending pedophile. You can be a child predator who's not a pedophile. This is why nuance is so fucking important because these things are completely different. It is so specifically different. And if you don't pay attention to the details, you won't be able to protect your kids. You won't protect them. You haven't done it for all of the world we've been alive. Child marriages are still legal in the United States today. Today. Hello? Lakar says, wait, why would you molest a child if you're not a pedo? That is a very good question. There's a lot of reasons you might do that. And you have to decide what age. So what age are you imagining, Lakara? Okay, you asked a really good question. What age are you imagining? Why would you molest a child if you're a pedo? How old is the child and how old is the adult in this conversation? Tell me what is in your head when you ask that question. Lolax, love, thank you. The vulva is not the vagina. Exactly. The vulva and the vagina are two different things. But people think they're the same thing. They're not the same thing. So again, when you, so Lorcara, you ask me that question, you have an image in your head. What is the image? Because if you're saying an adult who molests a child is a pedophile, you're saying an 18-year-old who molests a 17-year-old is a pedophile. What if they were just dating in high school and a week went by and somebody was aged differently? Because words mean things. So do you mean, and are you imagining in your head something like a 12-year-old and a 40-year-old? Because that's different. But if you say, why would an adult molest a child? Well, what if they dated in high school? Because that's what an adult and a child is by the law, but to, depending on what country you're in. So again, like when I'm having the conversation, this is like very important that we recognize, right? We are having so many different layers of conversation, right? We're not just talking about the same thing. Lakara says, I don't think 17 and 18, that's minuscule, but legally, in some places, same consequence. That's what I'm saying. In some places, same consequence. That's a child and that's an adult. That's why I'm saying we're not using words the same way and they mean specific things. So, well, Lakar says, I don't mean the definition of the law. Right. But when you say, why would an adult molest a child and not be a pedophile? I can only go with what those words mean in my bubble. A pedophile is different than a person who, who abuses a child. An adult that molests a child is different from those two things because molestation is unwanted, but it doesn't necessarily, or, or it could not be unwanted. I guess you can consensually be molested because molestation, well, we'll use molestation as an unconsensual sexual petting, I guess, for this conversation. You know what I mean? Because again, like you, you have to know what words mean when we're having the conversation. Okay. 12 years or younger with someone 18 or older. Okay, well, in a lot of places around the world, people are forced into those age gap relationships to keep genetics going because the population is dying or in struggling mode. So that happened just generational generations ago in my own family. Lots of my aunties and uncles were married in huge age gap relationships. And to this day, it would be very offensive to them if you accuse them of being in bad marriages because all of their kids love them. All the grandkids are happy. The couple was happy. Everyone died very like in love. So I, well, for the most, I don't know. That's my impression from the conversations I've had with them. So I could be wrong on some of the details. So in certain places around the world, they are absolutely marrying people who are in those age gap relationships. And some of them don't want to get married and some of them do. And some of them don't want to get married because they're like, I want to do something else with my life. But not everyone around the world is living in this first world privileged country where like they can just do whatever the fuck they want, you know? So if the nuance of it is, why do humans do this? Why have we evolved to do this? How do we stop it from happening? And how do we tell these people that their life needs to stop happening? Because again, we tell these stories about people and we have this idea in our head of what we're thinking about. And I'm saying, what are we talking about? Are we talking about completely unconsensual, absolute grape, absolutely do not want this. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about how we're having a conversation with it. Let's protect kids by letting people know we don't have to keep this going, right? Izzy says, my own mom got married at 14. It's terrible to think about. Exactly. We, very close to us, have family members and friends that were married very young. And we look at our family members and we're like, why did we do this? And honestly, humans don't even know why they do it. They just think like, that's what you do. We're human. That's what we do, right? And I'm saying that's different than pedophiles. And that's different than child predators. And that's different than all these other things. 
you're making it sound like human beings are all pedophiles when all of human history was built off child and adult relationships. It's not even within reason to think those are all pedophiles. That makes no fucking sense. If they're all pedophiles, none of them would have outgrown and changed behavior. Like, it's just totally fucking different. You know what I mean? So again, when we're having these conversations, I don't know why you guys keep saying like it's only ever one thing when the history of the world shows otherwise. You know what I mean? Kim Kim says a child cannot consent to marriage to an adult. That's how do you define a child? In plenty of places, including the U.S., children can consent to marriage and sex with adults. Legally. Legally. So again, are you saying in your viewpoint, your moral compass says they shouldn't? That's fine. But to say the world hasn't been conditioned to think this is normal and therefore are open to doing it with little to no like thought behind it, you know what I mean? Well, that's that's not what's happening. So it is absolutely happening in the United States. It's so, in my opinion, wrong. In my opinion, wrong. But those people who are going through it don't even view it as wrong. So how do we convince them that it's wrong when they don't think it's wrong? And then we have to have a conversation about that. Is it cultural? Is it an expectation? Why are we doing it? Why do we think it's okay? You know, there are a lot of rules here. Um, you know what I mean? Okay, hold on. I'm getting tagged in Discord. What is this? Discord says, I think the statistics show that most pre predators go for children because of the ease of access, not because of attraction. Being that we are weak and vulnerable, they are weak and vulnerable and they won't fight back. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make it less creepy. I agree with that. I think most child predators go for children because they're easy targets. And most pedophiles go for children because that's what they're attracted to and that's what they want to build a life with. Yeah, I think that's from my understanding the difference, right? Is one's a predator and one's a predator, but like their internal workings is different. You know what I mean? So I agree children should be, shouldn't be consenting, but I have to, again, I want to get, I want to pop your bubbles and make you remember that even though I agree with you that we want to protect children, the world does not agree with us. The world pretends to, but if you look at the details of how the world runs itself, they're not doing those things. They're pretending to. In your music videos, your actresses, your comedians, the way the jokes are played out, they're not protecting children or prioritizing them. You say you want to prioritize the health of children, but you don't question the adults you leave them with. All of TikTok, there's a part of TikTok that's like really upset that parents won't let their kids have sleepovers. And I'm like, none of you are molested and it shows. You know, if you want to protect kids, don't let them have sleepovers. If you want to protect kids, maybe don't even trust aunties and uncles. The thing is, you can't, you have to decide when are you going to risk your child's safety. And a lot of us risk our child's safety all the time, right? So you can shelter your kid and never let them live a life, or you can teach them to be adventurous and to protect themselves. You can do so many things specifically based off your culture. In some cultures, the community watches children. So the neighbors know where the kid is going and they can walk the block and they can do all these things. No, 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 no. Skim, ski, you're missing the point. Stop letting your children around strangers. It's not strangers. It's your family and friends. It's your family and friends. It's not strangers that are going to, to like target your children. It's more likely to be somebody they know. Teachers, mentors, all those people, right? It's not strangers. It's people you know. It's people you know. So again, I do not want you guys to sit there and be like, I'm going to lock my kid in a cage and never let them live their life. I'm saying you have to pick and choose your battles of how you want to protect kids. And I think it is better to know the nuance of the conversation than to assume, right? To assume that it only happens if this is the circumstance, right? Yaya says my friend was molested by her dad and still lets him babysit her kids. I know people like that. I know people like that. Are we the monsters now? Humans have always been the monsters, right? There are no monsters. There are only humans, right? There should be cameras in classrooms. I think there should be cameras in all school classrooms, yeah. You know? So again, if we're going to have this conversation, we need to be honest that the world isn't ready to actually own up to how we ourselves contribute to the direct harm of children. And look, you might call me a prude, 
but I wouldn't put my kid in acting. I wouldn't, I wouldn't marry certain men or certain situations. Like genuinely you want to protect kids? You got to think about like what are the probabilities of them engaging or being engaged with in an inappropriate manner? You know what I mean? Do you have kids genuinely curious? No, I'm probably not. I'm going to probably choose not to have kids. I don't think the world deserves my kids. I might adopt though, but I don't think the world deserves my kids. And I've also lost my desire to like produce children, but I am very interested in adopting maybe, maybe no promises. You know, <clears throat> look at the way that YouTube has to tackle child, um, child uh, content. They have to disable YouTube videos or comments. I mean, sorry, YouTube comments. On TikTok, children are being predatorized constantly and parents are letting them do it. I wouldn't put my kid on social media. Though you, these comments on TikTok are disgusting. They are disgusting. They're so gross. And parents keep putting their kids on. I think those parents should have their kids taken away. I kind of do. A little bit. But I think that might be my bias. Parents who put their kids on TikTok and keep all the crap comments about people sexualizing their kids, bro. They're literally like sexualizing their kids on TikTok and these parents keep posting videos of their kids. I'm like, what are you doing? You want to tell me the world gives a fuck about their kids, bro? Gross. And then you'll call people like my parents prudes for not putting any of the kids on social media or people will call my brother. Oh, you're too strict. You don't want to put your kids on the internet. I'm sorry. Why do you want to put your kids on the internet? Now I know. It's probably thoughtless. You're probably just like, this is a cute video. It is. But also, do you need to do it? Is this really about you? Don't put your kid on the internet. I'm not saying you're an evil person. You do. But I do think you're an evil person if you let people talk sexually about your child and you don't do anything about it. I think that's really gross. Libby says, the fact that child Instagrammers have mostly adult male followings. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So again, you can all sit here and talk about wanting protecting kids, but like your way of protecting kids is putting your head in the sand and pretending like the details don't matter. The details matter. Because if you don't learn the details, you're not going to learn how to protect your child from a possible predator. <clears throat> Damn. Discord says my mom was married to my half sibling's father at 13. That's wild. Everyone's got a story. I got tons of stories. Grandma, aunties, people born at married at 12, 14, 13, 14, 15, 16. I got crazy stories. And all of them grew up to be perfectly like non complainy people. But I look at them and I'm like, I'm going to break this generational curse, bruh. I'm going to break this generational curse, you know. But how are you going to break it if you don't understand why it happened in the first place? MX says, would you, if you could destroy the world and have it start over, would you, or do you have faith that things change for the better? No, humans are perfect the way they are, guys. This is my philosophy. Humans are evolved animals on a planet. <clears throat> Getting rid of them and starting over would just create the same process. We are, the world is a reflection of us as a whole. The world is perfect the way it is because it's exactly the way it is. If you want the world to change, start with yourself. Every person arguing in my comments that there's no difference between a pedophile or a child molester or a child predator. Start with yourself. You think there's no difference? Well, neither does the world. You you know what I mean? So you do you. You absolutely do you. But I think the world is perfect the way it is because it was always the way it was going to be. You don't change the bear. Okay? That's not how it works. You're not going to change humans. Humans are just what they are. They are either changing or stagnant. They're either a combination of things. Nobody wants the nuance. So yeah, go ahead and destroy the world and start again, but it's just going to be this. The world has already done that a thousand times, guys. I'm exaggerating. I'm hyperbolic. But like we already had that happen. How much of the US or how much of the world's population has been like basically eradicated and started again? It doesn't matter. Humans are going to human. You know? And again, we all take risks in life. Having a baby is a risk. Having a human is a risk. Existing is a risk. So I'm not saying live your life as if there's no risk, but just be open and rational and reasonable about that risk as much as possible. I'm never asking for perfection, though. I'm never going to ask for perfection, you know? Oh, 
Uh, Livy says my great grandma was an orphan who married my great grandpa when she was like 14. There was a fire in the orphanage and he was a fireman. To me, it's still gross. Yeah, it's still like it's hard to romanticize it now, but I could see how they did it then. I genuinely can see how they did it then. Now, though, I'm like, mm -mm, no, ma'am. No. But people justify things all the time. I just like, again, maybe it's my neurodivergency. I just like to be very accurate. Very accurate. You know, Maddie says, I don't get the logic of humans are how they are. Equal humans are perfect in a philosophy sense. So the bear is a perfect specimen. It's exactly the way it was supposed to be. The universe is perfect. Everything is perfect the way it is. But because it is what it is. Right. But through my perception, the one I'm experiencing, I have preferences for humanity to change and be different. But that's not a universal experience or a universal desire to all people. And that's what's beautiful as well is that all of us have an internal dialogue in our own minds, maybe literally or figuratively, that is our perception, which allows us to hope and want different for the world. But we are our own relationship with what we're perceiving. Like we do not smell things the same. We do not see color the same. We are not experiencing the world the same, you know? So again, it's, for me, it's about examining on the macro that the world is exactly the way it is. And then on the micro, the world is my perception. So I'm happy with the way it is, but obviously, personally, I prefer some changes. But why is Britney's preference the best one? For 8 billion people, probably not. You know, probably not the best one. And that's what's interesting. Okay, this Vosh thing, I'm going to wrap it up and just say that um, I don't care about any of it except the current stuff. And the current stuff, I would like to see him own the fact that it's in his folders instead of pretending that it accidentally got there. That is what is suspicious. That's what I don't like. And I have a feeling that until he can do that, um, he's a pest and you should stay away from him. And you should not date him or interact with him in a romantic way. But if you want to watch him as a content creator, have fun. All your favorites are in their own way, bad people, and in their, in their, your own way, a good person. People think I'm a bad person because I'm a sex worker. You should still watch me though. You know what I mean? So we're done with the Vosh stuff. I just think it's kind of a Cross -weird to me. Does that make sense like burger that? in a way. I just think it's kind of whatever, but until he, you know, cause everything he said in the past, he denounces now. That means the new stuff again, like I said, it doesn't matter is like the new stuff. The only issue is that he's got to own why it's on his folders. Or he's got to say, I've got a problem getting help. Something like that. That part feels like a lie to me. But with that said, if Vosh wants to reach out to me, I'll talk to you, my bro. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.